Welcome to EPT 2023. I'm cleaning for my cut. I'll take up then. Baleo bags the first ever EPT Paris trophy. I'm about to change the world today. I'm calling shots I can't play. I think I'm back. Watson does the double in Monte Carlo. He won the pot, he won the pot. I got me, huh? <laughs> Wichiak makes the call and wins EPT Barcelona. It's time to crown our next champion. Who will be next? Stevens takes the win here in Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instinct, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Come on! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Cyprus and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day three of the first ever EPT Cyprus main event at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa. 155 players remain from a starting field of 1,320. Going to play five full levels today to cut through this field. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. So, guys, an action-packed day. Yesterday, we played through the bubble and beyond. Everyone is now in the money, guaranteed a slice of the $6.4 million prize pool. Everyone has locked up a min-plus cash of $9,275, but we have a million up top. That will be paid to the champion. We play to a winner on Sunday. We are live every single day leading up to the final table, live at 12.30 local time. That's 11.30 Central European time. On Sunday, we're live a little bit later for the final table. 1 p.m. local, that is noon Central European summertime. Wherever you are in the world, do the time zone conversion. The app on your phone or laptop is your friend. So who are the chip leaders coming into play? We'll check on those in a moment. A reminder that you can get in touch with us over the course of the day using the live chat on Twitch, the live chat on YouTube, the hashtag on X, formerly known as Twitter. And of course, there's stuff around the EPT being posted on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Nicholas Schwiti, a former EPT champion, sits at the top of the leaderboard. Carl Shaw, an EPT finalist sits in fifth place. We have another EPT winner, Anton Wick, sitting sixth in chips. And a member of Team Pro, Parker Talbot, AKA Tonka, rounds out the top 10. All of these players have 100 big blind plus stacks coming in at the 2K, 5K blind level, Nick. Yes, very exciting stuff. And so many familiar faces out there. Can't wait to see what they do with those chips. And Joe, some familiar faces at our first feature table. I kind of consider this to be the old school versus new school. We've got Lucien Cohen, the rap man. We've got Paul Newey, super high roller reg. And then we've got some of the up and coming online players, players like Alex Kulev, future of me, and Klaus Segerbrecht, sick one. Yeah, the only thing I would take issue with there is that the uh, the younger class, you described them, uh, not up and coming, up and up. Fair enough. And of course, Lucien Cohen, both an EPT champion and an Estrella's champion. We saw him win that 1K in Barcelona, that record-breaking tournament in August. And he is branded for the occasion. He is Ratman. Greetings, fellow teenagers. No, you cannot keep your phone for the music. Sorry, Rihanna, we are going to stop the music. I've got a price if he wants me to come down and just hum in his ear. <laughs> now, of course, being day three, the shot clock is in play. That means everyone is going to start today with six time bank cards, which will be replenished at the start of each day. If they don't use any time bank cards, any cards you got left over will go in their bags with their chips at the end of the day. So you can accrue those time bank cards over the course of the tournament. 
Oh, here we go. There is Klaus Segerbrecht. There he is plays one. on stars as a sick one. There is one song allowed at the table. And Red rat. man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. You've got a full three minutes before you'll be sick of it. <laughs> Never. Take the under. Alex Kulev has won a super high roller on the EPT. A lot of online success as well. Paul Newey plays all the big buy-in events. Was in that exact same seat when he was at our feature table yesterday. Top dollar man. What's that watch? I'm not sure what it is, but I think it has been iced out. I'm going to say that is not a factory set diamond watch. Doesn't look like it. You mean it's bedazzled? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Dealer explains to the players that with the shot clock, it is 30 seconds per decision. Each time bank card worth an additional 30 seconds. <coughs> that is a Rolex of Mariner. That I can identify. Oh, no. I apologize. <laughs> It's a GMT Master 2. Oh, how embarrassing. Oh, it must be so embarrassing for you, James. Don't often see the GMTs on the Oyster bracelet these days. Most people opt for the Jubilee. Tierra del Fuego. Action is underway. This is level 16 of the main event. Blinds are 2K, 5K with a big blind ante. of 5K. So we see an under the gun raise from Lucien Cohen, Queen 10 of diamonds. <laughs> Lucien Cohen doing Lucien Cohen things already, raising Queen 10 under the gun on a 15 big blind stack. And so it begins. Seven, eight after. Uh, Ine, mine, mine, fold. <laughs> Lucien. Hi. I am a red man. Yeah, I need my coffee. What Lucien. does that mean? I'll be scared. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Did he ask him what that means? Yeah. Paul Nui probably lives in a castle, I bet uh, he's had the call exterminator from time to time. Can I get a confirmation that on the screen it's a different name? All right. First hand. So is the rat also the exterminator? Is that what I see there? I love logos like this. In order to defeat the rat, you must become <laughs> the rat. I mean, the rat's holding the poison nozzle. It's a bit like... Peter Griffin's Bigger Jaws idea, right? The <laughs> in order to defeat Bigger Jaws, the guys on the boat have to team up with Jaws. I think it's more like when you go to like a chicken place and their logo is like a chicken eating a piece of chicken. <laughs> All right, Ratman's off to a good start. Wins the first hand of the day. Yeah, he is one of the shorter stacks, though, at this feature table, playing just 16 big blinds. Paul Newey, the shorter stack with 15 bigs. Fabio Peluso is the table chip leader with 483K, which translates into 96 big blinds. Bucket hat. And Peluso, with pocket tens, has raised to 12,000. Ginnar Ine. 8-6 in the hijack, folds. Julian Montoy folds jack nine. Klaus Segerbrecht has ace five suited on the button. Oh boy, here we go. You know what that means. Sick one with the sourdough suited. Yeah, sourdough. How does he not pull the trigger here, am I right? Looking down at about 19 big blinds. <sighs> Them's the rules, Joe. All right? You Don't do question it. it. You just do it. Pull your online card. So Segerbrecht 
is all in for 95,000. Paul Newey, ace king of diamonds, oh. reshoves. What does Peluso do with tens? Has both players covered? Oh, this is a rough spot for real. Can you ever determine that this is exactly what it is? Like two players sharing at least some of their outs? I mean, yeah, there's always a chance it's ace king, ace queen, or ace jack, yeah. ace king, but. I don't know. Knew he's got about. I think he started with 19 big blinds. New, no, knew he was shorter. Knew he was yeah, 15 big right. okay. So, Sega Brecht is the effective stack, and it's not a lot. I kind of feel Peluso... This feels like a twofer to me. ...could afford to make this call. Yeah, it's real close, I think. No. Let's it go. Wow. So instead, it is a domination situation. There's a good ace is coming anyway. We all know it. And Paul Newey may be the at-risk player here, but he is a huge favorite to win this all in. <laughs> but never underestimate the power of the sourdough. Power dough. Power dough, that's what we're calling it from now on. Let's run out the board. Seven, six, deuce, one diamond. Never Paul stand. Newey, four to one favorite to double up. Turn card is another deuce. So we have chopportunities. Uh, tens, can I have those tens? Get those, can I get those tens back? River card is a tray. So ace, king, hold. Paul Newey doubles up. Klaus Segerbrecht will be left with just two big blinds. And yes, had Fabio Peluso called with tens there, he would have KO'd two players. Peluso is an online qualifier, won his seat in EPT Cyprus via a 250 euro satellite on Pokestars Italy. In a class of his own, two big blinds. So I'm guessing we'll see Sega Brecht all in again very soon. Queen 10 for Julien Montoy. Raises to 11,000. That is a call from Segebrecht, <laughs> leaving himself 3K behind. Where are we at ladder-wise? We close? <laughs> I don't think we are. I think the next money jump is when we're at 143. So Lucien Cohen has called Good oh boy. Right, so I think there's some confusion here regarding Segebrek leaving 3K behind and just flatting. <laughs> oh, they're just getting out in front in case he was trying to time bank right. forever or something. That's what it sounded like, yeah. In case he wanted to open some sports cards. 
It's the classic virtual all-in rule. I don't think he had any intention of no, doing no, what no. they're trying to prevent. Right. But the standard ruling is here that he basically has to act within 30 seconds because otherwise players tend to try and run out the clock to get that ladder. I think he's aware that even all of his time bank cards probably aren't going to wait out 12 eliminations. Right. I mean, it, it might also just be a spot, like you said, to get out in front of it, right? Let's address it now before there's an actually a uh, bigger situation sure. for uh, for considerably more chips and bigger leaps. Okay, so Montoy bets 10,000. Klaus Segebrecht calls all in for his last 3K. With Lucien Cohen folding, action is on. I Zhao Thomas in the big blind. I kind of like Segebrecht's chances with the missing card there. No, we one know it's, no one's got a king. We know it's not queen, ten of clubs. Yeah. So we are going to have action on the side with one player all in. Could be a nine under there. Could be a king under there. Could be a jack. Ace queen winning. <coughs> So Montoy, having raised pre and bet the flop, fires a second bar. Gets a fold from Tomas. So showdown between Segebrecht and Montoy. We're going to see Sick One's other card. It is Ace Queen. So actually, he is the favorite here to survive. Pure class. Five on the river. Ace high is the best hand. So Montoy won the side pot against Tomas. Klaus Segebrecht wins the main pot. And is now going to have 58k. Almost did, undid all the damage from the ace five hand. Yeah, not quite, but still 11 big blinds. You're feeling a lot better about your spin up chances now, right, Joe? Huge. Klaus is in session. So 150 players remaining. That means five eliminations so far today. And yes, the first p money ladder, the first jump in prize money will be when we get down to 143. <laughs> Wait a minute, we already did this one. Yeah, worse than mine. Peluso with tens again. Whoa, 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 don't raise if you're just gonna fold them this time. <laughs> Makes it 11,000. You know this is the time you get it all in with tens against ace four and the ace hits. Round two, Paul Newey in the cutoff. Ace six, he folds. Lucien Cohen on the button has ace queen. And he shoves for 13 bigs. Time, not fold the <laughs> right no man. fold this time. Right and we're off to the races. Right man. No, we lost this fool. <laughs> right Before we win. Ice queen to 10. In my mind, there's no one over right there. Man. Okay. Ace. <laughs> He's just shouting into the void. <laughs> He's shouting to the rats. First response. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right man. man. Right. Bilou, right. bilou, bilou. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he has two dice. I have a dame of 
Well, it's a race the Ratman needs to win. Oh. Hits his queen, but there's a 10 on the flop as well, and it's not looking good for Lucien Cohen. Lucien Cohen drawing dead on the turn. The rat man has been exterminated. Are there any more pest-based personalities we can bring to the feature table? Is La Cucaracha out there? Maybe Nutria human? Any pigeons? <laughs> Pigeon player? <laughs> Lucien Cohen will get $9,275. Mustafa Mosquito, anything? <laughs> Tunnelona says Papa Roach. <laughs> <laughs> Weasel woman? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to leave out the ladies. So, new feature table for the second level of the day? As long as it's got Paul Newey, I'm fine. Was that enough to make a whole TV show, or? I feel that's kind of end of part one. A lot of features, maybe. The Adventures of Ratman. <laughs> New series. Coming to Poker Stars Plus. So Fabio Peluso now playing more than 100 bigs. <laughs> Average stack right now is 255,000 with. 148 players remaining. So this guy's name is definitely Pig Latin, right? Ixne on the Ine. Ine. Ine, aces Ray. <laughs> Raises with ace queen, and it's round to the blinds. Looks like Kulov has forwarded the small. Peluso in the big, jack five, faults. Ezrae and a Ekate. <laughs> to answer the question from the disgruntled vet, we are playing a specific number of levels today. Five of them, just like we did yesterday. Although I imagine that with the absence of a bubble today, it will be a shorter day than yesterday. Somehow those are not the weirdest glasses we've seen on this trip so far. No. They've been great. Steampunk goggles guy. Remember somebody asked him yesterday where he got his used I think his name was Ustinov, right? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. They just appeared on my nightstand one day. Talking of steampunk, am I imagining it? Or was there some film that came out in the last couple of years about all of these cities moving around on tin yeah, wheels and swallowed up other it, cities? It was called Mortal Engines. I think it was one of the worst reviewed movies of that year. It was, it was, I, I like the graphics, I like the effects, not the best film. Apparently a very good series of books, as tends to be the case with many films, though. Look at it right on the fourth reboot. Paul New in action, raising with ace nine. Flattered by Kulev on the button with sixes. Peluso in the small blind with eight seven of hearts. Yes, Sailor John, a shorter day with the same number of levels because if you were watching yesterday during our world-famous bubble coverage, you will know that the clock gets paused during all-in situations. So what should have been a 90-minute level took the better part of two and a half hours to play out because of all the stoppage time. You're banned, John. Thank you for your comment. It had a question mark, but it was more of a comment. 10, 9, Trey. So that is going to be second pair top kicker for Paul Newey. It is going to be the straight draw for Peluso, who also has backdoor hearts working for him.
set of 22,000. Kulov has folded the sixes. Action is on Peluso. Peluso flats with his draw. Ine folds the queen deuce, and we go heads up to the turn. We referenced already that Peluso is a qualifier. Total live earnings of $800,000. His opponent in this hand, Paul Newey, has $5.7 million in live earnings. What about Kulev? Not, in the, not hand. in the hand. What the heck? I'm Ron Burgundy? Newey fires again, 45,000. is better than a four to one favorite. Peluso still drawing to the straight. Faults. We're gonna turn this Newey kid into a star. Two days in a row at the feature table. He's got a few stars on his watch there. Thing is icy. I was honestly feeling great this morning. I had breakfast, uh, went and got a haircut. Actually feel really good this morning. And then all of a sudden walking in here, I just feel like not great. Feeling a little bit ill, but uh, yeah, I got lots of chips. Gonna chill, gonna be good. Gonna drink some water, gonna chug a coffee or two. We're gonna be great. You had like a, a miraculous revival yesterday. You looked very rough first level, but then you came back, same today. Yes, exactly same today. It's gonna do the exact same thing as yesterday. You get crazy amounts of good cards and just win a whole bunch of pots. And poker's been good to you lately. Uh, you feeling like you're in the good, middle of a good run, good momentum behind you? For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, deep runs in Barcelona, then online in WCoop, winning 10K. Deep run in Prague last year in December. Yeah, like many, many deep runs. Feeling good. Feeling like a win is on, uh, on the books. And Spraggy railing you today, giving you all that positive energy? Never, never. That guy's probably on like a two-day hangover right now from the Stars party a couple nights ago. He probably won't even play the 3K mystery, but only that bum. All right, good luck with your health today and the poker. Thank you. Tonka speaking to us before the start of play today. I'm sure we'll get the chance to check on his progress a bit later on, bring him back to the feature table, assuming he remains among the chip leaders, continues to have a big stack. Also assuming that uh, we go more than five seconds without someone asking for a Tonka update. We just had one. Is Tonka in, guys? <laughs> I mean, look, guys, if he has another deep run here, petition to change the team name to Team Always Lucky. Unreal runs from our friend Tonka recently. So we've had a raise here from Klaus Segerbrecht called by two players in the blinds. Jack 10-10 trips for Montoy. Segerbrecht with the overpair to the board. I think we know where this is going. Segerbrecht only has 48k behind. There's already 35k in the pot. It's going to one Outerville, which is a very difficult town to find. It's not on any map. You have to happen upon it by chance. Twin Cities with one Enterville. So a continuation bet of 8K, Montoy with trips. Little glance there at the shorter stack. I think he's deciding he's just going to call here. No need to inflate the pot now. They are not so deep that he can't get the chips in on later streets. Wants to invite a little bit more action, potentially a second barrel. That's right, Brad. 143 was the money jump, and we are now at 143 players. Oh. Well, that's something. Everyone's now locked up more than ten grand, ten thousand seven hundred dollars. Well, it 
it goes in on the turn. Klaus Segerbrecht doesn't know it, but he's only drawing to one out rather than two. The King of Hearts required for sick one to survive. Let's put him out of his misery. Painful death. All right, good luck, guys. Class Segerbrecht eliminated. Did get the money jump, though. All class. And we're down to 141 players in this 5K main event. couple of open seats at the table, but it looks like one of them is being filled. Where is my diamond? Oh, I recognize those arms. I you do? They said you can play without it. It's the guy who celebrated his birthday yesterday. It's Oleg Ustinovich. Oh, poor Oleg hasn't been given his time bank cards today. Sort it out. Or did he use them all already, and now he's trying to scam some new ones? Ah. Here's a hashtag fun fact. Oleg had his best ever live score earlier this week. He cashed a 10K high roller event for $21,800. He's guaranteed at least 10K in this tournament. Yeah, but this one is a, it's a one of... Saw some pretty solid poker from yesterday. You're suspect. Obviously, we'll go back to table 19 and <laughs> check if his story is verified. I left my Rolex watch over there, too, if you find one of those. <laughs> A couple of hundred euro notes. And a latte. Brad noticing we're trying to make a funky glasses table here at the feature. Now that we got Ustinovich back, can combine forces with Keenar Ine. Table chip leader Fabio Peluso, 9 8 offsuits. Instead, it is Julien who opens on the button with ace six of hearts. And looks like Oleg Ustinovich has now been given time bank cards. When he came to the table, he realized that they had not been distributed at the start of play. Floor was called, checked with his previous table, verified his story. He now has his six time bank cards. Newey out flops. Pre flop aggressor, a pair of fours for Newey. Not only do you have to be good enough to out flop someone here, but you got to be good enough to get to showdown with a pair of fours. Yeah. Um, Ross asked, did Paul Newey play season one of the EPT? The honest answer to that is I don't know. Paul knew he kind of came onto our radar, I'd say around 10 years ago. It was kind of 2012, 2013, when he was pretty much rocking up to every single EPT, playing all the big buy-in events. He might not have been Paul Newey yet by season one of the EPT. I think it's pretty well known that Paul Newey was the guy behind Ocean Finance, sold the business for a lot of money.
bet of 32,000 on the turn. And knew he still has the best hand. But folds to the second barrel. Tough. Two hand penalty, no? Ross has a follow-up question. Are there any notable players from season one of the EPT who are still on the circuit? Among them, a couple of champions. Noah Buchan, who won Copenhagen in season one. He's rocked up in Barcelona a few times. Patrick Antonius has been on the EPT since the beginning. Again, we saw him in Barcelona. When did Hussein and San join us? Oh, it sounds like 2014. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, We'll see a player from the early years of the EPT, and it's always great when they make a comeback, make a deep run in a tournament like 20 years after the tour started. And, and sadly, and I hate to admit this, sometimes they fly under the radar. You might get someone, a lot of those Scandi players that were yeah. around in the early season still yeah. pop up from time to time, and they just, you know, they're, they're quiet. Yeah. Uh, Juddy96 mentions Mark Telcher. I can't remember if Mark played the very first season, but he was a winner in season two, so kind of was one of the OGs of the EPT. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no music, no. And no music has some stuff to do. Queen five versus queen three, and there's a five on the flop. Should be a quick one. So far, I've been pretty impressed with Ustanovic. Obviously, we had that hashtag fun fact. Uh, biggest cash being 21,800. Obviously, looking good to do some damage here as well. 35 big blinds and a dream. But uh, saw quite a lot of him on the feature table yesterday. And yeah, it seems pretty solid. Enjoying watching the play. Had a couple nice big hands. Yeah. Let's see if he can spin up that 35 bigs and make it count potentially get a new high score back to back thank you to undersea monkey for verifying that mark telcher's season two london win was his first recorded cash and we're at 138 players now so i'm going to say more eliminations during this first level than i would have expected i guess play always tightens up towards the end of a day you come into the new day and people are more willing to go for it. I kind of felt like the post-bubble bust-out bonanza hadn't really reached its full potential yesterday, yeah. even though we did play nearly a full level. Yeah. Or more than a level, I should say, right? <laughs> After the bubble. And among the eliminations we've seen today, the most recent EPT champion, Simon Vitsiak, will not be going back-to-back. -back. Oh, I really, I can tear up this note card that says back-to-back -back Vitsiak. It's annoying. Elkanuts points out Barney Boatman must have been there from the very beginning. Indeed. Hendon Mob were regs on the EPT in the early years. Haven't seen Barney for a while, though. He didn't make it to Barcelona. Did see him at UK IPT Brighton immediately afterwards. That's right. That's right. Ace, Queen, Five. So something for everyone. Kulev with the advantage right now. All right, time for uh, Nick's been impressed by Ustinovich. <laughs> see how he handles the outkicked situation. Who's the who's the player who made that really sick lay down last night? Was outkicked and just folded on the turn. Um, was that Ustinovich? No, um, older guy. Previous CPT winner won uh, in Sochi. 
Gilboa. Gilboa. Yuri Rocky Gilboa. That was him, yes. Uh, called to the deck jack 10 and then folded on the turn to the second, or no, sorry, on the river to the ace jack. It was check, check, bet turn, and then river. Uh, bet folds. And despite being kind of uh, wild, Trent too made a lay down or two yesterday that I was a little shocked by. Ustenovich more likely to chop this than to win it now. Well, Timmy watching on YouTube observes, this is why you don't fish with ace nine. Oh, Timmy. What day is it, guys? It's Thursday. Oh, Thursday. okay. Sorry. Sorry, Timmy, but you banned. And remember, we've established that Chat Pro Saturday is a privilege, not a right. <laughs> so we need to see people earn that privilege in the next 48 hours. It's not the final table, though, right? On no. Saturday? No. It is a very important day, though, playing down from the last two tables to the final six. So I'm not... I'm tempted to say we're not going to let anything fly. This is a really tricky one for the ace nine of hearts. Yeah, so he check called the flop for 15,000, facing a second bet of 21,000. And this is Kulev, man. This guy's an absolute murderer. You think he's not going to be in here bluffing sometimes? I would argue quite often. Giving it some thought, though. He's feeling, feeling the bad vibes here. I just tell myself that even when I am ahead here, the river's a spade, and I don't want to deal with that, so I just fold. Oh, wow. What an absolutely fantastic fold. There you go. I mean, there you go. You, you called it. I don't know that my terrible rationale is shared by a good poker player. I, I've asked you many times, when are we going to publish the Little Book of Joe? <laughs> Doesn't have to be a long book, Joe. You know, I know you, you just like, you know. My book would be a really good, like, responsible gaming book. All the reasons why. Just take a break from the game. No, no, no. Just, you, just take a break. No, Joe, it should be like one of those choose-your-own-adventure books. <laughs> Where so, you just so, die so, every so, single so, time. So, so, so you, 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 look, you look up the hand, and it's like jacks, and then you go, okay, cool. Now turn to page 800 to see what happened, and then just fold the turn because you know it's you always going to come an ace on the river. You got it in pre against aces. You <laughs> lose. You roll it back. <laughs> 900 ways to play. So I'm loving this little nugget from Stat Trick, observing it has not been a good start to day three for French players. We lost Lucien Cohen from the feature table. We've established that Simon Vitsiak's out. Apparently Antoine Sout and Alexandra Reed have also been eliminated. Oof. And his final little hashtag fun fact is that Tuan Mulder has been knocked out huh? and he has a sideways French flag. Tenuous. <laughs> Tenuous stat trick. I like it. Uh, that's exactly the kind of stat I would go for. But uh, Julian Montoy is having an okay day here at the feature. And he's got a, a double reverse sideways French flag. A.K.A. a French flag. I noticed yesterday that uh, Tonka was wearing his Canadian team pro badge upside down. And I was wondering if it was a pr in protest. You know, sometimes people will turn the flag upside down. If there's a, and I think it's a protest over the different kinds of syrup <laughs> they have at the buffet here. There's at least 14 different kinds of syrup. And Canadian maple ain't one of them. That's right. So I think Tonka <laughs> turned his, his, his badge around to show, express his discontent I discovered a new section of the buffet this morning. Is it more syrup? No, it is a tiny section, which is probably about a third of the size of the desk that we are working from, which is not a big desk, by the way, which is the healthy eating section. There's a whole salad section. Yeah. What, what's, what was in the healthy eating section that's different than the salad section? So this morning, for example, it's where you'll find, like, the granola. It's where you'll find all of the plant-based milks. It's where you'll find... Oh, there's uh, plant-based milk? I, yeah. I found that part, yeah. Do people laugh at you when you go over there? 
It's just considering the size and scale of this buffet, just the section which is labeled healthy eating is like <laughs> literally 2% of the floor space. Can I tell you what happened today? They, um, they came and cleared my plate and I kept my, my cutlery just in case I wanted more. And like the look on the waiter's face was like, there's just no way you could possibly eat more. Like, <laughs> let me, please give me that cutlery. Uh, in, in that vein as well. So me, me, Joe and I ran up to during the dinner break to have some dinner. and we, oh, both, was, we I felt like this such a loser last night. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that in a sec. But basically, we sat down and we munched that food really quick. And I, we stood up and then we walked off to get back to work. I have to admit, about two hours later, I went back down and just had a whole nother dinner. You went again? again. Yeah, yeah, I didn't feel satisfied from that. <laughs> Spent most of our dinner break begging people to sit with them. <laughs> it was very busy. And then the whole time I thought we ended up sitting with Alex Keating, and the whole time I thought he was judging me and how much food I was eating also. <laughs> Joe, everyone is always judging you. Folded to the blinds, Alex Kulev, future of me, completes in the small. Online qualifier Fabio Peluso is the table chip leader, has 10-4 in the big, and checks his option. 5 Ace, king, five. I liked how that was the relevant card was the five, and then you were like, five. Bet of 5,000, Peluso with 10 high, faults. I appreciate that people are tuning in all the time, right? They probably didn't watch some of our coverage from yesterday, haven't seen any of the feature table coverage from today. But I'm now so bored of lame Harry Potter references that I kind of feel that we should just insta-ban anyone who makes a lame Harry Potter joke. I mean, I was kind of bored of it with Mike Haxton back in, like, 2011. Kind of gave up on that, the David Van Plews and the Ike Haxtons. Can I flick the switch and fully authorize our mods to start muting people? Sure. Switch flicked. Insta ban to ask a ban. Okay, I'll allow that one. <laughs> nice one, Kel. I did specify lame Harry Potter. Right, exactly. Hey, if you want to roll the dice. And come up with something new. You spelt it wrong, though, so you're banned. <laughs> Mui's raised with the sailboats, pocket fours, and Zhao Tomas is called with King Queen. Ace 10 for Peluso in the small. I feel a set coming. Anyone else feel a set of fours coming? Mui set. Peluso looking for the squeeze. I don't think we're going to get a chance to see a flop here, Joe. So Nui has about 43 bigs here. Definitely could consider set miming still. He should see a flop because he's going to hit a set. Oh, how's that set looking, Joey? <laughs> he, he just folded a four. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, have you ever heard any of my bad beat stories? Blockers aren't real. <laughs> Well, let's just assume he would have flopped a set. Yeah. Yeah, Joe probably had it right, but we'll never know. What was that kid's <laughs> name who, who one-outed me? Dave something? Dave used to work here, but doesn't anymore? Yeah. 
I think that was more to do with the fact that he failed to show up for his flight back from Sochi rather than he won outed you, but yeah. Yeah, he, no, 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 no. I wasn't anymore. saying that's not why. I wasn't saying that's why he doesn't work here. Yeah, that was it. Dave Tyler. So we're halfway through the first level of the day, halfway through level 16. And we have lost 22 players so far, 133 remain. Average stack is 300k. Action of the feature table has been folded to Oleg Ustinovich. Kulev with ace 10 in the cutoff. What, what did he win on our tour recently? Was it a super high roller? It was the super high roller at Monte Carlo. Nice fella, stuck around, gave me a good interview. Gave us a good interview, I should say. Yeah, he's a really good guy. Very friendly. An absolute super crusher at this stage as well. I always expect that the best players are going to be mean. And they almost never are. I think they have a very mean demeanor at the table very frequently, and they give that off, that it's energy. A mean style, right? Just sure. they'll punish you at the table doesn't mean they're mean people. Uh, is Ine really considering... Well, he's getting a solid price, I guess. Oh, he's not in the big blind. He's in the small blind. Yeah, no, I was going to say, the big blind defend would be kind of cool, but just decides to come along with the 9-5 of diamonds and the small blind. Well, okay, then. Same, same. Now. Same, same, but different. And he has flopped a flush draw. Uh, that's the board that Paul Newey wanted on the last hand. <laughs> Seven of diamonds. Am I allowed to say that? No offense, Ine. Seven of diamonds for the birthday boy. Happy birthday to you. Ustinovich here, pretty confident with the bet on queen 4-4. Four, four. Quick fold from the ace-10, and Ine is going to nowhere. Oh, it's glasses versus glasses. One fifty. I like to think of it as glasses versus goggles, because those things are goggles. Two villains in a Genet movie facing off against each other. There is the flush for Ine. Now almost a nine to one favorite. I think this is like a hundred percent check with the sevens and no seven on the river instead it's a four diamond board you know checks tread lightly Ustinovich. Checks it back. Flush is good. Stinovich losing the minimum there, playing around 25 big blinds, and still 40 minutes to run at the 2K, 5K blind level. And an opportunity to remind you guys that we offer the opportunity for you to play the mini EPT Cypress online series while we're streaming this event. Started yesterday, continues today, tomorrow, the day after, and Sunday, with $60,000 in added value, awarding Power Path tickets in every single prize pool. 
those tickets added to the prize pool. And on Sunday, we're going to give away two gold power passes in the two mini main events. If you open the Pokestar software, you'll see the lobby right there. It's on the front page, mini EPT Cypress. If you don't see it, chances are the series is not available in your part of the world. Three tournaments every single day, which you can grind while watching the live stream. I used to take it for granted being able to play along with the stream. Now I wish I could. If you can, take advantage of it. They pay of poker stars and put up a parking lot. You know what I mean? Wise words, Joe. Wise words. Peluso in the cutoff. To the hand, he's going to play 100% of the time. And he's going to raise just above the min. What do I do? What do you want? Fold. Hit seven fold. Eight fold. Six one fold. Takes it down. Nothing to report. Peluso picking up a pot. Hundred and thirty two players left. Ten percent of the field. Is that right? One percent? Ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent. Hashtag human calculator. Okay. I was quizzing you. Six four fold. Five fold. Peluso Jack ten suited. Hi, Jack. Six six raise eleven thousand. Peluso had some nice hands to play here. He is gonna open again. The JT suited. So we saw Ine playing that 9-5 suited just now from the small blind. Very unconventional. Wondering if the steampunk goggles will help him once more. Anybody do any 40k Adeptus Mechanicus? Come on. <laughs> Five seconds. Seven fold. It's killing me. Is that a Warhammer reference? It's a Warhammer 40k reference, yeah. There's been 40,000 different Warhammers. I decided it's too early. <laughs> Nick's showing me some Warhammer character now that's going to haunt my dreams. You must have lost your virginity so late. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the game where you got to paint your own figurines? Uh, that's this. Yeah, you, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Six five raise ten thousand. Six fold. You forget we're streaming this on Twitch, Joe. Like 30% of the audience. Goo! <laughs> Immediately knew what I was talking about. <laughs> An ace-10 offsuit against an under-the-gun raise from Alex Kulev. We can see its domination situation, but I'd probably do that exact same thing. Thank you. I remember now. That's a great idea, Nick. Are you ever going to stream painting some of those figurines? 
I actually have friends that do exactly that, so. Yeah, you yeah. should do that. I mean, if you've never given them a shot, though, the novels are really good. Famously good, by the way. No, I'm not, it's not just my opinion. And there's like 600 of them in the Black Library. So that's considerably less than 40,000. <laughs> Ustinovich. Just a call out of the small blind with ace tray suited. Hey, that's a fun flop for ace tray. Three threes. A set of threes. <laughs> Fortunately for Kulov, he is not connected with this board at all, other than the possibility of backdoor spades. Makes a continuation bet of 21,000. Hi, hi on YouTube asks payouts. Absolutely. Thank you for your question. So does he want to raise right here, right now? Does he want to play it slow? He is quite short. I think given the fact he only has 22 big blinds behind, we're just going to see the call we do. Okay, well, there go Kulev's backdoor draws. 0% equity now. So Kulev did size up flop here. You guys will notice that it was quite chunky given the very dry texture of 933 and to see a call there from a short stack i think it's going to set off alarm bells here we might see the slowdown obviously with a hand like queen tennis spades the cool thing is you're still beating some flush draws you know with queen high yeah makes sense checks and four of hearts on the river and i think that means kulev knows it's probably over over if your opponent doesn't already have a pair that's made Probably making plenty of flushes at the stage too. Lots of suited hands like to defend big blind. Sorry, small blind here. <laughs> I think from the small blind as well, we'll see plenty of uh, middling pairs that still want to take a flop here, but don't want to be all in against the UTG open. Seventy-two thousand in the pot, and a small bet from Ustinovich, which is greeted by Snapfold and Kulev. Yeah, you'll notice the speed that Kulev plays. That guy just knows the game inside and out. Very rarely pausing, except for in really big decision points. He knows that that's just all over bad. I like the way he plays that hand, though. I like the size and the flop, and then the slowdown turn up. I think that's a lot easier to play than smaller and then having to consider barreling over cards when your opponents can float lighter against the smaller flop sizing thirty minutes left on the level one hundred and thirty one players remaining in the tournament and Will Pro asks is that Joe Carter? I'm trying to work out which of these players could possibly be Joe Carter. Ine? Especially when he covers up most of his face like that. Seat Deuce. Astinovich? Oh. I mean, number one, bad lookalikes, you're not allowed to use other poker players. Mm -hmm. Number two, that is a horrific, terrible, appalling, inconceivable bad lookalike. Not a good bad lookalike. I'm trying. I'm trying. But no, can't do it. I'll tell you one thing about Ustinovich, he's got aces. <coughs> Oh, oh, now, 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 Will Poe's backtracking. Oh, player in seat three, Zhao Tomas. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Okay. Less bad. Still breaks rule number one, but. Oh, 
quadruple. Okay, so this one, Harry Potter on a roll. Yeah, guys, you guys. Go. Sorry, you're banned. I have given our moderators free reign to mute slash ban anyone who makes a lame Harry Potter references. So just stop. And I hate to break this to you because I'm sure many of you think you're really funny, but 90%, 98% of the comments are lame. What do you think of Voldemort? Yeah. I'd never seen it before. I, I kind of like Voldemort, but I've seen it like three times in the last 10 minutes, so. Hey, Paul. One is opposed. Nine TNN says, so weird. Comment on players' poker, not how they look. Come on, man. You're right. That was a great fold. So Astinovic picking up some monsters right now. It's had aces, now has kings. Peluso in the big blind with fives. I love the way he put in those 10,000 chips. Deuce. Paluso may get to the turn here. Hello. Looks like you might have a lead. I think I'm raising this bad boy all day long. A lot of the leads here are going to be pairs that you got beat. They're going to be sort of pair plus flush draw situations. They're going to be straight draws. All Moral of the story, no one is folding <laughs> to a raise here. <laughs> Moral of the story, we shouldn't be afraid of the lead is my point. We should probably recognize that it's very rarely going to be absolute strength, and we should uh, put in some more chips. If we raise 21,000. And looks like that's what we're going to do. 21 to go. Also, James, to this know-it-all here, who said that uh, the guy said he bought the glasses because it would be a funny conversation piece, but the commentators aren't having any of the convo. And he bought the glasses at Disney World. Harry Potter's not a Disney character, so... Correct doesn't really track. I believe his friends bought the glasses for him, by the way, if you want to remember the story. I think it was prescription. I always keep a little piece of paper in my wallet with my friends' prescriptions and them in case I want to buy them glasses at Disney World. This would be hilarious, by the way, if the five high flush gets there. Not hilarious for Ostinovich. I think we see a slowdown here quite often. 30 big blinds behind Ustinovich. Peluso, our current feature table chip leader. So, okay. Not discouraged by the clubs here, apparently. Reaching for chips. Correctly putting in a value bet, which I like. I was thinking maybe the clubs would have slowed him down just a tad, and obviously given maybe some top pairs, a little bit more confidence to give him some more value on the river. I think there's a chance that the check just wins you more chips here, because if your intention is to bet the turn, I think you're going to get a lot of these kinds of combos to fold. Although, granted, with clubs, you are also potentially going to get to protect from the four-card flush. Five seconds. Yeah, it does get the fold, does protect from clubs. Nice pot there. Ustinovich manages to take down another one. Been uh, cruising here, now up to 44 big blinds and about middle of the pack here on the feature table. Floor. Can you call service for me?
Eight opposed. One raise, 10,000. Paul knew he's going fishing with ace nine. Be careful, Paul. Four folds, five folds. Can you get a flat one? Six folds. Flat one. This conversation on glasses is quite the spectacle. <laughs> That's from Guy. Good one, Guy. I liked it. James isn't reaching for the band key. High praise. The 8 5 defend is rewarded. Heads up. Six, seven, check. One bet ten thousand. Nui continuing for ten thousand. Yune calls. No overs, no overs, no overs, no overs, no overs. Hey! The full house. And he checks a second time. If only that worked on myself. Yeah, Ine not afraid to get in the mix here with some uh, conventional hands. Uh, I mean, Nui might just think he has the best hand on the turn here. Ace nine is a fairly monstrous combo on tray five, tray tray. Queen of diamonds, no change. Six, seven, check, and one check. Check to showdown. And Ine wins a relatively small pot. He's playing around 45 big blinds at the moment, a below average stack, the average being 305K. Jao Tomas is the shortest stack at the table with 24 bigs. Fabio Peluso, the online qualifier, is still the chip leader at this table with more than 100 bigs. Blinds will be going up in 24 minutes. We'll actually have our first break of the day in 24 minutes. And on the other side of the break, it'll be a new blind level. Nui back in action, raising under the gun with ace four of diamonds. King queen suited for Tomas. Tomas on just 24 bigs here. Still a beautiful hand to play. First, the UTG just decides to flatten the hijack. Well, Tomas is called and will have the advantage of position, assuming we get to a flop. Ine with tens in the small blind. Oh, man. This is a really interesting one. Definitely a spot where you could consider squeezing. I think flatting is also fine too, although you will have to contend with two opponents that way in many cases. Three bets out of the small blind. A re-raise to 39,000. Yeah, I dig it a lot. I assume Nui will ditch the ace four. Does Tomas get to a flop in position with king queen? It's a tough hand to fold, but on that stack. And four folds. Nah. Alex Kulev returns to the table with a coffee. We'll start with Oleg Ostinovic. Raises under the gun to 10,000. I've only seen one of his cards, which is the Deuce of Spades. Six 
close. Round to the blinds, I'm guessing. Yep, and A folds one at a time. It's Paul Newey's big blind, King nine off. And one call. That is a call. So Stenovich here, got to have deuce, he's got to have ace deuce suited. It's open under the gun here. Yeah, so likely that Newey has the best hand right now. Yeah. Keep three, bet 8,000. Can't think of any other combos you'd open from under the gun here at this point in the tournament. It has to be deuces or ace deuce of spades. Maybe he just looked at one and he's bored. No, he's been playing a lot of hands. One tick. Looking so disinterested that it almost feels like a reverse tell, but what could he possibly have oh, on this wow. board? Yeah, looks like he wants to fire again. Are we shoot shooting in 30 FPS? 50. Oh. 50? That's weird. I didn't even know it went that high. <laughs> European broadcast standard is 25 frames per second, so basically if you're shooting at 50, you're basically shooting high res. A divisible by two? Correct. Man, we're not going to know what that other card was. Oh, it really makes me mad. It's like not knowing what Bill Murray says at the end of Lost in Translation. Wow, really got the king nine to fold there, huh? Outrageous. Dean asks, was that a tight fold? Not sure I would have folded the king nine there, but um, I think the two barrels on that texture does definitely signal a lot of strength sometimes, especially versus the UTG open. His range going to contain over pairs, but I don't know. Ten thousand. King Queen. Top Moss raises. Hit six re raise twenty five thousand. So Tomas is our shortest stack here, guys. Uh, only 20 big blinds behind. It really has to make a decision here. Peluso's aggression here, very well timed, just putting Tomas in a really rough spot. He basically has to decide if he wants to commit now or forever hold his peace. Decides to call. The pot will be very inflated in relation to Tomas' stack. 62K in the middle, 87K behind. Okay. He's flopped top pair with a decent kicker. Peluso also with top pair. Good double up spot for Tomas here. I was going to say, I have a prediction, and I think it involves Tomas getting the full double here. King 8 sued, well timed 3 bet, unfortunately. Does see the flop and does connect in a way that's very difficult to get away from. SPR around 1.5. What you going to do? I mean, you're just going to end up getting this in a ton.
at this stage, I'm just going to call and let him blast off. I mean, you're not going to struggle to get the chips in. You've got a very strong hand here. If you're losing, you're losing, but you know you're never going to get away from king-queen on this texture, so you might as well give him some more opportunity to blast. I'm happy for whoever that was. So, uh, hashtag fun fact about Joe Tomas, Nick. He only has seven grand in total live earnings. So even a min cash in this event would have been more than he's ever won live before. And he's now guaranteed a minimum of $10,700. And there is another money jump when we get to 119. So 10 more KOs and then a locked up 12,300. He should really be all in here. I think that's the only way to make this look like a plausible bluff. Maybe a jack-10, maybe a queen-jack suited. Uh, and then obviously if your opponent does have queens or jacks or tens, they're probably just going to end up calling you here as well just because they're, they're, uh, they're going to be priced in to call a lot of the time, I imagine. I think going small here looks way too strong. I think polarizing is the way. <coughs> 74k behind, 88k in the pot. Shove is for less than pot. Peloso needs to have the best hand approximately one in three times to make a profitable call and does have a very good top pair. Or I should say a very weak top pair, but having top pair is very good in general. All in from Zhao Tomas. With the best hand, gets called, gets the full double up. And Zhao Tomas is now going to be in a much more comfortable position as we come into the last few minutes of this level. Nice little spot there for Tomas. Beautiful flop to get paid and get the double. Now playing close to 50 big blinds. Paul Newey now the shortest stack of the table with 30 bigs. I don't know how, how many times you have to warn people. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like that one. Can, can you can you read it? Or no? Does that defeat the purpose? <laughs> Purposed? Purpose. I appreciate that there is a certain element of subjectivity in the decision process. Just assume that the bar is really, really high, and you've got to get over that bar. I think some people probably want to get banned. Which I think is like a win-win. <laughs> so first break of the day is 13 minutes away. During the break, we will be changing the feature table. Tonka is at his second table of the day. His first table broke during this session. He's at table 11 right now. His table mates include Julian Sitbon, Bart Leibert, and Andrea Dato. And that table will be coming to the main stage for the second level of the day. So Tonka on the feature table on the other side of the first break. players in this hand. I love it. Just to correct the Joe Carter thing. Yeah. LL commenting on YouTube. It was observed Thank earlier you. on. There was some confusion because the wrong player was identified as the Joe Carter look like. Initially they said seat two and actually it was seat three. So yes, we conceded that there is a certain visual similarity between Joe Carter and Joe <laughs> Thomas, but there is a well-documented, well-publicized rule about the bad lookalikes game. You can't compare someone to another poker player. They have to be compared to someone who is famous outside of the poker world. So it was disallowed on a technicality. Correct.
ended quickly. Well, well, well. I like it. Just to take you behind the scenes on the production for a moment, when we came off air last night, what was it, 11.30, 11.40 at night? Mm -hmm. We were immediately asked to make our lunch selections for today. I have no idea, no recollection of what I ordered for lunch. I know what you ordered. <laughs> was it the pizza? Margarita pizza. There we go. Oh, easy game. I'm now looking forward to lunch. I don't think I put it in order. Is that, <laughs> is, is that a problem? I doubt it. It is bizarre how spoiled we are for food in this particular stop where we get to order lunch, but also there is a buffet yeah. 40 yards from here that has lots of unimaginable delights. Yeah. A bunch of stuff you would never want to eat also, but plenty to eat. Have you sampled the baklava? I have not had baklava yet, no. It's pretty good. That might be the reason why... Uh, my Parker was in, in protest. Maybe they weren't using the right syrup in there. <laughs> he had one bite and spat it out because it wasn't maple. Three, Raise from Kings. They have two things at breakfast every day that I absolutely love. One, fried halloumi. Two, fried dough. See, I'm a big fan of fried halloumi. I just don't feel like it for breakfast, and it's never at the, at the dinner buffet. They only have it at breakfast. It is in some of the dinner food, like it's on the pizza at dinner. Right. But you're right, they don't just have like a big old thing of fried halloumi. I do wonder what all that syrup's for though. Is it for the crepes? Isn't it like, isn't it like jam though as well? They got like 20, 20 kinds of jam. Jam and syrup and honey and. And there's only two choices of pancake: the thin ones or the fat ones. I'm uh, sorry. Are there more <laughs> pancakes in existence than that? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that there's a lot of stuff you can right, put on yes, the pancakes, yeah, yeah, but okay, the actual choice right. of pancakes is, is is limited. Are people putting syrup in their cereal? I don't know. Now that's what I call a sticky situation. <laughs> <laughs> the mint tea is also incredible. The, Wait, the, there's mint tea? Have you not been to the I, tea no, lounge? I need you to take me around. You haven't been to the tea lounge no, yet? No, I haven't. I've been, I've been to bed, <laughs> and I've been to the buffet, and that's it. So the mint tea is amazing. The Turkish tea is amazing. The Turkish coffee is amazing. Turkish coffee? Ooh, that's oh, cool. hold on. Spicy. We got aces. So after Peluso completes in the small with King-5, Ine raises to 10,000 with aces. So far, Ine pretty clinical. has been given the mix with some unusual combos here and there, but loving the sizing here. Ace Ray. Ine. Peluso pay. All K. Wow. Okay, was not expecting to defend from the King-5. You can't get pushed around here, Nick. Peluso with the King of Diamonds in his hand. And straight possibilities might stick around for one more straight. Seven bet, 9,000. A relatively small continuation bet from NA, 9K. King of Diamonds, yeah, come on, let's go. Running Diamonds, running straight cards. There's the call from Peluso, and we go to the turn. 
This hand is a bucket hat full of trouble. Now he's had his five. Oof. He's halfway to two pair. That's how I like to think of it. Living on a prayer. Don't discount the prospect of trips. Two thirds of the way to trips. So, I think this is probably on the smaller side for me, guys, given the, given the texture. There's a lot of ways to get value. There's a lot of combos here that I think will have a pair in a flush draw situation, a pair in a straight draw situation. And therefore, I think maybe a larger size in the turn would have been warranted, but we're going to the river. Oh, my God. Dang. Peluso catches runner runner to make two pair and aces have been cracked. It's okay if you want to laugh. This is where Ana goes big. I mean look. Peluso has the sorry, Ine, excuse me, has the opportunity to take a check here, but it seems like a really good board to just barrel off. Ine Akse out day. Anye. <laughs> He's not going to like this. He's not going to be happy. Satisfaction will be a long way from his mental state. The question is... Does, pay off a. <laughs> does Peluso try and go for value at this point? I mean, you're beating so much now. You think he might check raise? I think he might check raise. I mean, so Ine's not going to have pocket threes. He's not going to have fives. He probably won't have sevens. Might have eights. Might have kings. But you're blocking kings pretty heavily here. You're beating aces. You're beating queens. You're beating jacks. I really, f you're crushing ace king now as well. If ace king just decided to bet three times, so really you're only worried about getting super cold decked by pocket kings. So you, I think there's just too much value to miss. It is a raise from Peluso. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, if you're going to play on a hunch like this and go runner, runner, two pair with king five, <laughs> you got to get max value out of it. Oh, wow. He's made it 120K. It's 90,000 to call. Ed K asking, do people really raise here as a bluff, though? Yeah, I mean, I would say very rarely, but I think you're just beating too much, Ed. That's the, kind of the point. Oh, it's a cycle situation, isn't it? Five seconds. Time bank card deployed. Yeah, I think Ine can make a fold here. It's just so under bluffed this spot. What does that mean, under bluffed? Like your opponents just don't have many bluffs in this Got situation. It. Okay, yes, I agree. I mean, if Peluso has king. Jack of diamonds, he's not going to check raise this river. So, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Five seconds. Another time bank card. Worth it. <laughs> Definitely worth it. Like, maybe your opponent has a six of diamonds and they do something super weird on the river, but. That's also Aren't you blocking a six of diamonds? Pretty thin. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> Joe. You have two of the aces. How are they going to have a six? <laughs> Isn't that how blockers work? I love the fact that Tom, our Twitch mod, is inviting people to vote on what they would do with aces here. Bear in mind that everyone is voting with the inside knowledge that the other guy has two pair. So I can honestly say I would fold the aces here. Ine was just asking, would you really do this with a hand like a7? And again, maybe that's a combo because you're blocking sets in that situation. So suddenly you're trying to represent a set of sevens or something. I get it, but I think he's going to fold. Wow. That's so hard, though. What an absolutely painful run out for Ine. Four time bank cards played by Ine as he decides.
how to react to this check raise. Sitting there with aces. Makes the call, sees two pair, loses. So, so, so gross. Yeah. Oh, God, so painful. So painful. Really unfortunate spot there. And this might be the last hand of the level. Is this maybe an occasion where it's okay to berate your opponent? <laughs> the tournament clock ticking into the break. And I'm glad we ended on a high as we change feature table during the break. We see Fabio Peluso win that last hand and remain table chip leader. Still has more than half a million chips. Average stack right now is 314,000 with 126 players remaining. New blind level will be 3-6, so Peluso's got more than 90 bigs. Alex Kulev has dropped below the 50 big blind mark. Paul Newey not quite in the danger zone, but down to 23 bigs. Ken in A after losing that pot playing 24 bigs. But a reminder that there will be a change in feature table. When we come back in 20 minutes time, it will be Tonka taking a seat on the main stage. And a reminder that his table mates include French pro Julien Sitbon. So new lineup for the second level of the day when we come back from the Cyprus leg of the Pokestars European Poker Tour. We'll be back inside of 20 minutes with more live action from this 5K main event as day three continues. I wasn't, it's like I was rooting against Chris. I just said, well, I hope Farha wins. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I was an idiot. What do you want from me? One other thing I wanted to ask you about your first year on the World Series, the Money Maker year. Is it true that you thought that it would be bad for poker if Money Maker won? That you felt that in order for the game to have legitimacy, the established pro, Sammy Farha, needed to win? Okay, James, you know, I'm not expecting the softballs here, but you, earlier <laughs> you, brought up, you, know, you wanted to finish the story that, you know, my, my investors got zero back in 25 k now you're pounding away on a mistake I made, an honest mistake. It's, it's not like I didn't kidnap the Lindbergh baby, all right? <laughs> I wasn't one of the masterminds behind 9-11. I, I, when we were coming down the stretch, in fact, when Phil Ivey got knocked out 10th just before the final table, and obviously we were going to have seven episodes, so we were going to have plenty of Ivey, I, I, I was horrified. I thought that was bad because he was the most established person left. Yeah. So now, now, you know, now we got nine, you know, now we got nine clowns left. But yes, when it got to heads up, when it was Moneymaker versus Farha, I believed with every you know inch of my heart that it was bad for poker if some accountant, 27-year-old hick accountant from Tennessee who almost sold a seat and won a seat for any one of 37 different numbers now we have. $39, $49, you want to lie. $110, $150. Yeah, it was a I know the exact amount. The, the correct was, number, by the way, the correct number for posterity is $86. $86 as of today, Jay. But anyway, <laughs> I thought it was bad for poker. Some amateur came in and just showed that you could be a nobody and have no no private previous experience and have a rank of hands chart in front of you and beat the, the Humphrey Bogart gambling figure with the, the cigarette dangling out of his yeah. mouth. Yeah, so I wasn't, it's like I was rooting against Chris. I just said, well, I hope Farha wins. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I was an idiot. What do you want from me? Okay, well, to that point, do you think that over the last 18 years or so since 2003 that you have changed your opinions on much else besides that? It feels like, to me, you've grown a lot, or changed, we'll call it, because grown uh, isn't necessarily always uh, a positive or a negative thing. It seems like you've changed quite a bit. Do, do you feel like you have? You know, there, there, again, sometimes there's changes that you don't feel or see. Uh, it, it's almost like when you're in the water in the ocean and uh, what's it called? When you move from one part to another part, you don't even notice it. You the, just drift uh, away. <laughs> yeah, you realize your towel is way over there now. Yeah. Okay, so there can be an undertow in your life. It just happens so slowly, so incrementally. You don't notice it. And, and 12 years later, you know, you're convicted for manslaughter and <laughs> you were having a bad day. 
but you didn't know how you got there. So there have been changes uh, for sure. The one change I've never made, which I've been stubborn on in terms of my approach to how we do the broadcasting, is screw the strategy. Uh, and I, I, you know, I take grief for this with certain segment of the poker community, but I, I, I literally did not even study up more on No Limit Hold'em because I didn't want to reach the point where I'm thinking, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a point. I'm going to make a point here on why he is betting Jack-10 offsuit from under the gun two, because I know what this is. I don't give a shit. and uh, I've never given a shit. I always thought it would change what I'm doing. So yeah, I've made a point of actually not studying the game. Even when I've gone in the last few years to do bracelet events, uh, streaming them on Poker Go or wherever we stream them on, that's a game that I play, like a stud game or a horse game. I don't do much strategy because I just don't think that's the way to go for, for most of the audience. But yeah, I've had changes and uh, I just don't know what they are. Pocket fours under the gun. He raises to 45,000. Finger and Trinovsky are folded. Seidel's on the button, and we haven't seen his hole cards. Come on, Seidel. Grow a beard. Also show us your hole cards. Well, whatever he has, he thinks it's worth a call on the button. Martin Jakobsen in the big blind. As ace-seven offsuit. You've probably got no choice but to defend a medium ace here, even though you can't love it. He calls as well. We're going three-way to the flop. And that flop has a four on it. A set for Coleman. What's Martin doing? He should be checking here. This is bad timing. He leads the flop for 77,000. I like a flat call here from Colin because I think Martin's dunk leading this flop with a bad hand way more often than a good one. So if Dan raises, he probably gets two folds way too often, which you don't want. You want Martin to keep bluffing. Coleman does just call. And Seidel folds. We'll never know what he had. Ten on the turn. Jakobsen now with a gut shot. Martin's probably never going to get a fold here unless the board runs out so badly for fours that it makes his hand actually win. He's betting again. With just 9% equity. 155,000. There's not much more reason for Dan to fold now than there was on the flop. 7-8 got there. Once again, Coleman just calls. 627,000 in the middle. One card to come. And that card is a king. A set of fours are good. Yeah, I don't think Dan's ever folding. Hopefully Martin just gives up. He bluff shoves! Or he just blasts off. Probably not gonna work. Mm. Quick call from Coleman. And Jakobsen's out! Yeah, he probably got me out. Let me just calmly take a second before exiting this 50k tournament. That's not Martin Jakobsen, the eternal bridesmaid on the European poker tour. Good luck, guys. Wow. That, was nice. that was a gift. It was sick. Sick. I've never seen him doing something like this. Yeah. That, that was ambitious. Huh? That was ambitious. You don't get to do so. It is obviously the flagship. It is, um, it is what gets everybody's juices flowing.
So yes, here he is, the man who has been the voice of the World Series of Poker since 2002. I think I've got that right. He will correct me if I'm wrong. Loma Karen, welcome to the podcast. It's so good to finally be here. <laughs> I think he's referencing the fact that Norm has been on before. Sorry, Lon. <laughs> no, I get it. Just to be clear, Lon, I know that Norm made his debut in 03, the moneymaker year, but you did do the World Series the year yeah. before that. Oh, yeah. I have much more experience than Norman is why things <laughs> turn out the way they are. Yeah. Uh, yes, with my good friend Gabe Kaplan. Uh, we did that show, and it was quite an experience. But, um, yes, it led to 03 and let me get out of the banking world for after a few years. Yeah. Just, just to be clear, we're talking about two decades, 20 I years know. now. Yeah. No, I was talking to some people today um, about this could be the first year – where people can play in the main event who weren't born when Norman and I started. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that awful? That is a sobering <laughs> statistic. My goodness. Yeah, exactly. No, but that's good. Uh, but we all look great, and we're all happy, and we're healthy, right? I know that, obviously, you play World Series of Poker events, and you've been playing some events this year. Have you ever had the opportunity to play the main event, or is that a conflict with your broadcasting work? They've never let us do that. I'm not a right. 10K buy-in guy uh, anyway. I would play it if I could get into it. But, no, they don't uh, allow us to do that, especially now with the with the live uh, stream. You know, we're busy every day. Our, our, now our color commentators uh, will. You know, Antonio played it back in the day. Jamie played it. Uh, Maria Ho working with us this year, and so she'll be playing it. So we work around them. But for us uh, broadcast guys, no. No main event. I'm hoping that's my uh, Ty Stewart send-off gift. You know, it's a gold entry to the main event as long as I'm alive. <laughs> nice. So as someone who has observed it from the sidelines, from the commentary booth, what does the World Series of Poker main event mean to you? It is obviously the flagship. It is um, it is what gets everybody's juices flowing. And even as exciting as it is to play in the earlier bracelet events, um, you know, few people get that kind of thrill of playing in the main. A, I think the buy-in is perfect still, um, and I don't want ever want them to change it. They can do all the high rollers they want. You've got so many fabulous stories of the uh, every person coming out, scraping together the money, getting donations, selling themselves, whatever. It is, it's what it, it is the World Series of Poker, and that's what people talk about, and that's what people brings uh, brings people to Vegas all the time. And look at the story we're giving you this year, Lom. We're giving you. <laughs> Two of your fellow poker commentators <laughs> playing their first ever World Series I of Poker heard. main event. And now I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm a little shocked. I know what broadcasting pays, and I know you <laughs> already, in, you know, Canterbury. I know what Ohio stand-up comedy probably pays. <laughs> you know, play. so I, I'm really happy for you guys. I really want to know what's going to happen out there. So we do, too. So part of the, what we wanted to talk to you about, Lon, is that – so I'm having a bit of a crisis here. I won my seat via a uh, charity event. Now, I did, I did sink about – Unknowingly, I sunk about eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> into this charity event, not knowing that my credit. I thought my credit card didn't swipe, so I had him swipe it like three times, and I ended up donating like almost two grand to the charity. So, basically, <laughs> I satellited in uh, for about two k. I'm 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 struggling. Okay, first of all, I want to say hearing your voice is actually s calming me, soothing me. I'm stressing out over this in a big way, Lon. Oh, uh, I'm, wow, I'm, yeah. It's not uh, it's not fun for me at the moment. I'm really freaking out over playing for this much money, um, knowing that if I had a 10K score in a poker tournament, that would be huge for me. Like, that would be the biggest score of my life, and I'd probably have a really fun summer and can go on a nice vacation with 10K and maybe <laughs> don't want to roll the dice on it. But hearing your voice, it is taking me back to when I would stand on the rail at the World Series of Poker main event and, and, and feel that magic, right, for lack of a better word, that energy – um, and it, you're actually calming me down a little bit right now, and it's starting to take hold that this can be fun for me. And that's what I was alluding to with all the memories, with all those moments, and the fact that yeah. if you go back to like 05, 06, it was like a circus. And those day ones, you talk about all the characters, Lon, all the stories. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm the opposite of Joe. I'm super excited because I just want to enjoy the experience. Oh, uh, uh, and you're both correct. And <laughs> there is always that fear. I had, I had fear... Uh, when I uh, qualified for and then cashed in the TLC. And I had fear when I qualified and paid into the uh, and cashed in the Salute to Warriors the other day. So 
<coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, two dashes and two MS. Don't don't, um, don't worry. We you, that was that was a, that was a Jeff Platt level humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. He's such a better player than I am. But no, it it is. It's been built up all these years, rightly so. And for you guys to be in the industry and and have those same moments that you broadcast and put yourself into that seat, um, and and you know, Ardigan man, I I you know you are. Uh, you're a good player, you know what's going on, and you can see the big picture. And, and Stapes, you, you both have worked with us at the World Series, and so you know, you know the vibe that's going on out there. And uh, I don't know, Joe was busy drinking, I don't know, syrup and, and relish <laughs> or something, but I don't know if he ever got inside the playing area. But um, it's going to take a while to calm down. I think both of you, I mean, you, you, I mean, when you walk in, I don't know if you're going to go, you know, minute one, you know, and be there at the start. I'm that kind of guy, but I, I love to have that. I love to have that excitement and pumped up feeling and then have it kind of subside and say, okay, get that over with and move on and get on to business. It's a poker game. You got nine or 10 guys sitting there and, uh, you know, you know how to play poker. Rose up in the small blind with six deuce. Brian Reese started the hand with six big blinds, has four behind because he posted the big blind ante and the big blind itself. Rosa just calls. Ryan Reese checks his option with 10 deuce. <coughs> so Reese is open ended on the flop. Action goes check, check. Four pairs on the turn. Won't be surprised to see Lurzer check here again and look to go for a delayed bluff on the river. At this point, has a lock on this with 10 high. <laughs> it's super interesting if Lurzer bets because you would imagine that pre flop he shoves pretty much every queen, every king, every ace. So, unless he's trapping with a jack, man, honestly, I know this sounds crazy to say, but Ryan Reese with 10 high might be pretty suspicious of this all in. This would be one of the most insane calls we've ever seen on an EPT final table to call with 10 high, but honestly, I don't think it'd be the craziest one. He might be able to work this out that his opponent's never doing this with an ace high, king high, doesn't have them pre-flop. A lot of the time he's going to have these delayed bluffs. Can he make a wild call with the 10 deuce? He is definitely thinking about it. Looks like he might only have one more time bank left. Have you ever found yourself in an MTT, Finson, where you've called all in with 10 high and been Def right? Definitely not on a final table, not even close. This would be one of the sickest calls ever. But it just doesn't make sense from the six deuce. Oh, what a call! He calls all in with 10 high and will get the double up. What a call. <coughs> Maybe he grew up a huge Doyle Brunson fan. I thought you were telling the high call again. Wow. Insane. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to EPT Cyprus 2023 live coverage of day three of the main event from the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino, and Spa. The first ever. European Poker Tour from Cyprus, Joe Stapleton, Nicholas Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. 
there are our overall tournament chip leaders, Jose Gonzalez Sanchez, out in front with nearly a million. Carl Shaw, his name's been popping up all year long, repping the UK, second in chips. Timur Vardanian, Villian Pedelshikov, and Timothy Fries rounding out the top five. Those are the overall tournament chip leaders. I am very excited to bring you a new feature table, a little something for everyone as players are getting mic'd up. This is those players in chip order. Bart Liebart, one of my favorites out of Belgium. Andrea Dato, a player we've seen plenty on the European Poker Tour. Third in chips at this table, Parker Talbot. Tonka, you asked for him, you got him. Parker probably feeling a little bit better today, feeling fresh, looking fresh. Coming to the featured table with just over 50 big blinds. Nikita Kuznetsov, another player we have seen plenty of, as well as Julian Sitbon. Sergey Lisi, a player we saw yesterday at the feature table. Looking forward to getting to know Jose Jimenez and Alain El Haj as well. Parker looks like he may have lost some chips today. I think he started with around 500K. Now has 300K. Still a comfortable stack. And this is what they're playing for. That $6.4 million prize pool has been cracked open. We've been handing out min caches and min plus caches since last night. You're going to have to make it to the official final table, however, if you want to crack six figures in this event. Fourth place pays 350 465 for third, 650 for second. But yes, just barely edging out $1 million for the winner here at the first ever EPT Cyprus. Just taking a minute to get the new feature table players mic'd up as they come back from break. You know poker players, they come back from break, they get to the, where's my, where's my, where's my, right, I'm on the feature, oh boy. Your friend and mine, Parker Talbot. Tarker Ponka Talbot. <laughs> Tanka Pat Patanka, as we call him sometimes. No, that's not him getting freaky with himself. Just dropping a little mic cable down there so we catch all that comedy gold from Rudbeard himself. Fresh cut, too. I was, I was told it's a fresh cut. It doesn't look that fresh. That's not meant to be an insult. Rather understated shirt from Bart Liebart, who can often dress quite provocatively, if I may say so. I called one. <laughs> what are we in? What are we in? Bourbon Street? Is that a grenade drink? What's happening over there? Where do I get one of those? Well, you need all the chips, so if you keep giving them away, it's oh, okay, Bart. No, it's that special drink. What's it no, called? Mm, mate. I mean, no, I mean matcha. Going, no, mate. Mate. I think it's mate. Huh? Who said it's free? Who said it's free? <laughs> no, it's so, they always got to drink it out of the funny cup with the funny straw. That was like a mini mate cup. It's usually a lot bigger than that. Okay, I'm I'm learning all about new drinks on this trip. No, not to be confused with matcha, guys. That's a whole different kettle of fish. Right there, seat one, Sergey Lisi was at our feature table yesterday for a bit. Next to Tonka, we've got Julian Sitbon from France. He is sitting bon. Sitting very bon indeed. <laughs> Are you German? Yeah, we got three countries in a row with French as a national language. Canada, France, Belgium. Huh? 
small country in between, yeah. <laughs> Yerba mate, also known as mate, is an herbal tea, traditional drink in Latin and South America. Oh, yerba mate. <laughs> no, yerba mate. Yerba, my ba mate. <laughs> Oh my god, what are these cars? <laughs> they are like Seeming like a fun table already. It's better for us, we can see it. Action underway, oh, blinds 3,000, 6,000 with a 6,000 big oh. blind ante. Can I have a walk, please? Please see on the button. One walk, please. Just one more player to get through. Oh, this is Jose Jimenez in the small blind. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's about to take us on a jungle safari. Jimenez, an online qualifier. Qualified on pokerstars.es for 250 euros. And as limped in with ace four, Parker is going to check back the king jack in the big blind. First flop of the new feature table. Seven deuce deuce. Ace four ahead. Jex. Already looking to get to showdown. Yeah, this is the check all day, too. Check, check. On a diamonds on the turn. Improves no one. I have a prediction, Joe. Yes. Both players are going to check to showdown. I really like that for him and S. I feel like if I was in this spot against Tonka, he would just bet because he can. And he knows that he can frighten me. Trip deuces for both players. Where's this? Where's this in the ultimate Texas Hold'em board, huh? <laughs> Why does this never happen? Both players really happy to get to show down here. I mean, there's a chance you could try and value bet an A side given how readily Parker was checking it down. And Jimenez might actually try and sneak in a little one here. Absolutely cheek. Another going to do it again? Uh, I'm probably going to do it again. Habits <laughs> <laughs> die, die hard to remember how to say it. Yeah, that is exactly <laughs> what I said. The absolute cheek of it. <laughs> I like that phrase. Uh, Come on, nobody will, will know what you have. And he does get paid by the King High, unfortunately, for Parker. Nice little moment there for Jimenez, though, realizing if his opponent is checking in position, he's going to have some kind of showdown. He doesn't want to fold some of the time that I can beat. Parker's too good to fold there, that's why. Uh, I think I have 29 minutes left. Hopefully a couple more hours. I'm pro I'm the only person you bet that against, right? No, I think no, it's no, only person. Value? Only or person. Oh no. No, 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 no. You are not a special. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> but not in this in this way. You missed the value. <laughs> yeah. You missed the value on the flop and on the turn. Special type of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Told you I like so Bartley Bart. Easy barrel against him. <laughs> At least two big streets, you know? Yeah. You see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's three, actually. Talking goes, you targeted me? He goes, uh, you're not really special in poker terms. No, 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 you're a special person. Don't get me wrong. But no, I, I, I don't target you in this way. You're just not good enough, I'm afraid. Parker is a master of slapping you while he kisses you. <laughs> For me? No, not here, not now. Just take him to the river. Folds around to the blinds again. <laughs> and two quite playable hands. This time as well, a limp and a check. Jack 9-4, a pair of nines for Tonka. Backdoor spades for Sitpon. Ace 10 would be the best hand here quite a lot of the time. Absolutely. Check, check again. Ace on the turn. Finally, someone pairs a big card. Sipon can start firing now. Obviously, gets value from clubs, gets value from spades, gets value from straight draws, sometimes a combination of the two. 
18,000. Ah, uh, that seems like 18,000 to me. Oh. That's a good size. I like that, Joe. I guess so. Yeah, nailed it. It's 18,000 coming from Julian Sitbon. Nearly 3.3 .3 million in live earnings. Deepest runner in EPT was 23rd place in the London main event last year, right around the same time. Parker calls the 18,000. Whiffs the river. Gonna be turning up at showdown with third pair should showdown happen. Sitbon, 10 of clubs blocker, might try and get another street, but eh, not exactly the driest river in the world. Yeah. Gift, he says when he checks it. Yep, I feel that vibe. Does not punish Parker. Taking bug bait to the hand. <laughs> no decision. This time I was not even going to make a joke because I'm not getting funny anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna fall the river this time, right? For sure. Got a bad look alike for sit true, sit bond. Rafa Nadal. Fucking true. Yeah, I can oh, okay, Parker agrees. I can vibe with that. <coughs> I'm not saying it's a bad look alike. We just call them bad look alikes. Yeah. That was a pretty good bad look alike. Yeah. I might have been. Action folds around to Tonka once again on the button, has to fold the Motown. And a good thing he did because Julian Sitbon would have had that dominated. Ace Jack for Julian. Going to be raising the big blind of Bart Liebart. Nope, another limp, excuse me. And Bart is dominated as well. King, seven, deuce, two hearts. Lee Bart with the ace of hearts. Got another one of those spots, blind v. blind, Joey. Just like both players kind of just got enough to want to get to showdown. I mean, what the heck happened in this game? <laughs> what the, I mean, you'd be laughed out of the room if you checked more than two streets in a row when I first started. <laughs> Also in a 3K World Series event, you would start with 3,000 chips. The way God intended it. 1,500 event, 1,500 chips. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think blind started at like 1025 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sipbon going to bet Riv. In another situation where, yeah, gets a call. Gets a call from a slightly worse hand. <laughs> Three hands in a row played quite similarly. Quite eerie, actually. <laughs> blind on blind, blind on blind, blind on blind. Don't even mention it, please. <laughs> I, already, I already laughed. Be careful, I'm in the middle. Please don't fight, guys. I want a three-way fight. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. You like three ways? <laughs> huh? You like three ways? Yeah. Three Come on, guys. There are kids watching us. No. No, there are not. <laughs> <laughs> not, not accurate. Absolutely there not. There are not. There are three, yeah? In like a mud bath naked? Whoa, this is getting spicy. We'll make at least seven sales. I bet it would be more than that. Yeah. This is what the people came to see. Are you sure? 
<laughs> Someone's mom doesn't love them enough. All right, now proper hand on the button, raising it up. Big blind, beautiful hand, 6-7 suited. So El Haj here, 27 big blinds, just going to call probably most of the time here. Beautiful hand to defend the big blind with. Tons of equity on average, performing well even against hands like aces. It's one of the best hands you could have against aces. It's an ace cracker, sure. Yeah. You don't see many cloaks at the poker table. I enjoy this cloak. Is it a proper cloak or is it just like a hoodie? I don't know. It looks like a cloak. I don't see any sleeves. I don't see any armholes. Seems like a board that Sipon just bets small every single time, I think. Uh, you can probably go as small as a quarter here, maybe even smaller, against the straight big blind. What if you just made it like 6K? <laughs> Me and Sipon are in synchronization today. Woohoo! 6,000 is the bet. Yeah, absolutely. Drilled it again. RR Hangry asks, why is it the best ace cracker? I believe 8-7 suited is the best, but uh, it's, it's one of the best because uh, the 6-7 straight does not interact with, any, with the aces. And, of course, having the suit that doesn't interact with the aces is also even more beneficial because it gives you more cards to improve into straights and more cards to improve into um, flushes, as well as, obviously, the opportunity to make the normal sort of two-pair situations, three-pair situations, uh, three-of-a-kind situations. El Hodge. Raising the continuation bet from Sip Bond. No pair, no diamond. Yeah, very cute little maneuver here. Love to see it. Yeah, it's pretty hard to know what to do in Sip Bond's spot. There are so many insta folds you get from that one big one bet that when you get pushed back and you don't really have much of nothing, you're kind of just like, yeah, it's all right. I know you have nothing, but it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> one card connection. Perfect response. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I won't because I'll be here, I hope. But someone will know at least. It's the what? power of the cloak. <laughs> well, we'll see. We don't know. Why change? Remember how uh, you said that I will double you up? Yeah. I'm feeling quite fucking good about you doubling me up. Right really? Now. Oh, my yeah. God. Damn shit. Yeah. I'm getting scared now. Just a normal flip, though. You know, just like a okay. nothing avoidable. You know, mm. like you have jack nine suits, I have fours. <laughs> for us, yeah, it's not available. What? It's definitely not available for us. <laughs> now I get your strategy. You give him just enough chips so he, can, he has enough to double you. <laughs> exactly. Ah, you were thinking ahead. Always, buddy. Well, at least he can give it away maybe before he doubles you up. You guys just playing chess, I'm playing 3D chess. <laughs> Isn't all chess 3D? Very cool game. <laughs> Fold around to sit bond with a seven in the cutoff. Makes it 12K. Andrea Dato in the big blind. Gets a very easy chance to set mime. Three, five, six. Interesting, interesting board here. Why is it interesting, Nick? Well, the four will give Dato a straight. Four, yes. But also give Sipon a bigger straight. A bigger straight. Yep, Deuce's very slight favorite here. You can see how close the equities run under these circumstances. Senor Dato decides to lead for the one big blind. I think Mr. Sipon has a hand he could just flat with here, though. I mean, ace high is going to be beating a bunch. If you end up getting into a raising battle with ace high here, it's going to probably end in tears most of the time. I think just the one big blind is good enough to call. There's so much dead money in there already. But uh, he does decide he's going to take the aggressive line right here, right now, and it might work against deuces. Blocking some straights here is fine. I think also from the cutoff, there's 
plenty of opportunities to have hands like 7-8 here. The 4-7 straight, very unlikely to be in Sipon's opening range, though, it has to be said, unless he's getting a little bit OOL, trying to sneak in there with some wider opens from the cutoff. But it's going to work. Ooh. Deuce is no good. Pot for Julian Sidbon up to 50 bigs now. Got a question for you, Joe. Yeah. Does he ever lose? <laughs> yes. Yes, I think so. But not much so far. Rarely. Yeah, no. Such a force. Been around for a long time. Still out here battling, playing some really nice cards. Love to see it. Queen 10 suited for Sergey Lee CE or least part two, as I like to call him. At <laughs> least, least the second? Least the second. Yeah, that beautiful Queen 10 suited. Mixing it in there. Love it. Oh, pocket kings in the cutoff. Feeling good. Cool benefit of actually having, uh, having the kings here is that UTG might give you credit for having some more three bet bluffs from position. So. The effective stack here being Lisi with just the 23 bigs. You can go real small. Shortest stack, by the way. The shortest stack at this table as well. I'm going to say probably like five big blinds here would be totally fine. Like, you know, just, just, the, just, the, just the 30. Oh, that's quite big, though. Goes up to 40K. I mean, it's not big, big, but you know what I'm saying, guys. Oh, the initial raise was to 15. Excuse me, guys. That seems perfectly reasonable. Yeah, 40K to go. Makes a lot of sense. And takes it down. I thought maybe he opened just for the min, but it was a little bit more. Shot clock. I don't do any action. It just, she just My hand is not folded. No, no, no. She'll just click it again, and at the end of the hand, she'll ask you for how many time makes you Only when you don't have any more, then it's folded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if she's getting low, then she might ask you to spread it so that she can see how many you have left. But you never have to touch them. You just take your time and make your decision. Did she ever ask you to spread it? Huh? Did she ever ask you to spread it? <laughs> God, Bart. I've never come even close to using all my time. Did you use that just once once in your life? I think I, the maximum I ever used was two. In the tournament? In the tournament, yeah. Was it to value better river? Yes. <laughs> one, one, one of them actually was, yeah. I used one of them in the tournament to value better. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's easy to know what you do. It. Come on, bro. Respect huh? him. Respect him. <laughs> Man. I'm actually surprised. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Three, three, three and then just Has it been that long Andre since we've seen Andrea Dato that he doesn't know how the time yeah. banks work? I guess it's possible and also possible maybe he hasn't cashed in a while because no, we only bring the shot clock maybe. out maybe had one the day after they hit the money. Julia. Julia. Looks like a three bet to me. I on myself yesterday, but only after like a minute 20 just to make, sh make myself fold. Yep, so you'll notice the size I was talking about just a moment ago. This is the uh, verse min up to 35K. <laughs> In the previous spot, the open was actually to 15, which changes the sizing considerably when you're looking to three bet. No, it was I bet 15 blinds when got raised. So. Uh, Jimenez could have justified a call there with the Jack 10 suited. Will. Maybe tend to get bullied a little bit there too often if you're going to start folding such monster drawing combos. But at this stage in the tournament, definitely no shame in playing on a little bit of a tighter side. Interesting story in the chat right now from Lord Barry about Julian Sitbon that I'll let you read from his perspective. You made some? Some, some, some. At least you made some, that's good. Bart, 
Liebart. It's hard. He's one of, got one of those names. You got to say both names. He's not just Bart. He's not Lee Bart. He's Bart Lee Bart. Yes. Got the most amount of live earnings of anyone at the table. 3.85 million. Lots of side event caches. Nothing bigger than t winning 20K in a main event. Big flop, please. And is going to the flop against Jimenez, who misses, and Bart hits top two. Checks to Bart. I count 30. Don't give him extra time. Don't give him extra time. <laughs> New box on TV table, please. <laughs> him and Az rocking a pretty cool wristband. Crow, TV table, please. Is he calling for pros on the TV table? Our box is busted. Clock is done. If we could get some pros on the table, that'd be great. Yeah, she's, I heard, I, she kind of banged it quite hard. <laughs> yes. Whatever about us, so she said, fuck That's it. But she was right. Maybe the box died of shame when it heard the spread it joke. <laughs> I was really out of character. Right <laughs> That's it. I can't work in this environment any longer. I quit. Let's play without. It's better for him. Just What's the name of the lizard? <laughs> In the time in, in the shot clock box, burn. He's dead. What? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't bode well for Bernie that that clock just got stuck on the number four. Is Bernie okay? Can we get a can we get a medic in here? Sixty-seven minutes to sink. That's big. Gonna scroll a lot. Okay, don't make stop. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand announced. Pocket, pocket threes into the muck. What happened? There we go. Let's get them back. Let's get them back. Three threes. King five deuce, two diamonds. We got Andy Wilson in the chat. Shout out to my man. Um, a little bit shameful though, the fact you're not actually currently here in Cyprus. Not really sure what else you got going on. I sent Andy like 3K on Instagram last week. He said he would pay me back right away. I haven't <coughs> heard anything. Oh, it's probably because he was on. He's been on the plane so much. Jet setting. Continuation from Dato takes down the Pato. Imagine EPT where Bowie effect doesn't show up. I mean, what a disgrace. Unbelievable. It's Payday. It has a similar experience. Yeah, Bowie owes me 110k from an Instagram crypto investment. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> oh, what, from Susan? No, from uh, yeah, no. He was on his Instagram. His friend Susan yeah. was going to help us to to yeah, to, 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 yes, to yes, get yes. those those massive uh, returns, crypto gains, hashtag yeah. gains. Yeah. Do we just buy him that plane? <laughs> Is he on a private jet right now? <laughs> Susan Brown, right. Us too, thank you. Yup, Prague's the only yeah, event going on this December. Next year, a big schedule, like a full the only important I, one. I honestly don't know. All I know is 4th to 12th or 4th to 13th in Vegas. 
category that some people try to think. <laughs> now I know you're lying. Okay. As long as you know me, you know I'm lying always. <laughs> but I gave him a bit of chips. Very friendly of you. Oh, what? All right, we've got the button versus big blind. Jack six five two hearts. That's a heck of a flop for the dominated hand. I, I can go out. I can go out. I can go out. You want? Can you give me a chai? Chai. Mm -hmm. Now there's an ambassador for you. Getting the drinks for the table. That's pretty cool. Keeping it going. Keeping everyone well caffeinated. Trying to get a read off Jimenez. Not super necessary. You know what I like about Sipon though is like you really get the impression he's trying to find any possible way to win every single pot. And I know that seems like, of course, you're trying to do that at all times. It just mean even in this situation, you can see he's like, "Can is I?" Is that in reference to the Lord Barry story as well? No, no, I didn't even read that one. We're so fucking boring, by the way. Like not a single all in. Where was the Lord? Where, where was the Lord Barry story? Was it on Twitch? It was in Twitch, but it's in pieces. It might be hard to go back and oh. read it all. But oh, okay, I found it. It doesn't paint Sid Bon in a super positive light, which is why I'm not repeating it because I didn't witness it myself. Although I have no reason to doubt Lord Barry. I need my headphones. No, it was not in reference to that. It was in reference to the fact it just feels like every single moment that he's in a pod, he's trying to find some possible way to outplay yeah. and what, outangle. What you're saying there does does check out based on what Lord Barry said. Got some eliminations to announce. Johan Schultz out. Andre Markesh, a.k.a. the part-time fisherman, out. And Joao Vieira, old NASA, out. And Lord Barry saying Poker News did blog about the incident. And from what I understand, it was from the last hand of the night last night on an outer table. Because not soft. Raise and take it, that hand. 118 players remaining. There was a pay jump at 119. Next one occurs. <coughs> Next one occurs at 95. Pretty long way to go for that one. Everyone guaranteed $12,300 now. Has once again folded around to the blinds. Eight three versus eight four. <laughs> four. So El Haj here, the effective stack, thirty big blinds. Gonna take a check. Ten, eight, three, two hearts. Wow. Both players hit the eight, but it's domination rotation in favor of El Haj. El Haj is wearing a shirt that says Los Angeles Hermosa Beach. Do y'all know which member of the commentary team lives in Hermosa Beach, California? Joe Stapleton. It's a good guess. I'm going to wait to see if any other guesses come in. Block Kev guesses Nick. <laughs> oh no.
trip eight for Liebert. Full house for El Haj. Yep, this is a savage turn. Both players got to be loving this spot now. Little does <coughs> Liebert know only 8% to win it. Has to find a chop 10% of the time or the lone remaining quattro. Those of you guessing, Maria Ho lives in Hermosa Beach, California. That's correct. Six of diamonds on the river. Isn't really going to do much to change this board texture. Oh, man. Obviously, the six completing some straights. Your opponent can still have a 10. Opponent can still have an eight. Opponent could have pocket threes, although it's a little bit questionable as to whether or not they would have played their hand that way, and it's very unlikely when you have the three yourself. I think you just polarize, Joe. I think you just go big, big. 31,000. Looking slightly bigger than that. 45. 55. Oh, wow. One chip call from <laughs> Liebart. He sees the bad news. Shows the what? cooler. Oh, man. What an absolutely brilliant size there, Joe, though. Just max, 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 extra max value. I said big, but jeez. I had an A2, so crazy. What the fuck? Say cheap. I'm going to check race if it, then I see over bet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Free flop, I had you dominated. <laughs> downhill from there. Loving that size from El Haj. Very nice awareness. Kind of like the age 24 for you, huh? The age 24? Oh, yeah. All downhill from there. That's my peak year. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for anyone whose peak year is 24. <laughs> kind of still a teenager at 24. Tin Foil on YouTube says, Joe, you may not remember, but you gave me some advice on my stand-up set. Definitely helped make a good impression. I appreciate the help. If you're ever in the Phoenix area, I owe you a beer. I don't believe in owing Tin Foil hat. I do it for fun and for free. However, if I'm in the Phoenix area and you feel like buying a ticket to one of my shows, I would accept that. But I'm glad I could help. Kind of like the blind leading the blind a little bit, uh, but. I didn't, but I'd like to take it first. Good. I'll leave my friend. You can even have a apricot if you want. If you're ever in the Brighton area, you'd like to buy me a beer, I will. <laughs> there you go. You can buy Nick. You can buy a beer for Nick for me. Yeah, for those of you guessing, saying that I lived in uh, Hermosa Beach as well. I know I sound American, gang. I still live in the beautiful seaside, now city of Brighton, England. Just in case you wanted to buy me that beer. Jimenez three betting. The open from Lisi. Pocket tens. The holding for the original Razor. Starting the hand with around 20 big blinds. Feels like a difficult hand to get away from. Is gonna just flat. Bit tricky here though, Joe. At least he only 18 bigs behind. Do you ever just tell yourself no ace, no king, and uh, I'm gonna go for it? What if they have ace queen? I mean, I can't help but think. With 94K behind, that was kind of the plan here, Joe. Although the queen, of course, 
there. There's plenty. There's just the same number of ace queens as there are ace kings. That's what I mean. You're just kind of randomly choosing. There's probably an argument that ace king is three bet has slightly higher frequency than ace queen from this position, but that's only a slight discount in my opinion. I think you just assume that uh, since whatever overcard hits the board is blocking your opponent from having it, you're good no matter what. So 75k in the middle and check to the initial aggressor, Jimenez. Wants to put in the bet here. And it's 18,000, nice and small, highly approved. At least you're going to call, and you'll notice now. Pot to stack ratio yep. is weird. <laughs> yeah, SPR now way less than one. 0.76 ish. And that's a king on the turn, Joe. Oh. Oh, that's big. That changes things. Literally and figuratively. I'm honestly not sure how I would have played these tens, Joe, but I think maybe maybe it was not a like flop. This. Maybe it was a flop situation. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because the king it came on the turn. It's a genuine <laughs> contemplation. When you're this early, it's so tricky to know what to do versus three bets. Ace King checks turn. River is five of clubs. Yeah. At least he's probably loving that check on the turn, but he's going to hate this river shove. <laughs> he does check to Jimenez. Yeah, this is the easiest ship now. I would also probably announce all in here just to make it look extra, extra bluffy, quote unquote. Jimenez just checking the stack. He's going, yeah, that's a lot less than pot. Tonka's <laughs> ambassadoring hard right now. <laughs> you pre roll everything. Yeah, because I get to play with you. Fucking biggest pre roll of my life. Jimenez doing the old time bank there you value go. bet. There you go. Nice bold movement. Make it look like you're trying to look scary. <laughs> and Lisi, let's go with the tents. Yeah, no good call when you're ahead, full when you're behind. I mean, yeah. let's look for a silver lining here. I mean, I think maybe my issue is that when it comes queen high and he bets flop, I don't know that we're completely going to miss a second barrel there with the ace king. You know, we might see the all in on the turn regardless with the ace king. So definitely a tricky spot, I think, from those earlier positions. Hard to know what to do. I'm sure Sergey probably would have loved to get those tens in free flop if it was a later position three bet. But as played, does get away from it and uh, still alive. 12 big blinds. <laughs> Remaining in Sergei's stack. Yeah, if you can just forward your schedule so I can, <laughs> so I can just you. follow you around the world. NAPT Vegas, EPT Prague. That's it? For the end of year. Okay. Actually, it's quite okay. NAPT is like the same schedule than EPT. Like it will be smaller, condensed version for sure. Okay. Like I think 3K is the main or whatever. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 1650 is the main. Like 12 days or something? Or it's yeah, yeah, 12, I think it's 14. Every time we get them on the, t on the, on the table. Misinformation, Talbot, that's what we're, we're going to call him from now on. All right, min raise kicking off, hand number 41 now. Tonka raising up the ace 10 suited. Parker now second from the bottom in ships here, but still 39 bigs. So plenty of chips to play with. On the right? Yeah. Round to our big blind. Kuznetsov defends the big. <coughs> King six tray, bottom two for Kuznetsov. 
Sir Edgar asks, last I saw Tonka, he had 540k ish. What happened? He lost chips. Thank you for your question. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Talbot firing into the abyss. Does not improve. Check, check this time around, and it is the seven of hearts on the river. Tonka this time luckily doesn't improve. Soft bets 36,000. Quick fold from Tonka. Matt B on YouTube says, he lost chips. Thank you for your question. Really? Not only the least funny commentator, also completely uncapable. I think the word you're looking for is incapable. Incapable. In incapable. Yeah. But, uh, thank you for your comment and uh, your band. Pretty incredible comment, if you ask me. Uncredible. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Uncredible. Yeah. That comment was uncredible. <laughs> It is difficult. You have to understand that being the least funny commentator, I do have a chip on my shoulder. I didn't even see. He won the last hand. What happened to the way back? I was talking with the guy on my left. So. If I, if I was watching a stream and I said something that got me banned, I would be so embarrassed. <laughs> I would be. I would just be like, "What did I do? How did I manage to, from thousands of miles away, say something so stupid and so embarrassing that I can no longer? I lost chat privileges on the internet." Turn the game. Show one card. We can do show, show, show one for everyone. Okay. Yeah, we can do show one over here. I really agree. I love it. But show you, one? Yeah, but yeah. You okay? But okay. you can choose? No, 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 Everyone's like, oh, that's so fun. All right, a game within a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for you to say yes. <laughs> I, I show one. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> well. I'm so excited to have a show game. Yeah. yeah. Leibart is going to kick things off. This will be both very funny to show. I think Educa is going to choose. <laughs> Maybe not. Big Swole says, I got banned from Soldier Boy stream in 2021 because I asked him if he was streaming from a wall mount TV. Liebart <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, dominating Jimenez, king for deuce. Elephant in the room. <laughs> Dangerous, you have to evacuate. 
Which one? Left turn right. Don't worry, we're gonna do it really quick. Let's let it came down. Who's we picking? Who's picking? Right every time. That's what we do. I have to pick, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Left or right? Yeah, yeah left or right. Lose your pick. Thank you. And close. Carl, we played show one. We gotta pick, okay? Then you turn it over. I pick it. Yeah. No, we gonna pick left or right? We pick. We turn. We do whatever. All right, my babies, you heard Parker talking about it. Now it's my turn. The North American Poker Tour is back. The start of a new old era for the tour at the first Poker Stars event in Vegas since 2010. NAPT Las Vegas runs November 4th through 12th at Resorts World on the Las Vegas Strip. Massive resort if you haven't been there before. Huge bank of buffalo slot machines. That's where you'll find me if I'm not in commentary. Buffalo! And it's the week before Formula One. 1650 main event, a 5K high roller. Both tournaments are going to be streamed live on Poker Stars Twitch and YouTube. I'll be there. James is going to be there. Nick's going to be there. Griffin's going to be there. Maria's going to be there. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be there. Not just for the NAPT, but I think I'm sticking around for F1. Oh, sick brag. Thanks yeah, for that. I think James might be sticking around for F1, too. Yep, he's nodding his head. Oh, that's, uh, huh. Yeah. That's, that's uh, that must have been some sort of an oversight. Must have been. My booking. Must have been an oversight. Oh, <laughs> uh, these things happen. Don't worry. Don't worry, team. Don't worry, team. I, I think, it, there's still time to fix the flights. It's I okay. I think tickets are on sale still, probably. Statrick, can you get on that, buddy? Do you want to buy one? for me, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the box, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not precious. I still don't know what's real and what's not yet. All I know is that I'm sticking around <laughs> for the F1. I don't know if I'm going to F1, but I will be in Las Vegas. <laughs> in fairness, I actually haven't even seen my flights yet. Oh, so. shoot. Med Green in Twitch chat says I want a red spade pass, so also going to the F1. Hey, let's go. That's going to be a really, really sick. That's amazing. Once in a lifetime thing. Med Green, can you write in the chat all the stuff that you've been told you're getting with the Red Spade Pass? And can you tell me that your plus one is N I C K W A L S H? They'll, they'll, know who, they'll know who they're talking about. Dicey spot here for Kuznetsov, who is out kicked. This is a three bet pot also, and it was Kuznetsov who three bet. Dato, open and then flat at ace king. Now Kuznetsov continues. Dato raises. This pot's getting big in a hurry. Six of diamonds on the turn does nothing to catch Kuznetsov off. Up, excuse me. Is that a check raise on the flop, Joe? Yeah. Check that. Yeah, got it. I mean, the check raise. You know, it was he was checking to the aggressor, so right. playing in flow. But five seconds. Check. Eight six. Dato checks again. I don't think Kuznetsov. Bites a second time. Seems like the perfect spot to check back. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case you're up against ace 10, ace jack, ace queen. 44. Ace king, ace five, but does not bet again. Kuznetsov. Getting caught in his own net. Soft. Because. <laughs> if 
Dotto double check raises. I'll be real impressed. I mean, once he puts in that 44 initially, he'll have less than pot behind. But I think you probably call and then check again. That's my line at least. <laughs> Do you think Dato is genuinely perplexed what's going on here? Do you think he's suspicious or just taking his time I think to I figure out the call. best way to call or raise with the best hand? I think he's just weighing it up. But I think a call is what you want to do most of the time. Yeah, it does call. I like it. And on the river, hopefully some illumination. A five or a deuce is usually going to be a really nice card. A king would be a lot better than that for the ace king of Dato. No king. Three on the river. So, a bit of a scary card, right? Mm, I'm not sure from the cutoff. Not so much. You don't, don't think there's a lot of ace four suited? I guess there's not a ton of combos, right? I guess I, at I this mean, point. Ace four suited is four combos. Ace five. Son pocket fours is a few more. Yeah. But again, maybe pocket fours wouldn't have played their hand this way, so that's kind of discounted. And the thing is, if your opponent does have ace. Jack, ace, queen, they're just going to check here a bunch. So I think the check gives you a lot of information. Because a bet on this river will quite frequently be an indication of extreme strength given the two streets that we've seen so far. Because that's off wide eyed at the amount of chips he's going to lose in this pot. Dato picks up a big one. Dato skyrockets up the leaderboard, now number one at this table after taking down that pot. Johannes on YouTube asks, how can I become a PokerStars pro? Can I pay a fee or something? Nick, how much did you pay? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm under NDA, I'm afraid. <laughs> you got work. I'm fast, fast, fast. You gotta work at it. 10 seconds. Just a small line now. That's why. Right. Yeah. Long, long hand. Marcel's in the chat just says, Nick Walsh, just your dignity. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> How many spinning goes do you think you've played in your life? Oh my god. <laughs> it's over 10,000, right? Oh, it's well over 10,000. It's yeah. over 100,000? My bad, guy. Maybe like, maybe like between 60 and 80. Play 60,000 spinning goes and get back to me. Oh yeah, I forgot. Raise and take it. Bartley, Bart. How annoying and boring this Dato dude is, says Jens B. How annoying and banned you are, Jens B. Oh, B stands for banned. Ten bucks, please. Thank you for your comment. It's worth it. I'll take them. Can I? He gave me. Gallery asks, how many of those spinning goes were profits? That's not how profit works. We don't, uh, we don't need to talk about that either. <laughs> <laughs> this one was really nasty. <laughs> oh. This one was really nasty. Nick played 60,000 spinning goes, yet never <laughs> once won an all-in while ahead. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I can relate. Okay, still, okay. Still, I still got a nice looking graph though. That's all it that counts, gang. So I missed this note a few minutes ago. We're down to 111 players. 114th place was Steve O'Dwyer. Knocked out by Carl Shaw. Ooh. Who now has over a million in chips. But that's not good enough to be chip leader. That title, at least a few minutes ago, belonged to a Spanish player named Jose Gonzalez, who has 1.1 million. How is Carl Shaw doing it? Right? Didn't he first pop up in the Irish Open, I think, is when we first noticed him, and he's been in our coverage ever since. Also love his music, old Jose, Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> Great musician. 
Please don't touch my cards. <laughs> <laughs> I did say fold before, we never know. <laughs> Chat's asking, what was the biggest multiplier I had in those 60k spinning goes? My biggest multiplier was $150,000. Uh, I hit a 150k spin. There's a link in the chat if you want to see the picture. On a one dollar? No, it was on a it was on a 15. 15. So it was the absolute omega. Nobody ever hits a jackpot. Then I panicked at how long I was taking. I'm gonna hold. Oh my god. It's one of your first tournaments. It kind of feels like it, yeah. When you always bought it, so it's always <laughs> You participated in a lot of them. A lot, yeah. Fuck. A really crazy amount. Then raise fourteen thousand. So really, yeah, it's the one where all three get a piece, but the biggest chunk was one hundred and fifty k. Yeah, I'm sick of these. I think you might as well tell the rest of the story because you're getting a lot of follow-up questions. That's all good. If you put Nick Spin in the chat, guys, uh, there's a, there's an image. I came third because I lost a flip. I think it was ace pocket nines versus ace jack, jack on the river. I did so good. You fucking <laughs> and what did that pay? Uh, 15,000. 15,000. <laughs> but then I saw you and I said, run, because yeah, 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 he was dealing yeah, the, the card here. I know, I know. So you're good at it. I know, I know. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, I think you have like eight nines you did. I mean, thank God I missed it then. Exactly. And seven calls. Oh, my goodness. All right. Table chatters died down a little bit. We're going three ways to the flop. Domination, domination situation. Lieber, it's got them both crushed. Three players. Eight, five, four. El Haj with the gut shot draw. Ace, queen, still best. Johannes is back. He says, yeah, thanks for the answers, but I don't have time for all that. Just wanted the title. <laughs> Johannes, how much money do you have to spend on becoming a team pro? <laughs> ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Eight, three, or what? Was that the good one? That was the good one. Of course. I I'm really yeah. curious what you think okay. that that would go for. Could be the best one. How many team pros are there? Not that many, right? Not many. There are very, very few. Even in, even years ago. Ten favorite hands. No you think it's like a thousand bucks, and there's only like eight of them? <laughs> I'd like to. I mean, if you take the entire population of anybody that ever has ever played poker, recreationally or professionally, I wonder what the actual percentage of that entire population became team pro. Like point zero 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 one percent. Yeah. Vladimir on YouTube asks, where can we see updated chip counts, or at least who busted today? I'll save you some time. The players who busted today have zero chips. Thank you for your question. You're not sweating? Well, of course I'm sweating. I said I'm not sweating that much. No, because what is Oh, fucking. This guy is relentless. Exactly relentless. Right. That's good, it's better at jokes than poker because it's not. He'd <laughs> <laughs> be a fucking menace. Because <laughs> <laughs> Netsov opening the fives That's under the gun. <laughs> 35 bigs after he puts in that two big blind, sorry, slightly more than two big blind raise. Dato, beautiful hand to defend, calls. Flop is queen, ace, queen. No improvement for Dato. Ironside is asking if Lucas Robinson is still in. Unfortunately, go and check his stories. Took a really horrendous beat just before the money. I mean, it was, uh, he got top two in against bottom two, and the guy turned the boat against him for absolutely chunks. Very sad story for our friend Luke, but uh, Lucas, excuse me, but we're going to see a lot more from him on the stream and in tournaments to come, I've no doubt. If you guys don't follow Lucas, check him out. Robin Poker here on Twitch. 
Been doing it for years now. We started streaming about the same time as well. All right, pocket five, still the best of it. Because Netsov will win at showdown. Does Dato have a move that will win him the pot at non-showdown? By the way, Joe, Andrew Wool here says, you guys are keeping me going on a night shift. Thank you. And love from Australia. By the way, Stapes is the yeah. best poker commentator. Yes, but also the most unfunny. I'm the unfunniest. Yeah, he's the unfunniest of the three. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Just joshing with you. Happy to help you on your night shift tonight. Thirty minutes left in the level. 109 players remaining. No set number we're looking at. This hand, this hand. I feel it. Yeah, the whole set Two levels. Yeah. More. This and one. Yeah, 28 minutes more. Wow. And then three more levels today. Wow. Action on Lee C E. Yeah. Three E E's. All in. Three fold. At the live read on the deck. Four fold. When we go into the blackjack tables. Ace king for some pawn. What can you do? You can double him up or you can fold. <laughs> Those are the two options. <laughs> How much is that shit? <laughs> Five fold. Sixty-one. Yeah. Sixty-one thousand. That was fucking most obvious thing yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, what are you doing? Sipon does make the call. And we are flipping. An actual double up too, for sure. Yeah, and I had both of your outs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had two aces, that's good. Bro, a face. It's an easy one, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Again, it's about fitty fitty here, guys. Yeah, that is actually the, the problem. <laughs> Like uh, Dr. Kaufman yeah. versus Baron Ramadi. <laughs> One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Really? I don't know what either of those things are, so I, I didn't even write it. I don't know where that came from. King high flop. Lee C.E. in trouble. If only he was least the third instead of least the second, maybe a three would have popped up. Longer, slower, please. No, wait again, again. Seven of diamonds on the turn. Yeah. Oh, white. No, no, no. Maybe next time. Yeah, why not? There's a 200. Oh. We see. Needs to hit a tray ball on the river. Not a three. At least the second. Almost? Almost. Uh, Eliminated. Like, no, really in 107th place. Thank you very much. <laughs> See, you oh my See you. God. What happened? No, no, Guys, no, no. Come on. What the fuck? Oh, no, it was perfect without it. Yeah, it's too much. This is a joke, right? It's because he busted. Ta -da -ta -da. <laughs> the the Holy shit. So, in between Lisi. <laughs> and Steve O'Dwyer that I just announced going out 114th. We've also lost yeah, I didn't even Kai Henmachry, Demeter Danchev, yeah. and Malaka style Juan Pardo. Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah really, maybe. Actually, it's I actually thing. thought about that. I picked him this hand over. <laughs> <laughs> if you had ace three, it would have been fine. <laughs> would have been crazy. And about 11 spots away from the next pay jump. Wow, yeah, so Bart doesn't know shit, eh? So I am probably the bust. Seven fold. Fifteen thousand. 
six, eight, raise fifteen thousand. Ten folds. Andrea Dato raising from the button. Queen eight suited. And Jimenez is going to defend with nine tray suited. Ace, queen, ten, one diamond. Did I announce that wrong? No, it looks like, it looks like somebody fat fingered the flop. That sounded filthy. <laughs> I knew he was going to play with that, so... Yeah, it was just... Ten times. I saw my table job, and I saw... Eight, but ten or it wasn't on enough. Mm -hmm. Allez, Carl, fais ton travail. What? Oh, wait, wait! Yeah, this one, the one, no. We want to yeah. see one. They're playing the show one game. Carl. Yeah, play the show one game. See, that's what I told you. That's to. And, I, and I, I gave Carl way too much credit. That's, exactly. my, that's on me. Exactly. That's not on Carl. That's on me. Okay, so Sorry, next I time, two tight. Two cards for you. Yeah, two cards for me next time. That's fine. That's fair. <laughs> okay, two cards. <laughs> see what you, you see what you got me into, Carl? Now I have to show him two cards. He can't even listen to you because he's listening to the boss saying, What the fuck did you turn a card? <laughs> Why did you turn his card? <laughs> Don't listen to this fucker. <laughs> Play a game. <laughs> I can't imagine Hugh yelling at anyone. <laughs> your job, you yell yeah. at him. <laughs> Don't turn the card over. Nope, don't do it. Don't do voices. <laughs> the lady was doing better. Come on. Oh, my Come God. On, folks. <laughs> Carl, I had 520k to start today, okay? And you remember all the fucked up shit you've done to me in the last, like, one year, okay? <laughs> Come on, gonna walk. Mm. Yeah. So seven-handed now. El okay. Haj opening from the hijack. The hijack. The hijack. He used to be a fantastic yeah. dealer for me, and then he just started busting me on every turn. For sure, for sure he dropped when I won a tournament, the, uh -huh. the last hand. In Marrakech, I remember, it was for sure. Because it was uh, the only one you lost. Yeah. Yeah. On the way? Wow. Yeah, see, yeah, 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 I've been running good with Carl him. Carl is really your dealer. Yeah. We have done some crazy shit together also mm. off the table. That's why. Parker no. dominated in the big blind. <laughs> Maybe the, first, the first love of the day. You shouldn't say it here. Oh, it's not allowed. And, and does not defend it. This one, this one, this one, this yeah, one. Yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was about to do it anyway. I felt it this time. The goat asks, movie question, how would you guys rate all the Rocky Creed movies? I would say probably on a scale of 1 to 10. I didn't play a hand for Thank you for your question. You were nice and quickly folding. I raised one hand and you're both like, well, how much is that? How much is that? <laughs> Fucking both take is, is it that obvious? Yeah, it is that obvious. Make it a little bit less obvious, okay? So how much do we have left? Holy shit. Uh, it feels like we have to be quick because you're bleeding out. <laughs> I, feel like, uh, yeah. I feel like if I, if I wait a little bit longer, there might not be nothing left. It's gonna be fucking 100k soon. He said he's gonna call talk till 80k after. Before 80k, after 80k is finished. Yeah, that's true actually. I literally said that and I've bled about half of it so far. So you've played amazing. You like <laughs> you got cooler fold, many times. Ten fold, three fold. I did get cooler once. <laughs> Ace three, Ace three. El Haj opening, okay, King Queen. One to seventeen. Folding rounds. Sip on the big blind. Ace eight off. Quite similarly stacked here. Fifty eight bigs for. Julian Sipon and El Haj has about 48. So just decided to defend slightly ahead pre flop. Flop is 794, two clubs. Sorry, everyone in Twitch chat's talking about meeting me. Where is this happening? NAPT, Prague.
my birthday naked basement puzzle party. Because that's not until next year. Oh, Jojo, not me. Oh, sorry. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Giving the flush draw to Hodge. Two over cards still clean, though. Any king, any queen, any club. It's frustrating losing these to ace high when you whiff everything on the river. Five pick. We can meet up, Joe. I'm there for you. Just before I agree to this, is your name I Daniel Johnson or I Danielle Johnson? Because it's going to make a difference. <laughs> All right, wants to fire here with the draw. Just about the half pot. I like this bet. Just for the reason I said earlier, where it just really stinks when you miss the river and then you lose to AC. Yeah, for pick a good one. reminded the dealer to flip one. Show oh, on. Exactly the one I saw. Damn shit. King of clubs shown, I think. Queen of diamond? That's a good one to see. Ooh, good guess. Good guess. Remember. Good guess. I don't remember. Oh my god, you have to see a doctor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was just thinking that I should see a doctor because I couldn't remember what I told her. <laughs> <laughs> Might be really nice then. That's too much weed, my friend. My brain is fogged. I need to sleep. That can happen if you eat too much wheat. Just one? You think one is enough? Especially if you have a gluten allergy. That could be nice too. You have a friend? I got you. I got you, bye. I know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> Who knows a girl? <laughs> I don't believe that any of you know a girl. Thirty-nine thousand. I like how Dotto just announces it all, right? Just clear, clear as day. I try to do that, although I'm not really someone you should be emulating at the poker table. What would Joe do? Then do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> we do whatever we can. Six WWJD. And seven folds. Mac, Mac. <laughs> pick one, pick one, pick one. Pick one. Of course. Ah, Good it's showing every hand. Doesn't matter. You're kidding, you're kidding. Yeah, you're kidding, you're kidding. kidding, you're kidding. kidding. Quite jovial at the table. Like to see a bit of friendly banter going around. These guys obviously I do play. like. I do like seeing them have fun. Yeah, a little bit. These guys have been around each other a lot. They play a lot of cards together, <sighs> keeping it light. Boy, oh boy. Well, the run was also good. I feel like they honestly could have been aces that time. I, I need really? to see a doctor. <laughs> 12,000. Okay, it wasn't Aces. Raised 12,000, 10 folds. Was it? No, no, I think no. it was. You think it was? Still, really? I think it was Three really folds. good. And Ace King Plus. Ace King Plus, wow. Four folds. I couldn't be flush with Ace King. Aces. <laughs> kings? Mm. Well, we don't. We know he doesn't have Kings. Do you we saw the Ace. Do you say? We saw the Ace. Oh, yeah. Parker's so smart. Do you remember that? Yes. How does he do it? Julian playing by the rules here. Folds the queen ten. It's like a modern day Columbo. We're bringing someone. Oh, nice one. Bring a little whale. Another whale. Okay, so there's good news and bad news. We must have the softest table that we've ever had. Oh, for sure. This is definitely the best table I think. The softest table for sure. The good news is they are bringing someone to the table. Yeah. And that someone is a superstar. Oh. Dario Sammartino about to join the table. Come and join us. 
Here's the, ba the bad news. <laughs> bad news is. This table is breaking, and we're switching it at the break. <laughs> so you got 15 minutes of action, hopefully. El Haj versus Dotto. Top pair for Dotto. This hand should not take very long. Now, remember how I said there was good news and bad news? Yes. I lied. Because there's good news and bad news and good news. Lay it on me. The good news is the new feature table has some people we like to watch. People like Anton Wig. Yes. Toby Joyce. Yes. One of the tournament chip leaders, Timor Vardanian. Yes. And get ready for it. You have to. Some call him the Little Tonka. Casimir Ser, aka Size 25. I thought they were the same person, honestly. Popular on Twitch. Says, Sais, 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 Sais. Size 25. Yeah, we are also, play, also playing sweet, sweet game, stand-up game. <laughs> but yes, there is Dario San Martino. Drink him in for the next 14 minutes. This is my time bank. In your oh, okay. okay, thank you. You don't need it. Here you won't need it for sure. <laughs> Fast tables? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's okay. All pro. This is why. No pro, no. No, no. no. This, this one oh. fish? This only has two patches? <laughs> you start throw from three patches. <laughs> three or more. Yeah, possible. three or more, then you're throw. Uh, I don't have to. Put, I have to. Yeah. Yeah, on the boat. Long time, I don't make penalties. Good observation, Undersea Monkey, as the table groans under the weight of Dario's chips. Dario does come to the table with the most chips. 128 big blinds, over 750,000. We are moving after this. Right, so we don't know, we maybe we think. Yeah, she yeah. said you're still moving? Yeah. Oh, good. Six fold, you prefer? I don't mind. I prefer because it's faster to play on the other table. Yeah. But with the time banks, it's going to be similar. Yeah, it'd be mostly similar, but I feel like it's a little bit longer. I mean, I usually don't mind with that because I feel so bad right now. Oh, but you know, when you build, when you show the cards, when you say to this, yes, I think it's a bit slower. Or in and for it, really slower. Yeah, that's slower. That's the way they do it. Hit a check. Do you want to play more hands? Or just one for the other? Hit a check. I came from death, so I'm not yeah. going to be yeah. here. I, I came from death. I have 2K. Really? Sort of letting this chat play out, but we oh, do have a pair of eights for Dato out flopping because nuts off. Eight calls. Ace on the turn because nuts off catches up. Absolutely drills it here on the turn. Yeah. Very nice spot now. Check to the aggressor. Remember, these two played that massive pot, which saw Dato shoot up the leaderboard. When Kuznetsov value cut himself with a outkicked ace. Yeah, I mean, definitely a spot where the eight could get sticky. I mean, King High board already won. That's going to be Seabed as a bluff quite frequently. The Ace, probably a combo that really likes to be bluffed as well. Sorry, um, the Ace in the turn, a card that's in that range, and therefore a card that likes to be barreled. But also, versus the pure UTG of Kuznetsov, oh, who is one of the shorter stacks, I do just feel like he's going to have way too many strong combos to want to be that sticky with this particular combination. As usual, Nick, you are correct, sir. Well, I owe you 500 Oh, you, you bet something? Right. We just let you know oh. the break. You won uh, the table. Yeah. Uh, so I finished second. Jack. We Jack Jack again, nice king. I finished second, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. The 4060, yeah. I can give you 100k if you want. Hit one fold. Okay. And whether it would be fair? Yeah. <laughs> Three fold. 100, I can fold all seven. <laughs> 
Sorry, you have to think about it again. Tonka really wanted to play it, you could tell, but we're gonna keep it cool, keep it chill, not get in the mix there. 97 suited, probably a lot easier to raise there. Bigger stacked. He's now a shortest stack at our table here. Parker currently sitting with about 32 bigs. Not only that, you got two bad boys to your left. Plenty of three-bet action coming from them that you just don't know what to do against. So it's going to get out of the way. So the raise now coming instead from Leibert with the king queen suited El Haj yeah. deciding what to do. Might be a little raise here. So I got three bets me, 35,000 to go from El Haj with the little cheeky 9 8 suited. Great combo to sneak in here once in a while. I think Leibert probably always calls though. Maybe they changed. They got them better. <laughs> so 68 bigs behind Labert after the action we've just seen. The effective stack, however, is El Haj with 42. Yeah, I think if you fold King Queen suited here, you should just be escorted off the island. <laughs> <laughs> You're no poker player. Here it is going to the flop. Spade and two spades. Joe, this is becoming a bit of a theme. We've seen a lot whoa, of these very, but very whoa, scary whoa, spots. Whoa, 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 what's the card though, everybody? What is the <laughs> card here? What is the card here? You just don't see this stuff live, Joe. Hachi machi. If I do, what if I take your card? I don't. I don't even know who's gonna win if I call for this card. It's no offense to whoever it is, but mommy, please, please, I promise, just I'll be so good all year. Just give me the tennis spades for Christmas. That's all I want for Christmas. Mommy, please, I promise. No offense to whoever is gonna who's gonna lose. It'll be Bart, unless then the ace of spades comes. Oh, mommy, please, mommy, please. Oh, mommy. <laughs> I will do anything. I will clean my room. <laughs> I will walk the dog. I will take out the trash. You won't have to ask me to do any chore for the entire year. You're too good at that, To Joe. the turn. Okay. Oh, wow. Action okay, station. Okay, six of spades. Mommy, please. <laughs> Mommy, please. Hachi machi. El Haj just thinking, how am I going to get all the chips in the middle? There's absolutely no doubt he's trying to get the absolute max, especially on this texture. El Haji Maji. Doesn't have to go big here. Oh, but that is big. Maybe he won the tournament. I don't think so. Yeah. Just under half. I was going to say 50, but 60 does the same job. If called on turn, will have significantly less than pot. Puts him in range of a check shove on the turn as well. Lee Bart makes the call. 250k in the middle. El Haj with less than pop behind. Super street flash. River card is just a boring old straight. Inconsequential. Nine high flush behind to the king high flush. Neither player with the nuts though. Weaver checks. Nick, playing this from El Haj's perspective, it's just all in here. You, 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 you're just trying to get every every single penny. Absolutely. Oh, man. Absolutely. This is a cold deck of biblical proportions. All in. Snap call. El Haj. Eliminated. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do there? That's just some absolute madness. Especially when you consider you can have the ace of spades in hand on the ace high board. That would make plenty of sense. And GG's, sir. Don't forget your cloak. Yes, but against him. Not against him. I should have used two time banks and then call? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to turn your hand over like that, you might as well use two time banks. Just a cooler. 
Would you all go do it? Sends uh, El Hajj to the rail. <laughs> I was actually thinking earlier that I would need some time back to slow roll. Not me. If I need to me. Not to, not to you guys, but to a guy on my table earlier who was just being super rude. And I literally thought, I was like, if I get a fucking chance, I'm gonna use two time back. All right. <laughs> who was it? Name it. No, I never saw him before. He was just being super fucking rude to, um, to, to a German guy on oh, the table. Okay. Not like, to, oh, to a German guy. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, 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 I agree, but. No. <coughs> not to like a, another European, no. Ah, he was, like, fine. he was just complaining about him being loud. It's just weird. Oh, Joe, I, I, I gotta say, buddy, I'm, I'm feeling that one. That was, that's some savagery. That's rough. Yeah. yeah. That's a cooler that you really just if should not ever be avoiding. It kind of makes people at home, though, feel a little bit better, though, right? Like, sometimes when you're not as learned as you are, Nick, right? When you're not as studied as maybe you or some of the other pros at this table, and you go broke in that spot with the nine high flush, you feel dumb. You go, oh, did I misplay it? Should I have been more aware of not having the nuts? Yeah, but it's okay, I guess, is what we're trying to say. Well, I think I, I think you're absolutely right. There's plenty of situations where you need, you should be introspective, right? Without being too self-critical, you should go, could I have done something differently to, right. to, to have won that potter? Idiot! Yeah, but without getting too, too self-critical, just take a deep breath, walk away, think about what you could have done differently at, on every street, and I think under those circumstances, the way that the hand played, I think uh, there's not really much you can do with the eight nine of spades there. Flush over flush is already such a rare occurrence in this format. What do you think of the statement from Ioannis, who is, by the way, is the person that wanted to buy their way into Team Pro? Never got back to me with their uh, best and final offer, by the way. Rule number one, if you don't have the nuts, just check back. He couldn't check back, though. The guy went all in. What are you talking about? <laughs> all right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to doubt the validity of this, uh, this Team Pro application. Ooh. The price just went up. All right, Dato is three bet to forty-five thousand after the open from Jacks, flat from eights. Jimenez has called the three bet. It's on Parker now. Parker folds the eights. It's so annoying how good Parker is. It's just, it's just frustrating. Ten, ten, four. Check. Jack's check. They're the best hand. Yoana says my offer was 3,000 euros plus I beat Lex Veldhouse in a heads up match. <laughs> That's actually a reasonable, a reasonable application. 3,000 euros, huh, to become Team Pro? Yeah. Okay, I bid 3,001. Tens and fours. Jax with an over pair. Probably not super afraid of Dato having a 10. Yeah, that's what I thought. You weren't sure winning, yeah. so you wanted to see first. <laughs> yeah. And Jimenez yeah, yeah, yeah. has now had enough of not betting. It's, I think like it's not in purple. If you want to slow roll him, then fine. But like, if you don't, if you don't intend, I know, I know, but you did slow roll him, right? Like, you don't, if you don't intend to slow roll him, just turn your hand over. It's an all-in. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, both players. Can like, I see your stack, please? When there's an all-in, I think both players are just bang over their hand yeah. as fast as they humanly can. Like, I, hate, I, I really hate this. I'm waiting for the other. It's not good for TV. Yes, it is. I'm with Tonka on this one. You're not doing it for TV. <laughs> no. But I'm sure it was, like, really. I'm not saying that you had any, any, any like, malice no, in, sure intention. Not. I had though. So, but <laughs> if you did, then that's fine. Like, oh, then it's but, fine? Yeah, yeah, then it is fine. Okay. It should you should have wait 10 more seconds, you come on. Jimenez is going to take this one down. Yeah. You can prepare your bed. Like, like, you open, and then me. You prepare your bed closer. So we don't go okay, to okay, another one. Pick one, please. I'll pick one, and secretly we leave because you talk too much, and we don't need another hand. 
That's true. High one? That was the high one? Uh, Wait, no. No. no, no. We need the same one. <laughs> Are they getting another hand in or not? Seems like no. Four, three, two, one. The break clock has started. Players are derigging. We will be sending them back out into the wild. Dario Sammartino came with the most chips, is leaving with the most chips. I don't think really moved very much at all. That big blind shift is only because the blinds are going up to 4,000, 8,000 with an AK big blind ante. Parker headed back out in the field with a 22 big blind stack. You don't have to ask us if he's still in. We'll tell you when he goes out. We will be watching him. When we get back, we will have a new feature table. Headlined by Anton Wig, Toby Joyce, one of the chip leaders, Timar Vardanian, and of course, Casimir Lucas Sear, AKA Sace25. More from EPT Cyprus in 20 minutes time. Back to the feature table. Actions on Steven Silverman. Queens under the gun. Silverman was on the American Poker Reality Show, Two Months, Two Million. It was the highest rated poker reality show in its time slot starring Steve Silverman. <laughs> He's raised to 15,000. Dan Smith has Queen Jack suited. Dan's in rough shape, but he's got the exact kind of hand you can sometimes crack bigger hands with. He calls. Negrani's out. As Art Bacar and Siva. Marvin's back will fold the big blind, so we're heads up to the flop. And that flop is Jack Jack Five trips for Smith. Hiya! Steve's almost always gonna bet this because he's almost always gonna have the best hand. He does continue for 27,000. I don't think he's folding. Nope. He calls. Dan opts to just calls. There are plenty of hands he could peel a turn with that aren't nearly as strong. Six of spades on the turn. Smith with a virtual lock on the hand. 98% equity. None of these cards are really saving Silverman. Bets again, 65,000. Now, does Dan raise or just call and go for all his value on the river? He calls. River it is. 230,000 in the middle. Silverman with not much more than that behind. The case jack on the river. Quads for Dan Smith. This is just a horrific card for Silverman. He's now got a full house, and in his mind, he's only losing the aces or kings, which probably would have gotten him three bet preflop. Silverman shoves. Oi. Call. Dan Smith calls. Quick check of the quads. Get in. No kidding. That is just brutal. Steven Silverman eliminated. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Appreciate that. He would need a luck recharge after a hand like that. See this right here? This is a great exit. Just fly down that ramp. Don't make a big production out of it. Dan Smith now sitting on 958,000. He is second in chips. Timothy Adams has taken the vacant seat at our feature table. He folds. Eric Seidel opens from under the gun plus one with ace queen to 16,000. Dan Smith has kings. Almost always going to see a three bet with kings. Not this time. He just calls. Interesting. Dan's not wanting to look too strong, so he just calls. Calling reps a much wider range, and there's always a chance someone gets cute behind you. Heads up to the flop. Quack, quack, quack. Eric will probably continue with what he presumes will be the best hand a big percentage of the time. And of course, flops a full house. Seidel does continue for 18,000. Let's see if Dan continues to play this deceptively by just calling. I think raising here would be a real mistake. He does call. Don't want to chase away that action. The turn is a queen. Seidel now has a full house. 
really terrible card for Eric. He's now going to have the best hand almost all of the time. Fires again. 25,000. We know Eric is more likely to call a raise here than I am to call next girlfriend after 2 a.m., but does Dan know that? Dan does raise, makes it 75,000 total. Dan claims to keep his cool in these spots. What do you people think? Is he giving anything away? Let us know on Twitter, hashtag at EVT Barcelona. Now, don't get me wrong, this raise looks extremely strong, but A, Dan's had quads once already. What are the odds, am I right, people? B, B, and C, closing. Always be closing. A? <laughs> I remember now. Even though that raise looks super strong, there are, in Eric's mind, only two hands that are beating him, kings and aces. And what are the odds Dan flatted with those preflop? On this occasion, he did. Seidel now checks the river, having called Smith's raise on the turn. Would have been really sick if a deuce had hit. Dan obviously has to bet again, but he can't be like me when a girl lets me buy her a drink in a bar all eager. That's how you scare him off. 234,000 in the pot, he bets 200,000. This is just a gross spot for Eric, you can tell, because all the liquid just drained from his body. And you can't fault him for thinking about this, and you can't fault him if he eventually calls either. You can, however, throw him a parade if he somehow manages to lay this down. This is your run-of-the-mill slash incredibly rare cooler crying call. He can't get away from it. He calls, and Smith gets maximum value. Eric Seidel has been getting brutalized by Dan Smith today. Seidel loses 310,000 there. Dan, don't say anything. Don't look at him. He is a legend. I like the way he played that. <laughs> In all things considered, I think it was really, really good. Way to work. Eugene <laughs> Kachilov with Queen Jack under the gun. Raises to 16,000. <laughs> Magrano folds. King Queen for Reinkemeyer. Reinkemeyer's got Kachilov dominated. It's a strong hand. It's connected and makes a very good top pair. Tobias three bets to 34,000. Getting rid of Ivy, Duhamel, and Seidel. Obviously, we know Eugene's dominated, but Queen Jack suited can make for some pretty big combo draws. He calls. I have to play the flop out of position. So that flop is pretty kind to Eugene. Gives him top pair. This paired his live card. He jumps way out in front. Reichemeyer now reverse dominated. Don't get all excited. It's not as fun as it sounds. Kachilov is checked. Checking to the Razor. We'll see if Rankemeyer continues. He does. Betting 33,000. He's going to meet some resistance. Kachilov calls. We'll have to see if Rankemeyer shuts down after this with only King High. Six of Diamonds on the turn. Eugene checks a second time. Still in check call mode. Kamar with just 7% equity will check behind. Interesting river card, the Ace of Diamonds. Gene probably still just wants to get to a cheap showdown. Good card for Ryan Kamar to represent. Not only is it a tempting card to bluff at, it's almost obligatory. 152,000 in the middle, Ryan Kamar bets 125,000. A pretty good shot. Eugene picks up on what a great spot to bluff this is and just snaps him off. You can't tell, but there's a huge leveling war going on between these two. It will cost Eugene most of his stack to make this call. Now, some players may have shoved top pair on the flop. In Eugene's case, he decided to let Reinkemeyer try to barrel off on future streets. However, this ace has thrown a monkey wrench into things. Right now, this just comes down to reads. Let's see if Eugene's ever read the book Chicken Soup for the Soul Read. He lets it go. Turns out the book Eugene's been reading is Eat, Pray, Check, Call, Fold. So Ryan Kamaya adds another 84,000 chips to his stack. Eugene now playing fewer than 20 big blinds. Looking a little bit frustrated. 
Probably wishing he had shoved the flop now, but that's playing results, and we don't do that, James. Linkamai closing in on the one million chip mark. Action folded around to Tobias Reinkemeyer at the feature table. He raises from the cutoff to 20,000 with pocket queens. Jack-9 suited for Jonathan Duhamel in the small blind. Usually if you're going to play hands like this out of position, you want to do it with the betting lead. E3 bets to 62,000. Gets rid of Seidel in the big blind. So we're back on Reinkemeyer. Tobias could easily put in another bet here. He doesn't. He elects to call. It's a trap! Heads up to the flop. 141,000 in the middle. A jack high flop. Jonathan makes top pair. Oh man, Jonathan is in real trouble here. The Death Star is fully operational. He continues for 63,000. Tobias obviously not going anywhere. He calls. You might wonder why he just called. These guys are super deep, and if you get raised in this flop, you probably puke up the $75 club sandwich you just had for lunch. Six of spades on the turn. Some straight draws and flush draws just came in. Jonathan slows down. His hand and draws not as good anymore. He checks, and Reinkemeyer now bets 160,000. Unfortunately for Jonathan, he's still got to like his hand most of the time, especially given the action so far. Duhamel makes the call. We're off to the river with nearly 600,000 in the middle. Ah, oh, you think Phil wants him to speed things along? That river card sees Duhamel take the lead. He rivers a straight. Did I say Jonathan was in trouble? I meant to say he's winning. If he wants any value, he's got to try to bet here. Plenty of hands Tobias would just check back. Duhamel counting out a bet of 187,000. I don't think Jonathan's doing this very often as a bluff, and my guess is that Tobias probably knows this too. At this point, his hand is pretty much pants. If he's reaching for chips, raising here would be a really sick play, and make no mistake, it would not be with the assumption that his overpair is the best hand. Those red chips are worth 25,000 each. The blues are worth 5,000. Reinkemeyer raises to 500k. Most players wouldn't even consider raising as an option here, but Tobias is repping a flush, which is a huge part of his range with the line he's taken on this hand. When you call this straight here and lose to a flush, you feel like a complete dodo head. Looks like Jonathan doesn't buy it. Well, he's certainly got to think about it. These are two of the biggest stacks in the tournament. Duhamel gives it up. Reinkemeyer turned his queens into a bluff, and that bluff worked. Really sick play by Reinkemeyer. Sick fold by Jonathan, too. Would have been slightly better if he was right. Reinkemeyer up to nearly 1.5 million. He's taken the tournament chip lead. Sanction will be on JC Alvarado. He folds. Michael Watson, 6 5 suited. Raises. Makes it 22k. Eric Seidel has pocket sixes. Likely to see a call. Sure enough, Eric does call. Dan Smith on the button has ace king. Dan's almost certainly going to three bet here in position with all that action behind him. And don't forget those massive chips. He re raises to 63,000. Sam Chartier's just joined the feature table. He faults. Simon Ravensbeck also has ace king. Another ace king out there. This is going to make things pretty crazy. Ravensbeck, four bets to 134,000. Watson and side elbow fold. Now nah, this is a little less exciting now since these two are destined to chop. Smith five bets. I'm all in. Robin's bet oh. moves all in, and Smith calls. This guy Robin's bet must have some rep considering none of these guys ever appear to be afraid to get it in with him. 96% chance of a chop. No reason to hide that gorge face now. The flop. Ooh. Right. A 
There's two oh, spades on it, and Smith oh, holds the ace of spades. Backdoor sweat. And there's a spade on the turn. Oh, come on. That would be too gross, right? Can anyone else hold the spades? I don't want to know. Trust me, neither does Robin's back. And the river brings another spade. Wow. Oof. That was less cool than talking about a guy's bachelor party in front of his wife. That was grotesque. Man, it's, it's okay if you want to laugh. Robin's bet gets four flush, and a big stack is taken out by the chip leader, who now has close to 2.8 million, a phenomenal number of chips. Can we please lose another player soon? That average makes me uncomfortable. Pocket sixes for JC Alvarado as we return to the main feature table. Well, JC's on a bit of a heater. He raises, makes it 45,000. Speaking of heaters, this is the one guy at the table running hotter than JC. This kid makes more hands than a mannequin factory. Dan Smith has King Jack off. Calls from the cutoff. Speaking of, have you ever seen Mannequin 2 on the move? It's really underrated. You may be the only person on the planet who's seen that movie. <laughs> Tobias Reinkemeyer, a jack nine suited in the big blind. It's a decent hand and he's getting ridiculous pot odds. He calls as well. Even though we know he's dominated by Dan. Three way to the flop. And Tobias Reinkemeyer flops a full house. Dan Smith flops trips. Nothing for Alvarado, the original raiser. Action's been checked to Smith, he bets 85K. Dan Smith has made another huge hand. This time it's not the biggest, though. Reinkemeyer calls. After betting a call, not much shot JC sticks around here. He folds. Heads up to the turn. Which is a six. JC so lucky he folded on the flop. Reinkemeyer checks again. Smith bets again. 181,000. Sick cooler developing here. Ryan Kamaya calls. Both players are playing this like they absolutely know they have the best hand, and most of the time they'd both be right. As for right now, Dan is in deep doo doo. The river's a king. Smith now has a better full house. OMG. This kid spikes more than a lie detector on Capitol Hill. Ryan Kamaya checks, hoping to induce some kind of bluff from Smith. This is not a bluff, this is a value bet. 384,000 and it's bound to get paid off. It may even get raised. This is a slam dunk value raise situation. There are only two hands on the planet that are beating you, Kings and King Jack. King Jack is the more believable of the two if it weren't for the fact that it would have to be the case Jack. Hold on. Right, come on, shots. The double check. Call. Dan Smith calls and we lose the German from the tournament. Like the refrigerator is at the center for disease control, this is just a sick cooler. Good hand. No kidding. Tobias, it's okay if you want to scream. All right, good luck. Yeah. I'm going to go ask Dan Smith if it's uncomfortable having that horseshoe up there. Looks uncomfortable. What? I mean under his hat. 14 players remain. And Dan Smith now has close to 5.3 million. This is the NAPT, my babies. Comeback time. Yeah, we can play it for real now. One time, come on. Yeah. Hey, Mom, I'm playing heads off on TV. I'll see you later. <laughs> Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Marquesi. William Reynolds is the champion. Good. Vanessa Selps is the first ever two time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. Fun playing with you today, sir. It has been a minute. See you on the strip. Yes, we will be in Vegas at the start of next month, but right now we are in Cyprus with the PokerStars European Poker Tour, and day three of the main event continues here at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino and Spa. 98 players returning from the second break of the day. 
Three more levels to play today and a new lineup on the main stage. New lineup on the mics as well. It's James Hartigan alongside Griffin Benja. Hello, everyone. You know what I love about that NAPT promo, James? Your five seconds of fame? Well, I, it looks like Helmut is saying that he's going to have so much fun playing with me. You know, I love that. The That's magic great. of editing. <laughs> so these are the chip leaders as we come back from break. They do include Carl Shaw, who final tabled Barcelona earlier this season, and Gerard Carbo, who is an online qualifier from Spain. On the main stage right now, we have a former EPT champion, Anton Wig. Toby Joyce also has a seat at the feature table, Griffin. You know how I feel about Toby Joyce, old friend from Ireland. We also have the Japanese player, Toru Ida. Clemens Reuter spent some time at the feature table yesterday. And we have got one of the big stacks, Timur Vardanian who has got close to a million right now, nearly 120 big blinds, and that is at the new blind level. 4,000, 8,000 with an 8K big blind ante. Anton Wig been a big presence here in EPT Cyprus. Wig a Chad, he's become known as. I guess we should highlight that both Ida and Reuter are short. Clements Reuter very much in the danger zone. Danger zone! So we've got 90 minutes of poker with these guys. Maybe another feature table change for the last two levels of the day as we check on the prize money up for grabs. With 1,320 total entries, a prize pool of $6.4 million. Obviously right now we're paying players around 10K, but when we get to the final table, we're gonna be playing more than 100K the winner's going to get more than a million dollars. Pretty big turnout in this event. 12,300, by the way, is the current payout. I think it exceeded expectations, Griffin. We were predicting between 1,100 and 1,200, with 1,200 being a kind of best case scenario. Thinking slightly below what we saw in Prague last year, but no, 1,320 entries. Yeah, I think it's uh, you know exciting for um, the EPT community to have a new stop, and uh, it has not disappointed. Clock is running. Cards in the air once again. And action is going to start on Casimir Sear. Just for a second, yeah? yeah. Looks like Sear is folded, so Vardanian starts the action with a fold. This one. Round to Ida. We've seen Ida kicking around here at a few BTs lately, finding his way onto some feature tables. Don't see a lot of Japanese players on tour, so it's nice to see. And once you get down to the final 100, he brings out the guns. Look at that tat. Just a tease. You don't get the full sleeve until the final table. I love these blind v blind battles. We get Toby Joyce completing, and we get Casimir Sire checking his option. And we have a 7-4-3 flop. We'll get the whole card to the players in just a moment. Ooh, that was a good soda open, wasn't it? <laughs> Makes me feel like a kid. It brings me back. Jerk. Who am I kidding? I had a Coke yesterday. <laughs> Action goes, check, check. Ace on the turn. Going to be a card that certainly favors Toby Joyce's range, having limped in from the small and seen a check back from the big blind. The bat from Toby is 16K. Yeah, 
And this might be the kind of card that Casimir is still going to want to continue if he has a piece. You know, if he does have a three or let's say a four on that flop, could find some checkbacks and then might still think that he's good on the turn. Also, are some ace X's that he would check back free pre-flop at this stack depth? You know, if you have something like an ace deuce off and the small blind limps, you don't want to raise and yeah. find yourself get check raised. So there are some check back aces in the range. And let's see how Toby is going to react on this jack. Jack. Check, check. That's going to be good for him, River Jack, yeah. Now we see the showdown and with a jack. Toby Joyce is going to win this pot. Both those players below average right now. Wow, well, flop the flush draw, rivet yeah. the pair. Yeah. Toby Joyce playing 242,000. Casimir Sia playing 318,000. Average stack right now just over 400K, playing around a 50 big well, blind average with 97 players well, remaining. I mean, I don't think I don't think it makes a difference to her. But what does make it what doesn't make a difference is how far you put your chips in. Yeah. They should just recruit like washed up basketball players to to be <laughs> the teacher. Huh? They should just recruit washed-up basketball players to be the teacher. <laughs> it's like... Uh, yeah. Cards are back. Carolus Sereka raising under the gun with sixes. Dude, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, just go to Lithuania. Like, they're, they're all poker players. They're all poker players and they're all basketball players. Roy to the short stack, but with four deuce. Nah. Anton Wig. As Queens. He is one of the biggest stacks at this table. Starts the hand with 529,066 big blinds. Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised to see Anton actually flat here. I think you can work in a, a mixed strategy. You know, you're not going to be entirely thrilled all the time to get in 70 big blinds, you know, under the gun and the hijack. And it's nice to maybe if there are some stacks behind that could squeeze that might otherwise fold to a, a three bet. And we're seeing a perfect example of that right here with the 40 big blind small blind stack of the pocket tens. Now, we could just see an overcall here from Sear, but, you know, would be justified in just squeezing this in and does do it, and this is why this flat is so effective. Anton just so aware of the stacks behind, and going to be quickly called, Ooh, and he's loving that. Great trap set by Anton Wig. Casimir Sia falling into it. And Sia is the at-risk player and behind. Dominated. Sorry. And I think this is a good lesson for the viewers at home is that you don't always have to three bet certain hands, certain situations. It's important to have different gears and a mixed strategy, thinking about those stack sizes behind, how they're going to react when you just call. Still five cards to come, mind you. The flop is Jack Nine Deuce, Queen's holding. There. Suffice to say, Sia needs. <laughs> A 10 on the turn or river. <laughs> An 8 or a 7 will deliver additional outs. There is the 8. So now he has 6 outs instead of 2. Is it always coming 7? It has been said, James. He's going to need a 7 or a queen on the river. Or he is KO'd. It is a 7 because it is always coming. And that is going to be a double up. And what a sick game it is. Casimir Sierra, player with $135,000 in live earnings, plays as Sice25 on Stars. Used to stream on Twitch, but now focuses his time on studying the game, playing poker. I think it's fair to say he's still pretty active, though, in the Twitch community. Mm -hmm. yeah, and 
I'm not at all surprised to see Anton Wig taking it like the consummate professional that he is. This is the kind of guy that's been on the tour since as long as I can remember. He's seen it all before. He's been deep in EPDs before. He's gotten sucked out. But a player of this caliber does so many other things so well that when he takes the big beats like this, he still finds himself with 30 big blinds in a dream with 96 players remaining here at EPT Cyprus. And we see the Casimirs moved up to third place on the leaderboard. Remember, these are just the stacks the players were watching on the feature table, but now has more than 80 bigs. Anton Wig hovering around 25 bigs now with 211K. It really is always coming seven, isn't it, James? <laughs> Don't argue with the Germans, Griffin. Ah. Vladimir Kotlik has gone mustard for this event. Remember the mustard hoodie from Prague? The mustard hoodie that gave birth to Mustard Ramon? It sounds familiar. Toby with those mustard sleeves, trying to decide what to do with this king queen. And is going to find a stiff 4x3 bet. Pretty big sizing, trying to probably dissuade any flats, just telling, and, and any room to, to four bet in general, just telling Cuddlelake if we're going to do this. You're going to have to shove her fold and from hijack to cutoff with just the jack that we see. It's going to be difficult for Kotelik to, to shove basically any hand that isn't two jacks. Yeah. You know, ace jack off is, is not love and life here. But you know what? Is going to find a call. So maybe something like an ace jack suited that isn't prepared to shove for the 30 bigs, but feels it's too good to fold. Maybe even Jack-10 suited. Queen-9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, unless it's the Jack-9 of spades under there for Kotelik, which I th think probably would have been folded more often than not. Joyce is well ahead. Can't be Jack-9 of spades, Griffin. Nine of spades is on the board. There you go. I was just testing you, James. That's all right. I mean, much like <laughs> Mr. Stapleton, I have my reservations about blockers, but if I've seen the actual card, I'm pretty sure the, my opponent can't have it. Now, Queen Jack of Spades, certainly one of those combos similar to Jack 10 and King Jack of Spades that could be calling pre. So this could actually be very nice for Joyce. In general, any jack x hand unless it's the ace jack of spades i think and then we do see the fold and i would i would bet that that other card is the ace of spades nice pot there to take down for toby it's my first time having a green chip and the irishman finally getting a green chip those green chips of course worth How much? 25? 50? 100,000? 100,000. How much are the green chips worth? <laughs> Greens are 25. He must have had a green chip button by now. Greens are 25, the blues are 5, the yellows are 1. See, I do know that. I just was just a little confused. And I believe those are the only denominations in play at the moment. <clears throat> Nightbot has the answers to everything.
over the top. One or two green chips? One. One. Yeah. Thank you. The lucky Finn, Casimir Seer. I want it to be known for the record, has used his one time now. So, you know, if we see this guy later in this tournament try to use his one time, please, chat, you know, make sure everyone is aware. It's been used and it's done. was a walk wow. for Clemens Reuter and he will take it as the shortest stack right now. There's no whole card cam, right? No, no, this is like the RFI detector. Yeah, just in Barcelona they had it. Oh, they did? Yeah, and they asked us to do it. Yeah, when we make TV shows, we have the whole card cameras in those little holes on the table rail. Yeah, like yeah, to get no, those peak I'm shots in what, the TV what shows. What card cameras? Yeah. But for this event, just a live stream, just need the RFID scanners so the cameras can stay at home. Does mean though you get those holes still, so people are like looking there going, is there a camera there? Am I on TV? Mustard man. Well, not only have we got mustard kotlek, but Many comments about Toby Joyce's attire that he looks like the dude off Weekend at Bernie's. I think they mean Bernie. I'm getting some beach bum vibes too. Little Beatles. Can we everywhere. confirm that Toby Joyce is actually alive and there isn't someone sat behind him moving his body up and down to give the illusion? Whoa, spoilers. I've never seen Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Would you like a hashtag fun fact about Toby Joyce Griffin? Yes, of course. So you're probably aware that he has accrued a lot of cashes in his time, 2.1 million in live earnings. You might know those Pokestars ID as Sad Face 11, but did you know this is his first ever EPT main event cash? I don't believe that. I feel like he's been deep in other EPTs, but maybe it's because he's been deep in like a high roller, like a 5K or a 10K or like an Estrella but I have a memory of him being deep. Well, most of his poker is played in the USA. That's the first thing to say. But mm -hmm. as far as main events are concerned, we can find no other record of him cashing an EPT main. Wow. So if you question this information, take it up with Mr. Hendon, because it's his mob. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to take it up with Toby, because I find that to be a, a fascinating statistic. No, but that guy's got a phone. Yeah, it's just on his phone. I guess on average you're only going to cash 20, 25% in these events. And if he's only played, you know, six or seven, certainly possible he wouldn't have cashed. No, no, no. Then you can get information from everyone else on the table and no one else can. That's why they're doing it. I didn't know the rules. Sorry. 
Please tell me we don't have a player who's violating the no phones policy. The, the, the floor yeah, was coming to me and I said that my phone is on the table. Yeah, no, it's fine. Like, I, like I'm, I'm not trying to accuse you of anything. I'm just saying, like, it's... Just... Yeah, I mean, the stream hasn't even started with us, so... Yeah. Kind of kids in the back. What on Toby Joyce for calculating 30 minutes? I'm just jealous. I want to be on my phone too, but... Now, now, Ida. Great opportunity for a Reuters shove here. Would love to just look down at an ace and put it in. But the 7-5 ain't going to do it. A lot of walks at this table. I mean, I know it's only a handful, but it's like more than normal. It doesn't make great TV. At least we have the hold cards. I think it's better because I can easily go to the toilet and give enough, uh, take information there. <laughs> when then, then you're gonna miss the hand. So. I mean, I mean, if 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 you do that, then I mean, yeah. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, like. <laughs> It's, it's a bad rule. Any, anything, anything could happen in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bad rule if you can uh, <laughs> do something like that. <laughs> well, really sticking to his guns, this uh, one seat. If you are so desperate for information that you're willing to like walk 200 yeah, that's not an edge to a bathroom. Like he's, it's just he's willing to die on a sword that he should have his phone. Gosh, <laughs> we're just so buried in our phones. Also, the rule does not exist to stop people from getting information after the event. It's to stop the possibility of any information leaking in real time. We're pretty confident in our systems, pretty confident that everything's secure, but belt and braces, don't risk it. Don't give people electronic devices so there's any chance yeah. of communication reaching them in real time. And this should be it for Reuter. You're not always thrilled with a hand like, you know, a marginally strong hand like ace 10 after an early position raise but when it's someone with a hundred big blinds and you're only sitting there with about seven or eight you're pretty thrilled also because you're going to be up against you know hands that you dominate a fair bit and Sarik is going to feel pretty pot committed here and you're not going to be happy to see the ace 10 but knows he can afford it Well, it is a domination situation. Reuter ahead, but he is the at-risk player. So if we see some ugliness, I don't want to play as a player like you. Clemens Reuter will be KO'd. You shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Fire back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is quite bad karma. But. Hearing some GLGL GL Bennies in the uh, Twitch chat. Is he still in the main event here? Did he not win enough over... Uh, I did allude to the prospect of some ugliness. That I consider to be ugliness. Two tens in the deck. And Reuter needs to hit one of them. Uh, he was the one that opened up the pop. Seven on the river. And we bring you a Reuter news flash to let you know that he is no longer in the tournament. We're down to 92 players now. As Clemens cashes out for over 12K. Your bluff was very, very good, mate. <laughs> what a fucking guy. <laughs> he fucking roots against the guy and then... Oh, he got a money ladder. He got a jump. $14,150. Happy days. Honestly, Monkey says, I honestly thought the no phones at the feature table rule was because it's boring to watch eight people look at their phones the second they muck every hand. That's not the reason, but it is a net benefit of the rule. I will agree with you. 
Sorry, what? What are we talking about? I was on my phone. Vesco says, why are you guys not streaming on Twitch? Vesco, you know that last comment I read from Undersea Monkey? That came from the Twitch chat of our live stream on Twitch. But you're more than welcome to continue watching on YouTube. You pays your money, you makes your choice. And by the way, the money you're paying? Zero. Unless you have YouTube Premium, which I recently bought. No more ads for me. Good for you, Griff. <laughs> Can't be doing with those five-second pre-rolls anymore. <laughs> no, they finally broke me down. <laughs> Pavel asks how many they're playing till today. Not trying to hit a set number of players, Pavel. Just playing five full levels. This being the third of five levels to be played on day three. This won't be a walk. And so far in this level, what has been established is a limp and a check back the last time. And Seer has one of those bottom of range hands. He might just want to make a three and a half to four X raise, hope to take it down pre-flop. Such little playability does the nine three offsuit have. And there it is, throwing in one of those fated green chips. And that is a four X. And Queen eight is gonna be a little tricky It's definitely medium high up in the range of the hands you're going to be limping with. Queen 10, you'd surely limp call. Queen 9 is probably right on the line. Queen 8 is going to be pretty close, but Toby, very experienced, very comfortable, is going to find that call. And it's out flopped. A pair of threes for Casimir. A lot of people singing the praises of YouTube Premium, Griffin, because of the access to music. Can I ask how much per month it is? Um, or did you pay I for think, the year, like a baller? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. I, I, think it, I think it's something like twelve ninety nine Canadian. So like two fifty probably uh, U.S. No. <laughs> probably about ten or eleven bucks U.S. I, that's what I. That's my in my memory, but. What are they charge in the UK in pounds sterling? And would you look at this, Joyce, seeing this incredibly small bet and actually getting the odds to, to suck out on that three. And this is part of why Toby decides to continue here. You know, if your opponent, let's say, was doing this with the eight deuce offsuit, you would want to be check calling here. And if it's happening with 9-3, it's going to be happening with 8-deuce. So still behind, but getting close to a, a winning hand. Check. check, check. Six on the river. So Kazimit still with the best hand. Yeah, but this is Toby's hand right here because even if Toby thinks Seer is as high up in his range as, say, a 10, which would be betting small on the flop, that's the kind of hand that kind of needs to fold on the river. So Toby's going to be turning this hand into a bluff and I think is, is very easily going to win this pot. And uh, it's just very impressive work from the Irishman. I want to see a hero call with a pair of threes. Come on, in this spot? I mean, I know it's highly unlikely, but it still would be awesome. I will say the only consideration that Seer could have is, you know, how, how is Joyce going to play ace five suited here? Even ace five off. Would be limp calling, would be calling the tiny bet on the flop just like he would the queen eight, and would be turning that hand into a bluff. So Seer clearly aware of how Toby's range is constructed here. And it's not just, you know, the king jacks or um, the hands of that nature, but it is still going to get through. Nice hand from Toby. You know, I, I'm a very bad speaker. I just want to give him respect and compliment about his playing. It's only about it. I know, I know that people often don't realize my second meaning. I'm sorry. Okay. Sure. Sure. 
Tom watching on YouTube says, do you not like Nick? Would be good to have him on this table. You're going to have to be a little bit more specific, Tom. Nick who? Ace Power Clubs. Hmm? And do you hear that? He said Ace Five of Clubs, that exact kind of hand I was talking about. A little bit of an Ace Five of Clubs kind of vibe. Not strong enough. Oh, it seems that Tom is talking about Nick Airball. Well, if Nick Airball comes to Cyprus and plays an EPT, then maybe he could be at a feature table. But I can't put someone at the feature table who's not in the tournament, in the casino, in the country. Well, you've shown your limits, James. Ooh, Ace Queen of Hearts. Merstyle says, yeah, it seems unreasonable not to show Nick, really. I agree. Every feature table from now on will have someone called Nick. Even if we have to change the name of one of the players. Anton trying to get some of those chips back there. Um, I think you'll find that's Nick Wig. Yeah, so what's Anton playing right now? 20 big blinds. Toro Ida, the short stack at the table with nine big blinds. Timur Vardanian, still the table chip leader with 113 bigs and still an hour to play at this level. Ooh, there's a shove in hand. Very disciplined fold from Anton Wig here, recognizing that Ida's shove range here on 10 big blinds. Ace Jack is just not going to be dominating enough. And it's just going to get through. A weaker man might have just put that Ace Jack in, thinking, oh, you know, he's going to have his king queens and his, his sevens, and I can, I can win a flip here, get back into it. But that's not enough of an edge for Anton Wig here with 92 players left. W Cut More on Twitch wants to know if uh, I watch the stream when I'm on breaks. I often watch the level leading up to the one I'm going to be, be on, see what's going on, see what time I got to be there. It's nice to kind of uh, see what's been, been happening leading up to the level that I'm going to be broadcasting. James, I mean, he's just always doing pretty much every level, so if he ever gets a half level off, he's probably... <laughs> I do get levels off, to be fair, but I don't have the opportunity to watch the stream because that's no. where I have to do a million and one other yeah. things. He's got many responsibilities here. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be sorted for Vegas next month. Ayush says, what happened to the last EPT winner? Is he playing this or is he not allowed to play again? No, he's allowed to play. We don't stop previous champs from competing. Yeah. And the table is higher. Yeah, Simon Vitsiak was the winner yeah. in Barcelona, and he did make it into the money. He was eliminated earlier on today. And the pole situation yeah. is gone, too. I mean, it's a little bit problematic here in this year, but, uh, but that's it. It's just problematic. It seems anyway, like no matter what, yeah. right? <laughs> So 
Toby Joyce opening King 10 here. Yeah, bottom of range open here from Toby in early position, just trying to maybe get one through. We are playing seven-handed here, so it's an effective, effectively an, you know, under the gun six-handed open. This would be one of the things you'd want to avoid is Toby Joyce is Ida waking up with a shoving hand. This yeah. is obviously a quite a strong hand and one that is crushing Toby Joyce's particular hand, but Ida's not gonna be as thrilled as say if he had Ace Queen. But too good to fold, too short to flat. How much is it? I think Toby's going to be finding a fold here, but he needs to play the little game here to make it look like he has a medium strong hand that's just quite not good enough to call the 10 big blind shove. Maybe something like an ace 10 off. <coughs> or a king jack off. Maybe ace 10 would be called, but you're, you're not loving life against this range, not a lot of fold equity. Six new time bank cards at the start of play tomorrow, Toby. I think it's, a re it's like a reset. I, think. Oh, okay. I don't think you get to bag them. You do get to bag them. Of course, we Toby doesn't know this because he's never cashed an EPT main event before. <laughs> well, I'm not going to have any of that, so. <laughs> keep, them, keep, them, keep them for tomorrow? <clears throat> and I can have 12 cards for time bank? Wow, okay. Thank you for this information. I do find it hilarious how people are paying $5,000 to play a poker tournament and not reading any of the terms and conditions, any of the rules. I mean, they could put in bold letters, when we get to 91 players, we're going to randomly expel five people from the field and yeah. they won't receive any prize money. And no one would know and they all would have signed up for it. In the same way that we all sign up for the latest Apple software without reading any of the T's and C's which they ask us to agree to before we proceed. As someone who just learned how much the green chip is worth, I'm gonna have to uh, defer from this uh, conversation. I was thinking, though, if they did a 91-player chop right now, they'd all probably get what? 13th place money or something? It's pretty good. Does that math check out? No. That would be with 64 left that they would get 100K each. Oh, my brain hurts. <laughs> Nightbot, get to work. <laughs> Okay, if the prize pool was six, six million on the dot, 90 players, that means that everyone would get... Some money, correct, Griffin. Everyone would get 75K? <laughs> right? 
Yeah, because 100 players would be 664K. So, yeah, you'd get, like, 11th place money. I mean, that's pretty good. Do you want to go out there and propose it? See if you can get 90 players to agree to it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yes, Toby. Yes. Beautiful work. You've been joist. Oh, damn. Quayman just freaking blew my mind. See this? See this comment? I did not see this coming. <laughs> Hi, Gryphon. <laughs> A large part of the prize pool is already distributed. Damn, I, that's, that honestly, that blows my mind. I did not, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that. That's great. <laughs> So the only way to find out what the 90-player chop would be is if, if someone calculates the exact amount of money that's left from 90 players. What's Nick doing? <laughs> As we've already established, he is not at the feature table. <laughs> if you look at your cards like that, I can almost see them. But why would you tell him that if you could s see them? Good sport. You love to see some good sportsmanship. Good etiquette. Like Raised from Mustard Kotlick. Called by Casimir Sire. And we have a six deuce deuce flop. Check. Here, taking a second here. So we've got a couple of people, Griffin, who've done a rough estimate. With the remaining prize money, chopping 91 ways, you're looking at fifty-four and a half, fifty-five thousand dollars each. Less appealing now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to convince more than eighty-three of them. <laughs> There's bound to be someone who'll go, I want 55,100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want everyone else to give up, like, five euros. Toby, you bad boy. Toby, bad timing. Ten's been pretty good to see her on this feature table. Sixty-four. Fault. Ooh, I like where 
on Dragon 99's head is that. So 50k for everyone and the remaining 91 plus 4500 for the winner. Hang on, hang on. That's hang clean. On. Hang on. No, 91 times 4500. Oh, so like 409,500 for the winner. I mean, the numbers will change now because, as Black Volmia points out, we're down to 89. So we're going to update these numbers all the time for when Griffin goes out there and proposes this. I would start with players like Anton Weg and Tonka because they're the ones who are going to nix it. They don't have to worry about asking anyone else because all it needs is one player to say no and the deal's off. Where's the fun in that? I want the sweat. No, no, don't start with like the qualifiers, the first time cashers. You start with the people who you know are going to be a problem. By the way, 90th place finisher, Alex Kulev, future of me, who was the feature table earlier. advantage for Sariga here, but Vardania in a lot of ways to catch up. Got shot to the nets. Sounds a lot painful, it really is. Right now, Reduce is still good. But Vardanian might want to start telling a story here. If you're not going to bet the flop, certainly that queen you're going to want to start attacking to, to fold out hands like a deuce. Now, whether that's going to work, a pair blind on blind is a pretty strong holding. Hard to make a pair, but look, a 1.5x turn bet and doesn't even think about it. So when you said he should start telling a story here, I thought you meant like, so me and my mate Dave, <laughs> we're in a car, coming back from the pub. A reminder that we've got the mini EPT Cyprus online series running on Stars right now, which is awarding PowerPath tickets. Do make sure you check out PowerPath if you haven't already. Four steps to potentially win a 10K gold power pass. Of course, there are the silver and bronze power passes as well. You can come in at the beginning for just 50 cents. Remember, you get one of those 50 cent spin and go tickets for free every time you play a real money hand on Stars. And, of course, you come in at the step three to the $11 MTT, but that last step, the $109 qualifier, is ticket only. Work your way up the steps to make it into that qualifier. It runs every day. Bronze pass is worth $109. Silver pass is worth $2,500. Gold pass is worth $10,300. Trouble hand. <laughs> that's, that's the right way to play jacks. Oh, you wouldn't have gotten jacks anyway. Oh, yeah. Want to find AP? No one would have, yeah, that's true. No one would have had the hand. Yeah. <laughs> Still the right way to play that. Yeah. Don't get him. I'll take that. Toby Joyce not absent of confidence on this feature table. No. And once again running into the pocket tens at the cutoff now from Sear. Certainly doesn't always have to play as a three bet strategy here. Can be a bit mixed and does decide to three bet. So at what point does 
Toby Joyce stop being a believer and do something funky, like four betting with 10-9 off. I mean, he has it in him. Don't do it, Toby. And this is also why Sear, I think, because of this dynamic that is being established between the two of them, the kind of hands they played against each other, Sear probably aware that sometimes he is going to get some four bet bluffs and then we'll just have all this dead money in there. But it's not even on Toby. Over here is Ida, who with the pocket nines Ooh. is probably going to think, you know, doesn't have any fold equity, sure, but with these late position opens, might think these nines are too good. What if. You know, Sear is three betting with the ace five suited, and you get it in 70% favorite. But big fold from the ja Japanese player. Wow. And a quick fold from Toby. Got a question here on Twitch. What does HJ, C O B B, mean? HJ is, well, I'll start from the BB. The BB is the big blind, which of course you post two to the dealer, small blind, then the big blind. The cutoff is one seat to the right of the button, and beside the cutoff is the hijack, also known as the HJ. Ten fold. One fold. Oh, this is a nice spot for Ida. Yeah, folded to him in the small blind. Just shoves with the ace nine. And Anton Wig with jack ten off folds the big blind. So nice to get a shove like that with a hand like that from the small. You'd hate to see an early position open, even when it's from like a chip leader who you think you might be doing well against the range with an ace nine. It's nice, plays nice and clean. We can just shove and fold. I just got a nice mask. I like his mask. It's a clean black mask. So with 89 remaining, the average stack is 445,000. There are quite a few players with significantly less than average right now. In fact, we've got quite a few players in the danger zone. Danger zone! Including Paul Newey, who was the feature table earlier on. It's Pewey Newey. Michael Molinar, a.k.a. Lord Barre. Oleg Ustinovich, who celebrated his birthday yesterday. And Mario Tratu, who was on our feature table yesterday. Tratu. Go, Toby. Again, Toby Joyce opens and finds an opponent with a decent pocket bat. Mustard Kotlick in the big. And this is going to be a raise. Comfortable, especially seven-handed, to just get this in against the end of the gun range. 33-ish bigs. Toby, a little a bit of a defeated grin there. Now three hands in the last four or five that he yeah. has been three bet. And, you know, I, I like the way Toby's going for it, but maybe a bit of a lesson in this that he's getting maybe a few notches out of line. Those The hands that we've seen open now are 10-4 suited, 10-9 off, and the king-9 suited. I think the king-9 probably the more, more standard and perhaps the other two. Good job, Neuhunter, for observing that that was indeed mustard on mustard action. <laughs> Six and 
pull. One pull. Hit three pull. From pull. Hit pull. Blind v blind, Kotlick with king seven of diamonds in the small, completes. Toby Joyce, eight four off. Yeah, one of those low equity hands that sometimes you wanna ISO here blind on blind as we've discussed. And <clears throat> although Toby has lost some momentum in the last war bit, does still have Kotlick covered. So going to go for that 3.5x range raise, hoping that Kotlik has something more like the queen four, queen three off, something of those, those, that nature that's just going to limp fold, but it is definitely a limp call hand in the king seven suited. Jack six deuce with two diamonds. Seven check. This flop obviously sucks for Toby. But, you know, the times that your opponent has something like the the queen seven of clubs that might just fold to one bet here, that will probably just fold to one bet. Even the king seven of clubs or hearts might just decide to fold sometimes here. So Toby's going to continue the story but he will have some trouble shaking the second nut flush draw. There's the call from Kotlick. Turn card is the ace of hearts. A card that's certainly going to favor Toby Joyce. There are still some aces that Kotlik is going to have playing as a, a, a check call pre and then a check call on the flop. So this is going to be really define what happens in this hand. Is Toby just going to give up? And it looks like he is. And I don't blame him. Not going to fold out a, a, a jack. Kotlik has some aces in his range. Not going to fold out diamonds. Your opponent doesn't have a lot of six X's. So this, is, this, this makes sense as a give up and... Uh, Kotlik should just win this at showdown. Seven check. I mean, Kotlik brick in the river, though. Well, you would hate to lose here 70, against, you know, 70, a queen nine of diamonds or a queen ten of spades that would, you know, Check call pre, call on the flop. I mean, you'd hate to lose to 10, 9 of diamonds, <laughs> right? Like, you are. The thing about bluffing in spots like this is you're finding yourself at the bottom of your range, and you need to, to be prepared to bluff a good portion of the time here when you do find yourself here. And would you look at that? Brilliant work from Toby Joyce. No king high hero call from Mustard Kotlick. Toby Joyce chips up to 449,000. Actually, just over 450,000. He is an above average stack, playing more than 55 big blinds right now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so interesting being in the booth for hands like this because when you start to break it down, knowing what they have, it, it just feels more and more like a call with King High there from Vardanian, you know? Hard for Joyce to have a jack with two out there. Difficult for him to have an ace if he's not prepared to bet the turn for value. So they put cards like this, or I can do and King High is a pretty good calling hand there. Yeah. You're, you know, just, you're only just to clarify, it's Kotlik, not Vardanian, who was the opponent. Pardon me, right? yeah, Kotlik, yeah. One, four, three, four. <coughs> Four, four. 
Anton now sitting on 15 big blinds. I think he knows better. Just probably getting a bit frustrated that he can't play the kind of hands he was able to play when he was one of the big stacks on the table, which he has been pretty much most of the coverage that we've had yeah. leading up to that brutal bad beat queens to tens earlier in this level. Uh-oh. Toby Joyce is playing the Spraggy. Blind v blind, unraised pre. And Joyce has paired his seven. Can I get a sparking water, please? Yeah. Yeah, probably the most interesting dynamic we've seen over the course of this level has between yeah, sure. Sure. been between Joyce and Seer. And this is now the third blind on blind confrontation there's been. Both with very strong blind on blind hands, both electing to to put in the minimum. So under wrapped. A lot of interesting turn cards like that one. Going to be tough for Toby to hold on. Can't really effectively bet this card with the A7. And if Seer starts betting, are you willing to call two bullets? Going to be very difficult. Is it comfortable for you to play in sunglasses? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you're also probably reckoning with the fact that he's not going to get a ton of better hands to fold, and he has so much equity, he doesn't want to get check raised or something like that, and gets there on the river. Very small bet on the river here from Toby. Just designed to set the price. Sometimes you're going to get called, which is a curiosi curiosity call by a worse seven that would have, you know, of course, of course, called this flop bet. And maybe if this was just a float with, you know, Five seconds. Cool. a king high type cool. hand would be less inclined to bluff over a lead. Mm. Nice catch on the river, Casimir. No, the second one. I, we were on the same table at the start of the day, and he ordered a beer down too. <laughs> I'm like, are you hammered? Because you're really good at holding it. Pretty awkward ace eight suited here on 15 big blinds. Feels like too many chips from the hijack to shove. So is just going to play it for a raise. Would love to find a little momentum here. This is a kind of a, even though it's, the hand is starting out with small bets, it's it's the big swing, right? Yeah. You lose this hand, you get closer to 10 big blinds. You win it, you get closer to 20. Very important hand yeah. here, raising into the table chip leader. Of Vardanian. Defends his big blind with seven six.
Eight, six, three. Top pair versus second pair. Yeah. Dream texture here for Anton. This is the kind of board that hits the big blind and also because it hits the big blind and Vardanian has all these chips, might just try to rep it if he didn't have a piece. But he does. He has that six. Anton would love to be able to get all in on this flop. He's going to bet exactly half pot. 22. And this could go one of two different ways for Vardanian. I think more commonly we'll, we'll see a call here, but also, you know, Anton only has 10 big blinds behind. You might just want to end the pot here, not give your opponent an opportunity to get there on the turn if they don't already have it. I'm all in. And there it is, yeah. Seat one, raise all in, six, six calls. Well, this is a great spot for Anton Wake. You talked about him needing some momentum, Griffin, if he can hold here get the double up I'll tell you what though I mean with that seven of clubs in hand backdoor straight opportunities Fardanian is no further behind than an ace queen against pocket kings and we've seen that ace pop off so 29% pretty decent wig not even close to out of the woods We saw how steely-faced Wig was after that brutal 750k pot bad beat. Let's see how he manages if he his day ends here on a river seven or six. Five outs for Vardanian. Is it always coming seven on this occasion? Uh, every time you say that, it comes. Sorry, you've been condemned, Anton. Squadoosh. River card is a king, pairing the board. Anton's hand holds, and he gets that important double up. Bear Totem says, Wigsy for the win. Anton Wig now playing more than 30 bigs. Still a below average stack, but a lot more comfortable than he was a couple of minutes ago. Never rig our feature tables, but we, 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 we will wig them from time to time. Nick wig. <laughs> Got to have something called Nick at the table at all times. Ace 10. Back in action. So we kind of have a new player at the table, Griffin. He was dealt in this hand, but ran to the bathroom. Um, Siahai Shudapal has taken the four seat. He's an online qualifier who got his seat for EPT Cyprus via a $530 satellite. But we're talking about someone with a lot of online experience, a lot of live pedigree as well. 900K in live earnings. Let me get this straight. Okay, James. We have... Uh, Sirica, a Casimir Sir, and now we have a Sirhe Chudapel. Yes. Oof, that's a lot of Sir. Sear this table anymore, it's going to be overcooked. A state of clubs for Kotlik. 
Raises to 16K. And round to the big blind. Queen eight for Toru Ida, who's still hovering around that 10 big blind mark, is the only short stack now at the feature table. Yeah, been pretty sneaky. Been hanging on. Outer table action featuring Tonka playing against Spanish qualifier Jose Jimenez. But Donka Tonk. Looks like Tonka has bet the flop and been raised by Jimenez. Oh, that's a fold. Tonka gives it up and is now down to 120K. Starting to struggle now as a sub-20 big blind stack. And appears to be going into the big blind. Rut row. So 84 players in action right now across 11 tables. One of those tables on the main stage right now is our feature table. And we're returning there. So... Vladimir Kotlik opened to 16K with Queen Jack suited. Sia Hai Shudapal defended the big blind. They have a king 4 3 flop. Check, check. Six on the turn. Bet of 13k on the turn from Shooter Pile is going to win in the pot. Shooter-pole completing in the small with 8-7 of spades. Ooh. Don't think I've tasted it. Anton. They're happier because the other ones they have is Carlsberg. And for some reason... They do. They do have Carlsberg. Yeah, yeah, I said... Doesn't want to lose his customer here, so maybe isn't going to go quite as big as maybe the standard we've been seeing, 3.5 to 4x, but also might want to stay balanced. Does make it 3.5x. And Shooter-pole has the kind of hand that... Might want to see three at 30 big line effective. Mm. Okay. I mean, this is, this is, isn't this one of the hands that has the best chance to, to crack yeah. a hand like Kings? And good. Wow. Wow. And look, 50 50. 
This is a post-flop flip. Shooter Pal has flopped the straight, but Wig has a redraw to a better flush. In fact, this is a street flash hand. Yeah, this, this money's getting in on the flop unless Anton somehow mixes in some checks. It does go check, check. Yeah. Anton going to be well aware this is all over Chudapal's range. With the board pairing on the turn, Wick still has close to 40% equity. Chudapal leading now. Yeah, not making a cheap full pot. And listen, Anton Wig is not loving life here. A lot of Jack X's in Chudapal's range. course can just have a flush can have something like seven eight suited queen eight suited of course is going to be calling here but i think he's well aware that to continue comfortably on this river you he's going to want a queen jack or a heart and there is the heart Anton would not only be losing to the Ace of Hearts, but also the Eight of Hearts. But, and that is why we see a bit of a tight check. Maybe expecting not to get much action from what Chudapal is going to be holding. And that's a big pot, yeah. Rivers the flush to chip up to nearly 50 big blinds, back up over 370,000. He is one of two previous EPC champions still in the field. The other is Nicholas Schwiti. Both won their EPT titles in 2010. Wig was in Copenhagen, Schwiti was in Monte Carlo. And as you'd expect, as someone who resides in Lebanon, Nicola has been playing a lot of poker here at the Merit over the last two years. Fourteen minutes left on the clock. Fourteen minutes till the next break. Eighty-three players remaining. Yeah, yeah. And it's like so far in the end. And the forty-five minute break. Barely enough time yeah. to get up to the better buffet. Yeah, so Thank it's you. like, yeah. I'd rather it be 60 then, so I can, like, because I want to go yeah. to the better buffet, obviously. Did I break 16? Yeah, I'd rather 60 or 20. Ooh. Yeah, Lucy Goosey button open cool. here from Chudapal. And is going to get punished for it. A couple of quick updates from the field, Griff. Jose Gonzalez up to 1.9 million. Carl Shaw chasing him with around 1.4 million. So those are the two biggest stacks right now. Pretty impressed by your ability to call out the seed numbers, even though they're different. Ten is a fold, one fold. Pocket threes for the table chip leader, Carolus Sereka. Barely. Tied up top again with Vardanian. 
both yeah. around 750,000. Uh, Shooter Pal flashed his cards as he folded. They're displayed to the whole table. Here's the club for your diamond. Yeah. Please, no one say, make, make a knit joke. Don't do it. <laughs> I think that's one of my, my, my at the table pet peeves over the years, James. Someone gets a hand exposed and someone just has to say, ooh, what a knit, like no matter what the cards are. I just can't, I can't deal with that one anymore. Again, if they'd read the terms, conditions and rules of the tournament, Griffin, they'd know that the dealer has the right to punch that person in the face. <laughs> Three bet from Kotlik, re-raising with the Jacks. Yeah, I think you just gotta let this one go. Don't mess with the mustard man. Don't mess with the mustard man, mustard man, mustard man. Do not mess with the mustard man. He will squirt mustard on you. Workshop the MBA, otherwise, <laughs> no notes. Should we repeat the 510 medal or not? I don't think so. I think it's just a 6500 that yeah. repeats once and then that's it. So it seems to be 6th level is the last one, yeah? Pick one, fold. Three, fold. 11 big blinds, ace nine off, early mid position. I just like, you know what, I'm not going home and telling my wife and kids and friends that I busted with ace nine in early position. It's not really the hand you want to be revealing when you tell your bust out story. No. What, 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 what were your whole cards? Um, ace, ace nine. Sorry, ace what? Ace. Sorry, under the gun two you were? It's ace nine. Oh dear. Should be an easy board for Wig to just put out a small bet and get a fold, but wants to balance the balance the range with a check. Probably prepared to do this with aces as well. Also, probably thinks Queen High is just good a lot of the time. Doesn't want to give Sear the opportunity to get tricky. Coming to the end of this level, and I can reveal, Griffin, that we are going to be switching up the feature table switching. during the break. Reference that Carl Shaw, EPT Barcelona third place finisher, is among the chip leaders right now. Table Shaw. Helen will be delighted that one of her boys is going to be on the stream. Yeah, taking a break from uh, battling with the, the Toretto gang. Carl Shaw. Ooh. Kings again for Anton Wick, and again with the King of Hearts.
six feet by seventeen thousand seven fold. Just don't do Toby Ten dirty. Fold. Yes. Ten fold. That's a team, by the way. Sorry? That's a team. I think it's a seventeen. Ah, eighteen. Eighteen thousand by eighteen thousand. I'm the last one, yeah? Yeah. The lazy speeder Gonzalez asks, is it allowed to make a straddle in an EPT? You can't straddle in any tournament. It's a cash game play. If you were to put double the big blind out, it would just be a blind raise, and you would not have further action on it. Says, but can you strudel? Here you can. I think they have strudel as one of the 238 dessert options at the buffet. That's right, Scribbles. If the players had read the terms and conditions, they would know about the straddle slash strudel situation. TOC, baby. on riding high on that momentum going from 14 big blinds to 52 and is going to raise one of the weaker hands that he's going to be prepared to raise from this position but got a lot of nice momentum here play the rush King 10 6. Open uh, ended straight draw for Anton Wig. Ace high, still the best hand for now. Advantage Wig. Tonka uh, <laughs> one day, buddy, one day. standing on the rail. <laughs> but I don't think he's been KO'd right. yet. Going rough, buddy. So far we play three levels. I literally just fold for three levels. Like fold no. for three levels. I put in I three bet, ace three suited, big blind go all in. I have to call. That's the only hand I play. <laughs> and then I go from five hundred to four hundred, and since I have four hundred I go down to one hundred. No. No, no, now, no, we no, 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 no. now we build mountains. Now we build the mountain. Yeah, Tonka still in, just chatting to Papo MC on the rail, recounting his fate today. Now he wants to turn a mountain out of a molehill. Shooter pal is open with ace four, and Tom Wiggs got the snowman's. Nom nom. Besides just to call the 16K. Yeah, you know, when you're up against the under-the-gun range of a 15 big blind, 16 big blind stack, you know, if you do three bet the pocket eights, you're not thrilled to get it in. So I like a flat here from Anton. Just to respond to Wilpo's question, you can buy PokerStars merch at the PokerStars store, but I would say there is some stuff which is exclusive to the event. So, for example, all the stuff branded EPT Cyprus, you have to be at the event to get that merch.
Jack Jack nine on the flop. And that means eight are still ahead. And Tom Wig now a three to one favorite. Quite a peculiar bet from Chudapal here. Peculiar. The kind of board that is going to be all over Wig's range, whether it's between the, you know, medium strength, sort of ace jack suited, queen jack suited, king jack suited kind of type hands that would be calling in this seat, to your king queen suited that have all this equity. Just not a lot of folds you're going to get on this board. But Chudapal gets lucky. Always an ace on the disc. Normally it's when you have kings, but the same rule applies when you've got eights. Ooh, and another annoying bet on the turn of 8,000. Anton's sitting there like, ugh. Why'd you just throw these back-to-back -back rocks in my shoe? Left my shoes out here. And then you, you, put, you put rocks in them. Keep going with this metaphor, Griffin. I'm loving it. <laughs> I mean, that's a horrible board for eights. Blooming horrible. Yeah, but you bet 8,000 into 84. If you can get a river, like a diamond, or sure. something, you can try to rep like a hand better. If you make on players, oh, you hit the break. And enjoy your 20. We get to enjoy a 20-minute break. I'm telling you right now, Anton is not calling this, and he is probably not folding. Oh, he is. No. Eight, you call. So that hand is going to take us to the break. 81 players remain in the EPT Cyprus main event and still two levels to play today. Still three hours of poker to be dealt. And these are the stacks, the players we've been watching over the course of the last session. Mardanian still a big stack. Anton Wig hovering around the 40 big blind mark. Toro Ida very much in the danger zone. Danger zone! And when we come back, a new feature table which will be headlined by Carl Shaw, who is among the chip leaders. Other players at that table include Harold Zama, Fabrice Bigot, and Bart Leibert. Blinds will be 5,000, 10,000 with a 10K big blind ante. So we'll be back inside of 20 minutes. Enjoy the break. In just a moment, we'll find out about Vegas Infinite. And we'll return with more action from the PokerStars European Poker Tour here in Cyprus. Lines 2,000, 4,000. They are not in the money yet. 32 players getting paid. An ounce of raise makes it 20,000. And Callahan opening with eights. Pocket threes for Slade. All in. Lee Jones doing chip counts now. Johnny pushes all his cookies in. Loden pushes in all of his cookies. Lee Jones, 2006. Pat pushes all of his cookies. Oh, graphics error. AJ White has become AQ White. 
Ack White? Now the action is back around to seven seat Pat. Pat O'Callaghan now has to decide whether to call. The effective shove is Lodden, of course. Patrick of the Callahan. Let's it go. Can't really blame him. So White is the at-risk player. Dominated by Jonathan Lodden. And slap him down, dealer. Now I really want to hear this turn card. <laughs> it's a queen. <laughs> Never call for outs for your buddy when they're ahead. <laughs> That's a nice deal in there, Slappy. Nice hand, AJ. Ah, oh, Slappy's gone. <gasps> but this, James. This could be the one. You know it's coming, right? This could be the one. Lodden raises the King Ten. Slappy meat sloppy. <laughs> AJ doesn't really have the chips to do anything but all move all in. Pat says he's all in. All in. Is all in. I guess we had his name wrong before. It's actually Ack White. <laughs> I'm all confused now. Luke has got a king. Hold on to Luke in the line. Johnny has to call 32,800 if he wishes to play. So it's going to be Lodden versus White round two. I think so. Johnny called. Johnny is gambling for most of his stack. Team 10 for Johnny. White officially the at-risk player here. Ahead, but Lodden has live cards. We know that one king's been folded. Pat has flopped a pair of queens. Johnny needs a king to win the spot. Turn us all. Turn card, please. I'm focusing on the dealing and not on the cards. This dealer is a lot more ginger. <laughs> it is a jack. She tapped the table. She was like, sorry about the bad beat. Before she turned the river over. White eliminated. Did you lose a player? Yeah, we did. Okay, congratulations to all the remaining players. We're down to 32 players. Everybody take the prize money. Oh, wow, that was the bubble. White bubbled, and now we're down to 32, and now everyone's locked up at least 7,400 euros. So that was a sorry you just bubbled table tap and then <laughs> turned the jack over? Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Holden still watching from the rail. Like you tell the dealer what to do, there's a computer system now. <laughs> this side is so rigged. I feel like Yeah, <laughs> The button is on Luke in the eighth seat. Nick Bounty has the big blind in the two seat. Rob's going to be first down. Holds Queen 10 under the gun. Canvas passes. Connor and Round to Luca on the button, King Deuce. 
And now it's Slade. Nick makes it 13,000 total to 9,000 raises. Raises with the sixes. Johnny calls. Lodden calls with threes. Was that a huge raise? Just to get, just to get him in. <laughs> I think this is a joke, yes. <laughs> Nine, nine, <laughs> Let's take it back. Me the worst flop, flop in EPT history. Flop is nine, nine. One more time. So bad. <laughs> Just incredible. Oh, full house for Johnny Lodden. He bets twenty-five thousand. Now, James and I can do that because neither James nor myself have ever made a mistake on television before. Correct. Johnny makes it 50,000. Slade continues. Lodden raises. God, well, why, why would you why would you try? What? Just say hey, the words. It was 2006. It was all about style. That's super embarrassing, though. <laughs> so you even get a chance to make your little move with all your chips. <laughs> you can snap call drawing pretty much dead. Yeah, they're checking the stacks here, but it looks like Slade's got Lodden covered just. The turn is an ace. So Lodden is at risk, but a 91% favorite with one card to come. But it's a nine oh. on the river, and Slade makes a better full house. Lodden effectively counterfeited and eliminated in 32nd place. I should not have said almost dead. <laughs> I was playing a heads up sit and go for $50 and I just lost a really simple hand on the river and I just had enough and I picked my mouse up and threw it at the, at the, at the screen and cost myself like 400 or something because I had to replace the monitor and it's like you know that was really stupid. <laughs> Irish Open 2023 main event champion David Doherty, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me on, guys. Hey, buddy. Obviously, we can see numerous trophies behind you, David. What is your poker origin story? I mean, how long have you been playing for? And just to give us an idea of uh, of some of the, the events you've played and the stuff you've won in the past. Um, I think I started playing when I was in university around 2008 or something. Um, maybe, maybe a little earlier than that. But uh, I just played pretty... You know, recreationally at the start, uh, you know, while I was doing my studies, I was doing computer science and, you know, I didn't really play for any serious money until, yeah, probably 2008. I then um, luck boxed my way into a World Series main event. I just turned 21 on April the 7th. Um, it would have been 2008. Happy birthday, dude. Did you have your birthday during the Irish Open also then? I did, yeah. I deliberately played day 1B so that I would have my birthday off if I bagged up and then I'd wow. bag the chip league. So what a birthday yeah. present. Yeah. Yeah, dude, your birthday awesome. is lucky yeah. for poker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really seem to have a, a, a nice, fair, just sort of cool demeanor about you. And I just want to know, where does that come from, do you think? Because, you know, just the way you explain, like, yeah, you know, I, I realize that I'm like not a lot of poker players have that same sort of level headedness. They do at times, but yours seems yeah. to be like pretty consistent. I'm just wondering what what about your life do you think makes you makes you that way? I don't know. I'm sure if you asked my dad that same question, he wouldn't know either <laughs> because he's he's the complete opposite of me. He says he, I was giving him a heart attack while he was watching the stream the other day. So um, <laughs> that could be uh, why. Maybe it's because your dad's a high strung guy that you're more chill out. Sometimes we go the other way. Yeah, yeah, it could just be an opposite thing, you know, like trying to trying to do 
you know what you what you interpret other people are doing wrong or whatever just trying to fix it um he's got he's got better at that over the years but yeah i, I don't know like, i mean i've not always been like this you know i'm sure there's there's been plenty of times where i've maybe busted a tournament and stormed off and just not taken it well i remember one time when i was maybe early 20s as well i was in the midst of a downswing and I just lost a really simple hand. I was playing a heads up sit and go for fifty dollars, and I just lost a really simple hand on the river. And I just had enough, and I picked my mouse up and threw it at the at the, at the screen and cost myself like four hundred or something because I had to replace the monitor. And it's like you know that was really stupid. So it's not something that's always been there. I've definitely okay. refined it over the years. Um, but I just do, I do think it's really really important to have a perspective when you're playing mass fields. Yeah. tournaments you know if i lost heads up to declan in the irish open sure i wanted to win the tournament but it was going to be nearly a quarter of a million i'm not going to stand there and be like oh man i'm so disappointed i'm so unlucky i didn't win it you know i, I realize how lucky i am to be doing this and you know like you you can't control the results of certain tournaments it's either going to fall for you or it isn't you can just play your best and you know see how it goes so um yeah, I, th I think it's just I think it's just that understanding that um, you can't great. really control everything. Well, let's not forget, David, that one of the reasons that you didn't lose heads up to Declan is because you were rescued by that three on the river. You were rescued yeah. by a chop pot, and you then gave us what I think is probably the best <laughs> ever performance of the chop pot song we've ever had on stream. Because none of the commentators needed to get involved. We had one of the players sing it for us. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome, guys. I did watch your bike this morning, and uh, I saw a lot of the Twitch chat giving me a 10 out of 10, so I appreciate that. Everyone loves a chop pot! <laughs> <laughs>
Comeback time. Yeah, we can play like for real now. One time, come on. Yeah. Hey, Mom, I'm playing heads up on TV. I'll see you later. Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Mark Casey. William Reynolds is the champion. Good. Vanessa Seltz is the first ever two-time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. I think I'm gonna have fun playing with you today, sir. It has been a minute. See you on the strip. Have you told your mom that the NAPT is back? Doesn't matter. What matters right now is EPT Cyprus, day three of the main event from the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino, and Spa continues. Beautiful island here. Deep into the money, 80 players remain. Joe Stapleton, Griffin Bender. What's up, guys? And ladies. I'm not here. I don't think so. Chip leaders of the overall tournament on your screen, Carl Shaw. Been popping up all over the place, second in chips overall. Carl Shaw, friend of Ian Hamilton, I believe, who took down EPT London. In the highlights we were just watching, Gerard Carbo, a player we saw yesterday at the feature table. Kenny Hallert, EPT reg for a long time and World Series of Poker main event final tableist. And I don't know anyone else that was at that final table. <laughs> <laughs> Here is our feature table. Bart Liebert back, had him earlier today, had himself a time. Expect more chatter from Bart, but it's Carl Shaw who's drawing all the eyes right now. 1.6 million in chips. Oh, this is a fun blind level, Griffin. Oh, yeah? 1.6 million in chips, 164 big blinds. The human calculator. He's back. Is back. Goovin's back as well. Goovin was on a feature table yesterday. Fabrice Bigot, a player we have seen multiple times throughout the last year or two. Andrea Dato, a player I thought had been an EPT reg, but based on his questions about how time bank cards work, I guess he hasn't been around for a while, but Andrea Dato is not a new person on the tour, but an old person back again. Prize money. Cha-ching. Hasn't changed. Hasn't changed. Still the same amount as it has been since registration cl closed yesterday. 6.4 million total in the prize pool. Right now we're paying out just over $10,000. Over $12,000, I should say. If you want to get to six figures, you got to make it to that official final table, eighth place or better. And all the good stuff, very top heavy as per usual on the EPT. 465,000 for third place, 650,000 for second, over a million for first. Millionaire's own. 80 players left. We are paying out exactly $14,150. Next ladder is at 71 players, so not super far away, just basically a table. Who's this Rory Jennings knockoff sitting in the one seat? We are using the box to the right. Probably going to look nothing like him once we show his face. Poker Stars European Poker Tour. Thir fourth level of the day. Four of five. Kicking off right meow. We are here for one level, right? 
you know that? How many levels will we be here at the table? Change over uh, level. One, yeah, so one level. Yeah, okay. okay one level. Nice. Here's some uh, <clears throat> EPT trivia for you, you do Joe. Crazy. Yeah, it doesn't look at yeah, anything like Rory Jennings. Go on. Just because I uh, forget like the specific break, yeah. EPT, what was the one that Carl Shaw got deep in that we were covering him all the time? Because global time, so they didn't change us. I believe it was the, the last EPT. Barcelona, right? EPT Barcelona. He final yes. tabled it, right? Yeah, probably yeah he did. Yeah. yeah. Third place. Yeah, he played great. Unfortunately, he had to take a dive so he could take out the Toretto family. <laughs> Yeah. Action is folded around to Bart Liebart in the cutoff. Jack eight. And that appears to be a call from the small blind. Small blind is Ege Guven. We know Bart's hit a jack at least. Guven flops a gut shot. We'll see it continue from this combo from Guven, drawing to the nuts. Six of hearts on the turn doesn't hit anybody. And I wouldn't expect to see Liebert. And two Barts on this table. We got Liebert and, and, and wait, we have Bart Liebert. It's all in the same name. Never That's mind. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Eight on the river, two pair for Bart Liebert. So now the, the, the question becomes, does Guven want to start bluffing? You know, is finding himself near the bottom of his range here, given the positions, is going to have all those queen 10, king 10, king queen misses, but is also going to value bet the ace x hands. And Liebert with that bluff catcher, the jack eight, does make the call. Not a problem. Making that call is going to pick up an extra 70 on the end. Ill-timed stab from Guven. Liebert sandwiched between Carl Shaw and Andrea Dato. Griffin, I, uh, I have a text message to read to you. Do it. My friend from my friend Boston Rob Mariano. Oh, nice. What does he think? Do you want to set this up? Sure. So um, there are two sur survivor seasons every year, and I, I do a do a little draft with a group of my friends, a bunch of couple friends, and uh, just did my draft the other night. We we do it after the first three episodes because there's five five drafters, and then there's when there's 15 left, we all pick pick three. Three players, and my uh, partner and I had the first overall pick, and I spoke to you about it at breakfast this morning, and he said, I'm going to find out uh, what Rob thinks about your picks. That's right. Rob came through. So I guess uh, you, you wait a couple of episodes into the season before doing it. Yeah. So you're not completely drawing yes, yeah. people that might all go bust. I up. mean, if we had a sixth person, maybe we would. You would have done 18. two weeks earlier or whatever, probably. Well, I think if we had six, maybe we would have done from the beginning, but okay, we have got five, it. yeah. All right. Well, do you want to say what picks you made? Yeah, so uh, so we had the first overall pick, and we picked uh, D. I will say, though, I'm an episode behind here, so I don't want him, him spoiling anything. I, I don't, don't think there's it. any spoilers in okay. here. I mean, other than, yeah, I, I think you're good here. All right, okay. so here's what your boy Boston Rob mm. had to say. As we go to the flop, Ace Jack for Liebert. Oh, no, Vavilonsky defending and flops an up and down draw. We'll get to this in a second. We'll have plenty of time in between hands. Mm -hmm. We'll just tee it up for now. Wasn't that Abe Lincoln beard guy in the North America main event? Where do I begin? Where do I begin? 
Is this the Abe Lincoln beard guy? I don't know. But I do know he will continue in this hand to some capacity, whether it's a call or a raise is yet to be seen, but it is a call. Drawn to the nuts. Is that the Abe Lincoln beard guy? Two, three, four, five, seven. Nope. Pretty good deuce to seven hand. Not great and hold them. Liebert gonna think this ace high is good enough for the time here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is a straight. That's a bad deuce to seven. But it's only the third nuts. <laughs> That's it? Seems like it should be more. I know. It's because you're Nine, ten. discounting. Nine, two, five. Yeah, okay, sure. And nine, five. A handy would never have on this. <laughs> Calling a flop on the... Calling a flop on the bet, is what I was about to say. <laughs> Makes more sense than, wasn't that Abe Lincoln beard guy in the North America main event? And, yeah, I think Liebert is well like aware. That super easy fold to make against the big blind. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem, I guess, that you run into is the times your opponent is floating the flop with something like king-queen. All right, so. Every time we talk, you're making compliments about the hairstyle, and uh, I do like that. Yeah? Give it to me straight. I see at least one big paragraph yeah, there on your phone. I'm excited. There's a boss and Rob had to say. I said he picked D as the first overall pick, Julie, and Bruce as the last overall. If you had nice hair. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying he doesn't? Because he said, I, I don't know. He always wear nice hair. I, I don't know. You know how his hair looks? No, but me neither. Yeah. But you're implying his hair is not nice, right? It was a joke, yeah. <laughs> I love Bart. He's chatty. I don't know if I see you with that head. So I guess he still watches every season. Eh? He like uh, not only does he watch, but he's like expected to have an opinion most of the time. He gets uh -huh. like you know, does a lot of appearances. Okay, yeah. You know, get, does radio shows, podcasts, whatever. All right, here we go. He says, from what I've seen so far, and it's still early. I like Emily to win. I have many secrets. After the first episode, I was 100% she was drawing dead. But after four episodes, I have done a 180. Obviously, anything can happen. Bruce, as the last pick, is a good pickup. He could go deep. Nice. I'm very excited to uh, to share this. If you want to take take us take that screenshot and put the. Oh, you want to throw that in your little, your yeah. little survivor group chat? Yeah. Maybe I'll just send it to to, to my girlfriend, but. Uh, all right, you just want to send me the contact info too. That'd be just <laughs> easier. You're not, you're not getting the contact page. <laughs> Here's exactly what would happen if you got your hands on any of the phone numbers of the famous people I know. <laughs> you would promise me you wouldn't use it, <laughs> and then I'd be like, "Why do you need it?" And you'd be like, "You don't trust me." And then I would give it to you. Yeah. And then you'd be like, "Don't be mad," but I text them out of the blue. But also, we're really good friends now, and we're going on vacation together next month. <laughs> yeah. And I would just be furious with you. Yeah. In every possible way. Be go. Just going for it. See, a lot of these suited aces three bets for the big line lately. Yeah, the sourdough has expanded to ace four, and then no time at all, ace yeah. three is now in the mix. I mean, come on, bro. You got a Thor card cap where you got to give him more than that. No. Why are you asking? Yours? Actually, I'm not a Marvel guy. I'm not a real, like, huge Marvel guy. So I have two. No, Guardians of the Galaxy. Which one? Which, which, one, which, one, really? which one? Um, Groot? Which Guardian? Huh? Groot? <laughs> Hard to pick. 
will have to be Star Lord, right? Who? Star Lord. Exactly. Who? Wow. Who picks the cisgendered white guy? <laughs> Jeez. Guvin opens King Jack. Sammer wants to take a peek at a flop with Jack 10 suited. No, not just taking a peek. He's trying to get a little funky with his chicken, but has run into the pocket queens of Vavilonsky. And Vavilonsky is reaching for them bigger chips. Bet is likely to get a couple of folds. One down. Jack 10 suited so pretty. Hate to fold pre, but you know, what are you going to do? Question in Twitch chat from Tay WT who says, How do we get in the online mini EPT stuff for cheaper? It says in the lobby that we can get in at a reduced price if we watch this channel. The price is already reduced. It's like if the sign outside the store says clearance and then you go to the clearance rack, it's not a double clearance. Right. We're going to check in on Tonka. Oh, oh, that was so weird until I realized he was getting a massage. I was like, Who's grabbing his hand? <laughs> Tonka down to 55k in chips, but maybe, maybe the massage is going on because he's trying to chill out and stick around for a while. You know, you ever do that? You ever like, I'm real tilted and I just want to punt it in, so I'm just going to get a massage and I'll yeah. wait till I have a good hand. It's a bit of a tell if you're doing that, but. I think, maybe, I think he might just be stressed out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might just need it. to Fabrice. Raises on the button with ace four, ace five for Jovan Kenjic. Jovan? This one time I'm gonna let the audience correct me. Johan maybe? Definitely not. I don't know any language where a V is pronounced as an H. You couldn't resist, huh? You sent that. You sent the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buried in your phone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I sent it to the whole group. And so get it. transparent. <laughs> such an easy. Read. I don't know how you're such a good poker player because <laughs> your reads, you're just face <laughs> up all the time. Uh, Carl Shaw. Carl Shaw has crabs. I said it. Wow. Not the first time you've outed someone on stream. <laughs> Shaw does get to defend, does not hit a set, does get out flopped. Goes pair of fours, good enough there. Wins uncontested on the flop. 
Puckle Patrick writes in to say, how is Tonka doing? No. We just did it. I love Tonka. But he's not doing well, okay? He, need, he needed a massage. He looked really stressed. Hasn't he's, been a great day. He's letting down his fans. It's kicked off a whole weird debate and chat over whether or not getting a massage at the poker table is creepy. Yeah, it's just, you know, you, you got to pay attention. Try showing up on time. If yeah, you know we're just so buried in our phones. <laughs> Twenty thousand. Ooh, Red he's duck. king. Yeah, under the under the gun. <laughs> Ace clanger. Sam or the suited connectors this time. Uh, we did get a good bad look alike moments ago. I'll say it next time. Right there, Wentworth Miller. I'll take that as a as a bad look alike. Yeah, that's strong. That's good. Joe Van yeah. Kendrick. You're going, where are you going at the end of the year? Hey guys, Bama, can or? we head uh, with the chips? But instead of oh, prison break, he's trying to yeah, break the bank. Really? You know. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Ed. Four zero million, and I'm just dreaming about this for the last week. So I have a message from my girlfriend for you, Joe. Or if I win this one, then I don't. She go said. <laughs> oh yeah. Retire. Okay. Go vacation. <laughs> Retired. No, no. You almost said it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't, wouldn't keep me long. Fabrice talking about his EPT dreams. Uh, no, so yes. The win. I booked already. Oh, yeah? It's not often that I booked before, but I was scared it was going to be full. Down. Okay, they're talking about a different poker tour. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, she said, ha ha ha. OMG. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is too good. Thanks, Joe. Aww. This made my day. <laughs> Griffin's uh, SO is uh, much like my own, a delight. Yeah. And tickling her, metaphorically, has made my day. Don't turn around. Don't look at me. Everyone knew what I meant. Don't, don't laugh. Don't even look down your glasses at me. Just, yeah, no, stay facing that way. Don't. We go with a seven, ace king for the prison breaker. Imagine people thinking you look like Wentworth Miller. Ugh. People used to think I looked like Heath Ledger when I was a teenager. <laughs> boy, <laughs> listen. We all have oh our we, we all now, have our days. Now you'll never yeah. know what he would look like at forty. <laughs> no, I don't know. That, that was the that was actually the worst part. Yeah, that was the worst <laughs> part of him dying. Is that uh, you didn't get people <sighs> telling you he looked like him anymore? I cried when he died. Did you really? Yeah. I remember what I was doing. I was playing Mass Effect. Do you know when some like big event happens and you like you remember what you're doing? Sure. I think we all remember where we were when Keith Ledger died. <laughs> Three bet from Kenjik ends the hand. Kenjik Lamar. This must be a line from uh, Prison Break from the great Gonzo. There are only four rules you need to remember. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, throw away the plan. Is that from Prison Break? I, yeah, I would have to imagine. I actually have a good Prison Break story. I think I've probably told you this before. I've heard it, but go ahead. Yeah. No, it's... It in here. I'm sure people in the audience want to hear it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. But, that, but, uh, but, uh, but the... the does any, if anyone doesn't want to be spoiled on, on, on Prison Break Season 3 or 4, because it's kind of part of the, you know, it's I feel like touchy. the statute of limitations. Yeah, I think so. Second tier, so no this offense, is, this dramas. is when I was in my late teens, early 20s, traveling to a Counter-Strike event, and I uh, was on a flight with, with my teammates. And um, one of my teammates, Pasha, was watching um, The Breakup with Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn. Great movie. Love that movie. Yeah. 
and um, we had been recently, all of us had kind of been watching like Prison Break together. It was like the big hit show. It was kind of like our whole clan was watching it, and I was a few episodes behind. And um, the flight landed before he could finish the breakup, and he got off. He's like, oh, I didn't get to finish the breakup. And I was like, oh, well, what, they, they don't get back together. Don't worry about it. And, and then he was like, what? He was like really offended that I spoiled. Angry, yeah. Angry that I spoiled sure. the breakup. And then he just yelled at me, and he goes, a Brutzi dies! Which is like a big like oh, wow. character death. <laughs> so he spoiled Prison Break, the biggest show on TV, because I spoiled the breakup. Uh, probably the, maybe the biggest show on Canadian TV. We had, we had some better shows than that at the time. At the time, it was pretty. It was pretty big. Prison Break was was a thing. It was a vibe. Shaw outflops Sammer in this three bet pot. And. Don't expect this is going to go too much further. It does not. All right. Great Gonzo's back in touch. Just sorry that wasn't a prison break quote. It was the other great Wentworth Miller role, Captain Cold in The Flash. Captain Cold. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm starting to realize that character was just the kind of guy that, like, robs banks and it's kind of similar thing. Captain I watched, Cold. I watched some of Captain Cold in The Flash. So... It seems like that those WB shows like ironic casting. They like casting people right. in roles that are very similar to other roles they've played. Yeah. Like casting um Anyway, I haven't seen any of them. I should probably quiet. <laughs> Kern Termers is freaking out right now on YouTube. He says, wait, this guy was teammates with Pasha Biceps? How? Oh, my days. This guy is Griffin Benger. That is crazy. <laughs> that is too funny. So he's just realizing that I'm, think what he just, he just realized that I'm the Counter-Strike uh, Griffin because of Pasha, of all people? Pasha Lari? He still does want to know. What is up, Swedes? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sammer versus Kendrick. Sammer defending with queen eight and top pair for Kendrick. Marley also wants you to know that they loved watching you on the mystery cash game lately. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. I was, I was really... I had a very great time doing it. And follows up with they used to bet on CSO, CSGO games with Griffin and them when I was a young person. Hopefully not too young. You shouldn't bet until a certain age. Until it's legal in your jurisdiction. Exactly. Easy takedown there for Wentworth. Crazy Carl weighs in to say, by the way, Joe, you did an excellent job with the mystery cash game. Can always count on Carl. Can always count on Crazy Carl. It's it's weird. I, I think I probably told you this before, but every once in a while, I'll just read the comment first. I'll be like, oh, compliment for me, and then I'll see it's from Carl, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really count. It kinda, yeah, it kind of goes without saying. It's like four compliments an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Crazy Carl. But yes, you, need to, you need to start making some burner accounts to, to if you really want to. Crazier Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. With like, you know, fake, fake accounts to make, give you compliments and you'll think they're from other people. Real ones, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one and that, that, first time viewers were like, yeah. who's this Joe Stanley? So, see, the guy? problem with that is you will make Joe feel good, but you won't get as much credit. And then, oh, but there's also the downside of maybe Joe will start assuming that all the compliments are from. Your burner cast. So don't start doing it. <laughs> Crazy Carl's a very, um, has a very distinct writing style. I'm oh, yeah. Sure I'd be able to know. It's from Kate, Crazy Carl. Anyway. Mm. All right. Bigo raising under the gun. Decent amount of chips on this table. Between Shaw's 170 bigs, Andre 
Vavilonsky's 80. Two other stacks for 75. So a lot of... Uh, not going to see a lot of all-in confrontations, I think, on this feature table, but a lot of post-flop play. You know, two pretty big hands like ace, queen, and nines, maybe under a different stack size situation, we'd see these two players all in. But, of course, so deep, just a flat from the nines. Vigo continues. Be go, let the rhythm flow. Do, 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 do. Ace on the turn. Definitively, I guess not strictly definitively, but more or less shuts the door on these pocket nines. West Wolf has a question about the mystery cash challenge, Griffin. Is Alex Botez as lovely and hilarious in person as she seems on her social media? Yeah, she is. She's very sweet. Very intelligent. My kind of nerdy. I mean this in the nicest way. She's a huge dork. Yeah, she's a, she's a nerd. It's great. Goovin, getting sticky. What are you goovin? River is a deuce. It's a spade. Three spades on board now. Pair to board. All right, Griffin, the way this hand's played out, let's look at it from Bigo's perspective. Are we worried about this spade? Called twice. Marginally, yeah. But we're also recognizing that ace jacks are going to float the flop and then hit something like ace nine of clubs is going to float the flop and hit. So by doing this, you're kind of saying, I'm surprised Guvin is just paying this off, but does indeed pay it off. No move, no goof from Guven. I mean, Guven is is hoping that his opponent has something like, you know, your king queens with a spade, those kind of hands that are gonna bet twice, three times there. But it did kind of look like value. It didn't look very bluffy the sizing. So, bit of a gift. But I know where he's coming from. Bit of a goof. Goovin given gifts. Yeah. Bigo, another no stranger to the EPT and deep runs, was a final table list. As early as, must have been Paris. That'd be my guess. Yeah, maybe. That's a good guess now. Sure. Why not? <laughs> French guy, Paris. Whoa! 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 Look at these bad boys for Carl Shaw. It's a bit early for ASMR, but... I say go for it. I don't know, Joe. Before dinner, should I really break out the ASMR? I don't want to have anyone cringe too much. Oh, yeah, right there. That's a good, yeah, right there. Oh, thank you. Okay, you can stop. Thanks. Ooh, King Jack calling from the button. Another King Jack in the small blind. Not my favorite. No. There goes the King Jack. That's going to eliminate some... Outs for Sammer, but also probably maybe keeping it so that Sammer doesn't get in too much trouble. Sammer doesn't make a pair. It's 
So someone just said uh, on Twitch, that guy looks like Ole Shemion. But I can't help but read it as Ole Shemion. Yeah, Ole Shemion. Well, he looks like Ole Shemion. Ole Shaw has flopped top set. Sammer with a gut shot to the nuts. If it's all the Sammer to you, I think I'm probably going to call here, try to hit a queen. Seems reasonable. 18,000. That is not a lot into a pot of 71,000. I mean, how often does a gut shot come in? See? Safe. Perfectly safe turn. Bet, bet real small again. Let the gut shot have another stab at it. Shaw yeah. checks this time. Yeah, I mean, He's you have... afraid that he can't get called twice. Yeah, I mean, you, you have all the aces. You're, you know, to get all the money, you would need your opponent to have two tens, which might have three bet pre. Check, you're check. Just, yeah, you're hoping to get those king jack and the, and, and the like to start bluffing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Straightenized, Sammer Rivers, the nuts, Shaw checks. Really hoping for a bet. But I tell you what, if the sizing is big enough, we might just see a call from Shaw. I understand it's 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 top set. 75. Your opponents can have lower sets, but three quarters pot. Fives. Threes, tens, all these hands bet the turn. Queens probably three bet pre. Oh, he's still going. 230 is the raise. Sammer won't be able to believe it. Double check your hand. Yeah, and this is this is because of the queen ten combos, right? As well. Those hands, queen ten suited, would be flatting pre, checking back the turn, betting the river. But, but once he gets shoved on here, I think Shaw's gonna gonna know that this is the King Jack and might be able to get away from it. But it's only gonna be 180,000 more. Sammer Jammer. And as Griffin mentioned, the pot odds here are pretty, pretty terrible. And by terrible, I mean good. <laughs> but Sean knows. Sean understands that he's probably just gotten really unlucky. Does he just want to give 18 big blinds to a range that is pretty much always King Jack, right? I mean, it's not a lot of bluffs. No, I mean, Sammer's and it's not a lot of sets of queens. I mean, maybe Sammer could have like two jacks and. Flat pre, try to bluff the river and then reshove because you're blocking keeps. It's just so, like we don't see it, you know? It doesn't happen. Your opponent just has the nuts here and you've been gotten really unlucky. Nikki on Twitch says if the queen was a club, Shaw would get away, but now IDK. Certainly easier to get away. Nice fold. And Shaw does lay it down. Doesn't give the courtesy double up. But once again, the great slammer is going to pick up all the pogs. Hard to make top set, Joe. Hard to make top set. And even harder to lose with it, but Carl Shaw recognizing that his opponent too, has the nuts too. there and making a very impressive fold. I know I am. Yeah, I know also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would be surprised if it's something else, but. It would surprise me very much. Stoic. Taking it like a champ. No moaning like I would be. The Queens and King Jack, right. Even if I wasn't on stream, the whole world would know I folded aces there. Yeah. No, 
Vavilonsky going to take the opportunity to raise the button, jack eight off. The guy who asked about the Abe Lincoln looking person says that they would have folded to the river bat from Sammer. The original bat. Wow. 30K bat. The 75K bat. 75K bat. But the ace is the top set. Yeah. Wow. How does the team pro process work? Can, does this, can we just get this guy? Side him up. I feel like we, you know, we could have some, we have enough pull. We could, this is, this could be our guy. It could be our pet project. With, with a fold like that. Pavlonsky does have position in the pre-flop lead, but big go has the better hand and the better draw. So one more quick follow-up on the Boston Rob thing. The, yeah. the girl in the draft, uh, this lovely girl named Jennifer, who drafted Emily, mm -hmm. said, O-M-G-G-G-G, five Gs. Mm -hmm. That made my day. So cool. You're making days over here, bud. Is, is Emily also a delight, like John? Uh, I've actually never met Jennifer. It's a friend of someone else in the in the group. It's the only one I don't know. Oh, Je mm. Emily is the draft pick. Got it. Right, Jennifer. Yeah. But Jennifer's. Uh, we can look at her. We can look at her pro. Yeah, she has a. a, a, a man yeah, I don't her. bother. <laughs> King of the turn. <laughs> Another straight made. Wow. Nine ten, Jack. Yes. Another straight made. That is the nuts. It goes looking at that board the way that I look at the mini bar of hotels. <laughs> the Nets. And just as expensive. That was a uh, 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 big bet. Over bet. Pretty easy for Jack Eight to say a uh, bye bye. Yeah. To the OVB. So people are saying this guy has an Abe Lincoln beard. Like I feel like he looks like a. He would be a character from from like a TV show, but. He was talking about Carl Shaw's very tight. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Faded yes. beard. Yeah. Actually, no. There's something there for that. That's good. Uh-oh, Tonka all in. God, just finish him off already. Right, called. Hey. Oh. King Queen? Oh. No. Yes. Oh, sorry, bro. Was called by Jose Gonzalez Sanchez. Tonka has got ace four. Gonzalez with ace deuce. Oh, man, a no deuce way. on the river. No way. That is it for Tonka. Power of the massage did not stop him from being a domination rotation. <laughs> Understandably excited, knocking out one of the game's greats. Oh, that's that's sweet. And Jose Gonzalez, in addition to knocking out Parker Talbot. That's that's definitely not the masseuse's first bust out during a muscle. Like she was very good. She was that got out of the way, got it, everything got it, you know, that was good. Jose Gonzalez is chip leader in this tournament now with two point two million. And a couple of other names have gone busto. Julian Sitbon is now Ju Julian Stand gone. And Toby Joyce. 
No. Got no joy. No. He out. Not so far. Dude. Hmm? Maybe after. At least he got his first EPT cash. Yeah. Hand developing on the feature table. Sam are open with two tens. Kenjik calling with ace jack king at queen for shaw three ways to this flop do you think shaw has a has a partner girlfriend uh, i don't know do you think that he calls her his shoddy four minutes till james is in the booth <laughs> top two pair for Jovan Kenjik. Carl Shaw with the gut shot. Gonna be tough to hit it with those two tens in Sammer's hand. Shaw does improve on the turn. Drink it in, Griffin. <laughs> Finally got some good reviews. Drink it in. <laughs> One of my puns. It's a big day for me. <laughs> your writing's good. It's your crowbarring. <laughs> Shaw gets away. I I was totally like, Sammer oh, gets away. Like, these are the big ones. I want to have one as well. I was like, what? You know, I was confused because you have the yellow right to the green. From here, it looks exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, the yellow, yellow here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now I really want to get some red chips. <laughs> uh, there's, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can get, you can get some if you say the right words. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Sammer up to 71 big blinds. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just didn't keep it within the test. Shaw still table chip leader with 138 bigs. Hold it around to Big O. Queen nine in the cutoff, good enough for a raise. Kendrick's out. Shaw folds. Beert Liebert makes the call, dominated. Oh, hadn't made the call yet. Now makes the call dominated. King eight, deuce, two hearts. Queen nine, close. Queen five, less close. Bet. Removes Bart Libart from the equation. See you later, Bet. Monkey see Bet. Monkey do win pot. You want to try some of these jokes out on heart again, Griffin? You know I do. Oh, God, no. <laughs> All right. I promise to be as objective as I possibly can in judging your humor, Griffin. You got to do it the same way you did it to me. He's setting you up for a mighty fall. Come on, Griffin. Rise to the occasion. I'll do my best. What? Never had a go. Just what? You want me to have a joke ready? Do Just... the joke. No, do the same joke. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Um, I mean, so far you're failing. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, sure, yeah, 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 okay. Do you want to take it from the top? Yeah, let's take it from the top. Okay. Um, hey, hey, James, uh, do, do you think do you think Shaw has a partner, like a girlfriend? I don't know, Griffin. Why? Do you think that he calls her his shouty? See you, James. <laughs> wow. Don't go, Joe. Don't leave me like this. No, no. Just to be clear, have the audience now had to listen to that twice? I am so sorry. Everyone. You know it. I am so sorry. We have got a dinner break in 44 minutes. That's just the beginning. That's going to make everything there's, all right. It's going to make everything there's no, okay. There's no shortage of that. <laughs> oh, God. Have we got the satellite working? Is Maria joining us this evening? Picking up the Wait, action the, in this hand. I mean, the this... Sh the shotolite? <laughs> that just doesn't even work, Griffin. You can't just insert that word into other words where the letters and the sound are completely different. Sure, I can. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's clean it up. <clears throat> well, talking of Carl Shaw, a pair of fours, nut flush draw, what is not to like? Calls this 22k bet from Kenjik. A continuation bet from the preflop aggressor who has got a wheel draw now, but nothing else. You can, you can draw a wheel all you want, but uh, it's not going to get you anywhere. Well, he's now slowed down on the turn, checking the action to Carl Shaw, who we can see is an 84% favorite to win the pot outright. Takes over the betting. And... It's 36,000. Wayne Smith believes a five on the river would be nuts. If it was the five of diamonds, maybe. Otherwise, it would just be a chop. I mean, it would be a part that everyone loves, but nuts. It would technically be the third nuts. Right? Five, six, five. Yeah. Well, instead, it's the king of spades on the river. So neither player's draw gets there, but a pair of fours is still the best hand. Kenjik would just ace eight high. Carl Shaw, check this back. Has showdown value. Does check it back. Shows the four. Wins the pot. Chips up further. Still table chip leader. Still one of the biggest stacks in the tournament. Close to 1.5 million now. Nearly 150 big blinds with 73 players remaining in the first ever EPT Cypress main event. And while you're watching the stream, you can play the mini EPT. Remember, if you open PokerStars, if you see it as one of the tabs on the main lobby, you know it's available in your part of the world. Three low buy-in tournaments every single day, giving you the chance to win big cash money, plus 60K in added value, Power Path tickets added to the prize pool of every single Mini EPT Cyprus event. And on Sunday, when we run the Mini Mains, we will have two gold 
power passes available, going to the winners of those two tournaments. Now, you can use that gold power pass however you see fit. It's worth $10,300. But just going to give you an idea, you could redeem it for an EPT Prague package, and you could be seeing us at the final stop of EPT 2023. Yeah, and there's a reason why that's our final stop each and every year. Just such a memorable one out there in Prague in mid-December. Christmas market. I know it's weird to say I like the cold ones because no one really likes cold weather, but there's something right no, about Prague different. being cold, it's, right? Yeah, it's the a, Christmas market would feel wrong if it was mild. It's a crisp chill. It's lovely. By the way, if you do at any point bag a gold pass and redeem it for an EPT package, especially via a mini EPT online series, do let us know because we would love to talk to you. Stat Trek would like to keep track of you in the tournament. And maybe we'll throw you on a featured table. No promises, but maybe, just maybe. What's Govan's country there? That is the Turkish flag. Turkish, gotcha. So I don't know whether you saw the breakdown of nationalities in this EPT main event, Griffin, but slightly different to what we normally get. Traditionally, France is the single biggest percentage of players. <laughs> normally, Italy, number two. Here, single biggest section players came from Russia, the second biggest from Turkey. How far away is Russia? Not that far, if you look at a map. So, remember the rule that at least one of the players at the feature table has to be called Nick. Who has been rebranded? Who is going by that moniker, this particular lineup, Griffin? Well, we've decided that uh, Jovan Kenick. Yep. We've decided the J is silent. Okay. So it's Kenick. Yep. Also, that the E is silent in Bigo's first name, too. That would just be Rick. We don't need a Rick, we just need a Nick. Right. The stick raised 20,000. Seven fold. Lady Birds. Eight fold. You know, this isn't the first feature to table that we've seen him on. Felt, feel like he's just playing very comfortably, very much in flow, um, making some good reads, some loose opens. Some light defense, just having a good time. Look at that! Look at that smile, that wave. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're gonna love this, Griff. I know. So Adam on YouTube was wondering who the commentators are. Got the comms prompt, and Nightbot hadn't been updated. So it says in the booth we have commentary from Joe Stapleton and Griffin Benger. To which Adam responds, "Ah, oh, yes, I recognise Joe Stapleton's voice." Colleagues. <laughs> I'm guessing he's confusing you rather than me. No, it's nice to have. Uh, to have well, thank you very much. I just realized, I don't think I have a Joe in me. I just, that was me trying to do a Joe. How does he do it? Hello, my babies. Oh, wow. That was something. <laughs> that is... A good Griffin Benger challenge for the next 15 minutes. Try and convince people that you're actually Joe Stapleton. Actually, he had one more now. Because, yeah, it's not good. Is this 20? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. 20, uh, no, no, not against you. So, what's going on here? We've got the button raise from yeah. Govan. Jack nine of strawberries for Harold Zammer. 
He calls, and Andre Vavilonsky has king eight in the big. Jack, 10, deuce. Zama with the advantage. One check. Action check to the preflop aggressor who does have second pair and will continue. I'm only thinking when I miss reading the colors. Phantom Tornado asking about a potential appearance from Maria Ho. Assuming the satellite uplink works, and we have had a few tech gremlins in the last 48 hours. Maria will be here for the last level of the day. Big turn for Samer here. Govan drawing very thin and a very difficult card to to bet in any capacity. And there is a full boat. Nice. Going for value, 30,000 into 114,000. Yeah, not getting greedy here. Giving Govan a great price, and this wouldn't be a very good call, but just wants to see it for that quarter pot. So Govan definitely, in my opinion, being a bit of a, bit of a calling station right now. I mean, I appreciate, you know, you have second pair. The board is now paired, but given the range you're up against from the small blind there, also three ways, you're just never ahead there with the 10-4. So, frankly, not a good call. And going bleeding a bit here. Still hovering around 50 bigs, around average, which is 565,000. Biggest stacks of the table are Carl Shaw and Fabrice Bigot. And this is a great observation from Stat Trek. We've referenced a few times that Carl Shaw came third at EPT Barcelona just a few weeks ago. At the start of the year, Fabrice Bigot came third in EPT, the mm -hmm. first ever EPT Paris main event. Yeah. Since then, Fabrice has joined Benny and you for commentary on our French stream, has 1.5 million in total live earnings. By the way, I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. I know everyone's excited about Maria making an appearance. We have not tested the uplink yet. I hope, hope that Maria will be here for the last level of the night. Govan back in action, raising with King Queen. Vavilonsky with Ace Ten of Hearts in the small. You know, it's pretty crazy to think about if my math is right. Mm -hmm. She's probably not even awake yet. Maria is not like most poker players. She tends to be on a kind of normal kind of... Oh, I guess it's 9 a.m. right there. It's 9.15 a.m. Yeah. on the... Uh, She'll be up at 9.15, but, you know, she hasn't been up for more than an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, here we've been on broadcasting for over seven hours. Time is funny. Time differences are funny. That extra hour of time difference makes all the difference. Yeah. Tell you what, especially as a sports fan, hockey games when we're, you know, in the UK or some other parts of Europe, usually around midnight, 1 a.m., maybe I can watch a little bit. Sometimes squeeze in the whole game if I'm staying up late enough. Out here, starts at 2 a.m. Just can't do it. Sorry, Maple Leafs. Fold. 
Vavilinovsk the second with 9-8 suited and the button. Good fault. Ah, you would play then, I know. You admit? Oh, God. But you need special skills. Did you hear about our bad lookalike for the big blind here? Let's see if you can get it. You better follow your friend, see? Here's, a, here's your clue. Lead actor in a popular mid-aughts, mid early mid-aughts TV show on Fox. I have no idea what... <laughs> <laughs> it was on Fox? I don't even know if it was on Fox or I just assumed. Um, okay. I mean, he's got a touch of the Wentworth Millers about Yes, it. yes, yes, that's who. Really? Yeah, that was, that was the lookalike. That was, All right. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. Prison break. Level, level, up to dinner break. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. James just proved. I ca that kind of makes it a good lookalike if, if, if you can just get it in the first guess, right? Finally going to be able to finish my series. Very good. Did you see the movie Stoker, written by Wentworth Miller? No, but Kenjik is in trouble here with just 300k behind. Oh dear. You can, we can talk about that in a second. That's 30 big blinds and 3x what's in the pot. Vavilonsky unblocking the entire board. It's probably going to be Wana firing here and getting some action. You want to get all the money from the times your opponent does have the 8. You want to get those two pairs. What a horrible situation to be drawing to a chop. Yeah. And problematically, if Kenneth gets eliminated here, we're going to have to get another Nick to the table. Uh, Vavilonsky will have to change his name to Nick by virtue of busting the other Nick. No, they, they have different worlds even. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I mean, um, what I was referring to, like, when I said, like, I don't like Avengers that much, because, like, I like in depth, in depth, in depth character that about, yeah. And, like, for me, you have, like, these many characters, and you have, like, all of these, like, developed a little bit, and, like, you have to. Have so, Vavilonsky like, sitting there with the nuts. Uh, Facing a bet of 25,000. Character, otherwise, we'll have no crew, so this is not something I can, can relate to. But I do like Guardians of the Galaxy. Just so calls. Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool is also very scary. Yeah. A lot of rivers where. Oh, but no, that's not one of them. No. I also like the. the 151,000 in the middle, and Kenji gets the effective stack here with 291k behind. I know this is a big hand change, but I'm trying to hear the Marvel discourse in the background. <laughs> uh, Kenjik. Just got to think he has the best hand here. And bets 120 of his remaining one, uh, pardon me, 290. Oh, this is no way to go home, man. And Kenyuk is going to know it as soon as those chips get in that this is most probably an 8 or 8-9. Eight, from Vavilonsky. I don't think I can hold this. And mm -hmm. I can understand why Kanjik feels that way. I think I can hold this. No, I don't think you can either. And you're somewhere, you're somewhere out there, Kanjik, buried in the past, as we are on a 30 minute delay. 
And whatever's about to happen has already happened. Five seconds. Already in call. There is the call and appropriate reaction from Jovan Kenjic, who is eliminated in 69th place. Giggity. And so Andre Vavilonsky is now Nick Vavilonsky. <laughs> Like the Pretty much. Yeah, it was okay. Current payout, $16,250. Next money is when we get to 55. And now Andre Vavilonsky has 1.1 million. Second in chips at this table. He has $164,000 in total live earnings, and interestingly, 124k of that is from this week. He was the fourth place finisher in the Eureka main event that was won by Ankit Ahuja. So, a bit of a Cypress uh, heater. A little breakout week for Vavilonsky. And Andrea Dato here with Ace King. Ace five suited for Harold Zama. You know what players like to do with this hand. Mm. Artisanal. Oh, wow, okay. Good for you. Every now and then. Just don't tell the solver you did that. Or you're going to be in timeout. I was like, you know what? I got 1.5 million of these. I can give you 10K. Queen, 8-3. Neither player really connects, so ace high is still the best hand. But are you going to eat in the buffet? Everything? Hmm? Are you a vegetarian? Yeah. Good many options here? Yes, I mean, yes and no. But yes, also it's very good. 16,000. It's seven, but 16,000. You? Vegetarian and no alcohol? Travel. Travel. Main regime is on cheese and. Yes. Everything that's kosher. That's a good life. Healthy mind and healthy body. <laughs> you got a chase to get it, right? I'm getting some din discounts. Anton Wig here in the in the eighth seat, at least from this angle. Probably yes. Who blush these days? Not anymore. People, no don't fold. people don't even fold straights on the river anymore. <laughs> Eight folds. No million. Ten folds. Yeah. One fold. Well, I think he was a believer because he didn't want it to fold, but still. <laughs> Back on the box. I'm not hearing what you have. Mid pair for Bigo, not flush draw for Liber. I'm 
many ratchets do you have? <laughs> you will you release all of them. Ooh, yummy. The stone cold nuts and the bolts. Check. Check. Have a line. Ah, uh, try to trap. Interesting little uh, playful like the money. angle, slow roll there from Ball. Liber, saying he just uh, had a nine. To you. Yeah, I know. Perhaps to see break. what Bigo had there. So that was a little uh, interesting. And we swap 50 50. I don't want to play big pots against you. Eight flash again. Eight flash? Only nine. Eight flash again. Flash. Uh, don't see with the glasses. What? Oh, it's fine. Keep playing in glasses. Right. Uh, now he's trying to say that he only thought he had a nine, but I don't think so. Few people have suggested a bad look-alike for Vavilonsky, Griffin. Are you aware of an English soccer player called Jack Grealish? No. Google him. I have to say... Jack what? Grealish, G R E A L I S H. As far as bad lookalikes go, this is a good one. Oh yeah, that's great. That's really good. That's that's just the guy. <laughs> Ninja Aubergine says that might be the best worst lookalike ever. Could be right. Five seconds. Nice fold here with the ace eight from Dado from the hijack open. You know, ace high, ace eight high is going to be good a decent amount of the time there, but just tough to play against sometimes. Are you still going for this? It wasn't like button against big blind, which would be a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. You still doing all of them? Almost. Four or five times a year. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You don't like it here? I mean. Now the, the people here are very different because of Leo the, says uh, no one sees Jonah no, Hill. Normally they get free rooms and now they have to pay, so they'll say. Sorry, they it's weird. I was thinking that when we had the camera on, like it, for some reason it came to my brain as well, but it's really not. Uh, Babylonsky? No, 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 no. The the the, the gentleman, the Liebert. Oh. oh. But it's no, it's no good. It's it's too bad. So a guy punted like a hundred big lines against you because he thought you were capable of five bet. You know? What an idea, huh? You think I'm not capable? No, you're not. That's why you had aces in the spot, right? <laughs> 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 
that he had is due to the fact that he can't remember it. If I told... Okay, Salty's got one. Not bad. Andrea Datto looks like Romain Grosjean. Who's that? Formula One driver. Here, yeah. Maybe here actually. Yeah. <laughs> These bad lookalikes are not bad. They're breaking that rule today. Mm. These are actually decent lookalikes. Indeed, Nuck39, the guy was on fire. We can't do other poker players, right? Correct. That's the number one rule, Griffin. And if okay. you violate it, I'm going to unplug your microphone. <laughs> I never Not win. Local. I never win. Local fish. Okay. Yeah. I never win here. <laughs> but just to let you know, after the next break, you will be back to your initial table. Okay. Four. So the floor staff confirming to these players that there will be one more feature table change today. We're going to end the day where we began with table number one. Interestingly, Paul Newey's still there in the one seat. Nice. Nicholas Schwiti. A former EPT champ also at that table, along with the Spanish online qualifier, Gerard Carbo, who's built a decent stack over the course of the day. You run pretty good. We're running bad, by the way, with F5 million. F5 rate, 22,000. Liebert contemplating getting a little out of line here and is going to pull that trigger. Have to imagine one of the worst hands we would see being three bet here. King nine, I think, does not fall into Liebert's range here, so King ten's got to be pretty much the bottom. Shaw with a very playable eight seven suited. I expect to hear more from him here, playing uh, 80 big blends effective. This hand has a lot of maneuverability could also consider mixing in some four bets really putting on the pressure on the cover the stack that you cover but i would be very surprised to see shaw just let this go pre-flop for an extra forty thousand hundred and thirty plus in the pot see what we get got shot for the original razor Shaw Liebert surely gonna be wanting to continue his story and hope to just get a fold but against what Shaw has don't expect that to happen but instead Liebert's gonna mix in some checks Six, seven, eight. It is a straight. But I don't think Shaw's going to want to start betting here. I think would rather... But you know what? He does with the four diamonds out there. I'm a bit surprised. Liebert's only real move here would be to raise this bet but what kind of king x of diamonds hand would he have in this spot to find himself on the river with it i mean yeah the 
this is a defeated look here. Five seconds. And six feet tall. Very strong play of mine. Check, check, four. Don't try it at home. Actually, you can try it at home. It's pretty safe. I mean, you did what you said, right? See you on the river. Yeah. Of course, I always do what I say. Except those spots where you don't, right? Except for, except where I'm lying, yeah. No, no, Bart is a man of his word. He always keeps his word. Yeah. Unfortunately. Gets so me. There's that beautiful gold trophy made out of pure gold. What kind of Maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, PLO, I like more. Uh, or okay. if it's stand up game, hold them. Now it, it's so much fun. But normal hold them is boring. But you love action, right? Action. Well, in cash game, yeah, of course. Did how, how, did you go in, uh, how did you do in the uh, Yovira game? In, uh, I lost. lost. I can have revenge in. Uh, in Rosodos now, next month. Okay. Sounds good. You like this? Six, eight, the yeah, lineup was uh, not so good. There were not many fish. Uh, <coughs> so it gives, it gives you a chance to win it back in the better lineup. Raise and take it for Guven. Sitting on but, uh, almost 50 big blinds. No. Actually, like 50 big blinds, yeah. Not bad. I won the tournament, so oh, I yeah. was, was not a losing trip. So, but <laughs> I remember, huh? Because you must not go. Hosadov could be pretty good. Hmm? For the lineup, I mean. I think Hosadov could be pretty good. Yeah, Leon will play also. Yeah, that's one thing. I think yeah. it would be pretty good. I think, uh, yes, Leon and Elki and so. Nice. Yes. Fun. Yes. I mean, this game, like you, as you like it, yeah. everything is good, huh? I just had seven to send before I was, oh. I was tempting. <laughs> I was tempted. And we're not playing the game. Right? We're not playing the game. No, 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 so that's why I folded. Eight fold. Action folded to Zama on the button with nine six of clubs. Six ten raise twenty three. One fold. You play around 700? Uh, no, So I've got six minutes until the break and 66 players remaining. Average stack is 600,000. All the sixes right now, Griffin. So how much you have? I was just curious. And don't even call one big blind. I want to know first before I watch my hand. Otherwise I'll watch like... Okay, you have like... I'm looking forward to 70 off the stream. <laughs> uh, maybe. He was looking for red chips. Okay, a bit of sad news from one of the outer tables. Birthday boy Oleg Ustinovich has been eliminated. On the flip side, that means he won't be coming to the feature table again and we won't have to deal with loads of lame Harry Potter jokes. That birthday song was fire, though. The whole table singing yeah. for him yesterday. Yeah. Especially as they didn't know his name and just kind of went, Ooh, when it got to Yeah. <laughs> Aces for Vavilonsky. I thought it was especially sweet because, you know, living with the Dudleys, you're not getting a lot of birthday songs. Griffin. James. Let's just try and get through the final five minutes of this level without incident. James Potter. Aces. 
Let's see a flop. I'm liking that these players are getting the ace ace crushers. Yes. You know. Suited eight seven, which is not really doing a lot here, is it? No. Nope. But might get a free card. This is kind of bored, but Vavilonsky could mix in some checks. Would hate to get check raised here. Want to allow your opponent to turn a pair. But. Just also prepared to bet really small. Start getting value from those flush draws and 6x type hands. And just hope you don't get check raised. to squeeze in one or two more hands before the end of this level. It will be a 45-minute dinner break followed by the last 90-minute level of the day. 20, 20, 20, 20. Dre writes on YouTube, please say you are a wizard, Harry, one time. Well, I just did because I just read your comment. It's not even the line. The line is... No, Griffin, you've got two and a half minutes. Please don't make me disconnect your microphone. You're a wizard, Harry. Right, that's it, he's off. Bye, Griffin. He'll be back tomorrow. I'll see out the rest of this level on my own. You bluffed him on the river one time. Yeah. It was not a nice day. Everything else was boring. With King Jack. He's literally walking out, ladies and gentlemen. The fact the buffet's open is probably an influencing factor. But probably. It's Queen Jack. Jeez, I hope there isn't like some complicated top level hand where they play through the streets just before the dinner break. Give an opening here with ace 10. Be go with queen jack in the cutoff. One of two EPT finalists at this table, the other being Carl Short. And with Bigot folding, the action is now onshore on the button. He also has Queen Jack, but he has that circular plastic disc in front of him, and he has a lot of chips, and he is re-raising. What's Bartley, but God, what's he thinking about? Nothing consequential. Action back on Govan. Come on, dude. The cheesy pizza bread goes really quickly. Everyone else knows that. That's why they're running away from the table. Okay, ace, nine, four. Given called the three bet out of position. Playing in flow. Checks to short. He's going to take a stab at this. Continues into a pot of 155,000 for 46,000. And it's a check-raise shove from Govan. 
who is a 97% favorite here. And Shaw will fold. Bringing this level to an end, taking us to the 45 minute dinner break and bringing a change in feature table lineup. A reminder that when we come back from break, there will be a new feature table. I say new, it's a table we've seen before. Table one includes players like Paul Newey, an online qualifier, Gerard Carbo, Nicholas Schwiti, a former EPT champ, has joined them. Meanwhile, former EPT finalist Carl Shaw still has a monster stack at this table. 115 big blinds. That's at the new blind level. 6,000, 12,000 with a 12K big blind ante. That's going to be the level we come back to. Andre Valinovsky. It was a good level for him. He's got more than 100 bigs. No super short stacks. Andrea Dato still playing between 25 and 30 big blinds at the post-dinner blind level. So we're off to enjoy the buffet with the players, and we'll be back in just under 45 minutes' time for more action from the Cyprus leg of the Pokestars European Poker Tour. One more level to play, 90 more minutes of action on day three of the 5K main events. I wish I had the, the confidence to actually use Don Draper as my own <laughs> poker stars avatar, but I think I would prefer the anonymity rather than yes. broadcasting it. People are always asking me who I think the best celebrity poker players are because I do end up playing in some of these games in LA, playing on some of these celebrity TV shows. I want to know who you think some of the best celebrity poker players are. The guys I always find hard to beat, and we lost one this year because he was an excellent player. Uh, Willie, uh, yeah. Willie Garson, um, um, sadly uh, and shockingly, uh, uh, oddly, um, are the are the one of the usual suspects. I mean, uh, uh, Jason uh, Alexander, Kevin Pollock, they're both very good. They're both very they they play good, sensible poker you know if they were if they were chess players they'd be you know grandmaster they don't make mistakes they rarely make mistakes um uh and and hank is also very very good um but uh you know i'm, I'm more of a uh, surprising <laughs> poker player to, to say the least um but uh david wayne i think is a very good player uh michael ian black um i've not played with her but i've seen her play um uh um Meg Tilly, uh, Jennifer Tilly, sorry, Jennifer Tilly, not Meg, not her sister. They were two separate people um, <laughs> that share one voice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's quite a few people out there that, that are good. I mean, I think that, that, that the explosion of, of, of poker as a cultural thing has, has proven that if you're, if you're good at math and you're, and you're quick and uh, witted and you have a lot of patience, that you can be, you can be as, as good as some of these people who are professional. I think people people really realized during because all, all of my home games and fun games and friend games all went online yeah uh, and and most have continued online even even though technically we could reconvene it's just so convenient and I think it was it was an amazing lesson for a lot of people to learn when you start playing hundreds of hands a night rather than 10 and 20 a night how many times hands that you didn't think you would see start to show up uh and i think you know we, we were all kind of mystified like quads again like we, <laughs> i've played with these guys for 20 years i've never seen a quads hit like are you crazy uh, or i can think of the amount of times that they've hit you know, on on one hand and we we'd get them three four times in a night it's like oh yeah we just played 250 hands of poker like it, it on any given night at somebody's house when there's food being ordered and 
and and music being put on you know we maybe we'll get into 50 60 hands like it's it's crazy um but yeah just that kind of stuff is that the, the math is is no joke in the same way that you were finding yourself playing a lot of online poker and watching a lot of movies during lockdown, John, we found ourselves watching a lot of online poker rather than being able to go to live events. And one of the things I think we've discovered in the last 18 months is there are a lot, a lot of players on PokerStars who have Don Draper avatars. And <laughs> we, would, we would love it if every time it's like, maybe it is John Hamm. You think that's maybe, John Hamm? Maybe that, that is that actually John Hamm. John Hamm from Hamm. Scotland. Wow, I did not know that. That is, uh, that's quite a, that's a, that's a weird honor, but an honor nonetheless, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. I wish I had the, the confidence to actually use Don Draper as my own <laughs> poker stars avatar, but I think I would prefer the anonymity rather than yes. broadcasting it. Two monsters here, four deuce versus Trey deuce, hearts versus clubs. Let's have ourselves a flop. Clubs, eight of spades, ace of clubs, deuce of clubs. Deuce. Deuces never loses. Check and check. Deuce of spades. So, trip deuces for both players. Gimbal betting 600,000. Ryman raising to 1.6 million. Here's the re raises. 3 million total. A total bet of 3 million 6,000. Boy, this can be this can be just horrible, disgusting, and gross. Oh. Ty makes the call. Re-raise from Gimbal. The call from Ryman. A pot of nearly 8.3 million. The river card a seven. So this will be a chop, assuming it gets to showdown. Come on. All in. Does this somehow not get the showdown? That would be incredible. No. You can't ever pull the deuce here, heads up, right? Can I get a total count, please? Oh, I don't think so. Ties ask for a count. It's a pretty big bet. The problem is that Ryman loses to so many better deuces. I call. Call. He calls, and they're going to chop this pot. And Joe, you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves to chop pot. Three deuces to the AC. <laughs> chops all day. So many big chops. So many huge oh, so boring. They love a chop pot. Nice sir. That was sick. Damn, I thought you had like ace someone. You're like. The only thing I was worried about was backdoor spades. Yeah. Like ace four spades, you know? Nice hand though. Yeah. Nice call. Well, look at this. Previous heads up matches in the PC8 main event. Good luck deciphering that graphic. Loser. That's a very harsh way of putting it. <laughs> Isaac Haxton, what a loser. Loser. Yeah. 
Ace five for Gimbal. This is probably the hand I was thinking about before. <laughs> All right, well, I'll pay attention again. I hope I'm not wasting my time this time. One million six hundred seventy-five thousand. Oh, I'm so mad at myself. I was waiting all day for there to be a tie pop for Ty Ryman, and I missed it. Oh, Harrison calls. Deuce of diamonds, ace of clubs, eight of hearts. Out, out flopped. Check. check, check, a little Seven space. deception from Ryman, excuse me, from Gimbal. He's a three bet pot, right? Check. Yeah. Ryman's still not biting. Two million, two hundred thousand from Harrison. Ivan Coles. River card keys. Three of spades. Joe? Yes? I think I pumped fate you again. I think it might be another hand I'm thinking Check. about. Damn it, James. I mean, this is a great hand. Don't get me wrong. Four million. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm glad I made you pay attention. And Ryman's played this super cautiously. He hasn't liked the ace all along. Yeah. Why ruin it? Why ruin it on the river oh. here? Oh. oh, he did. Ace five for aces with an eight, seven, five. Nice Ty hit. tosses Four. it away. Harris is going to take his spot. It was 4 7. Gimbal closing the gap. Ty Ryman playing 19 million. Harrison Gimbal has officially taken the chip lead with 26.4 million, more than closing the gap. Now has the advantage as this heads up battle continues. Did he just go up a million? <laughs> I think there may have been an ad break in the original TV show at that point. Ryman raises with 8-7. Ace-4 for Harrison Gimbal. Okay. This is the hand. <laughs> okay. Nope. Fool me twice? No, uh, Shame uh, uh, on uh, uh, you. Uh. Trust me, guys. Pay attention. All right. Five of diamonds, six of hearts, four of hearts. Okie dokie. Flops the joint. Bottom pair. And the backdoor heart draw. Six hundred thirty thousand from Ty. Ryman bets six hundred and thirty K. Gimbal calls with bottom pair. Ten of clubs. Gimbal now officially drawing dead. Ryman very happy to keep betting into this pot. 1.8 million, nearly half pot. Quickly called by Gimbal. Wow. Seven of hearts on the river. The board gets straightier and flushier. Gimbal with the ace of hearts blocker checks, okay. 
4.2 million from Ty. And Ryman goes big. 4.2 million. Smaller. And Gimbal shoves. This is so dirty. How do you have the cojones to rep this flush? This is very sick. Gotta, I gotta give him respect for this. This is sick. Ryman lays down the straight. He folded 70. Wow. Showing an eight high straight. Harrison takes the. Show it. Show it. If he shows it, the match is over. <laughs> Live chat pros silenced. If you check shove there with us, <laughs> same straight. But to be fair, that dude reacted like that because he's okay. so drunk. It looks like he folded right. two straights. Gimbal now with the chip advantage, and some would argue the psychological advantage. I mean, not seeing it, he gets to think he, he made a good fold. I mean, he's, he's calling to chop or lose. Worried about the heart on the river, worried about the flush, and now raising with eights. Tens. I... The hand for Gimbal. One million eight hundred thousand is the re-raise from Harrison. Come on. In. Re -raise all, all in. Re-raise from Ty. I'm probably calling, but can I get a count? Ten thousand two hundred fifty. I call. Fill out. Call. I got eights. You are dominated, my friend. Yes. For Ty. Ten thousand thousand. That's ten million, my babies. Oh. Huge, huge. Prize difference here, five hundred thousand dollars between first and second, plus the title and trophy. And if tens hold, Harrison Gimbal will be a PCA champion. Wait, are you sure it's not Gimbal? Pretty sure it's Gimbal. Oh, well, this could be all over on the turn. A diamond would make things interesting. All right, let's see the turn card. Or an eight. <laughs> Ryman has an out. This is normally where I ask someone if they folded an eight. <laughs> Harrison Gimbal wins the 2010 PCA main event. 2.2 million. Wait for it. He's going to ask him about that hand. Yeah, he's legit having a touch up. I would do some more. Ace four. Yeah. He's got bluff. <laughs> but he doesn't specify. It could have been ace four of hearts. He knows. He knows. John Ham, or you know the people who are really under pressure. But for me, I mean, it was like I'm not doing the writing. I'm just, I, you know, performing it, and it was all good. I got the impression, watching every season, that this was a show that clearly had budget behind it, but also real craftsmanship and care because you oh, could absolutely. see the attention that was going into the period detail. Everything from like the belt someone would wear to the watch they're wearing, everything mm -hmm. looked and felt right. Yeah, I mean, my desk ha was really decked out, stuff you probably never even saw with real 60s um, 
props and things. The prop master was great. And costumes. I mean, we wore true vintage undergarments. Wow. <laughs> Even yeah. stuff you couldn't see? Even the stuff you couldn't see because Nothing. it does fit you a different way and makes you look a different way in the clothes. So That's incredible. It was definitely. I mean, two things. Talk about um, Roger Sterling, John Slattery's character. When people talk about great TV characters, of course, people think Mad Men. They're going to say John Hamm, Don Draper, but Roger Sterling was just such an amazingly written character. I don't think anyone expected him to survive to the end of the show based on his <laughs> lifestyle. Um, right. And if we're going to talk about the end of the show, and again, no spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Mad Men. If you haven't, watch it from the beginning. If you haven't. It's bloody awesome. But Joe and I have this thing where we talk about how endings are hard, and even some of our favorite movies and favorite TV shows don't quite stick the landing when it comes to their final episode or their final act. Mad Men is a show that bloody delivered. What an ending. What a great way to go out. The, the actual, like, last minute of ending you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. We didn't know about that until it aired because uh, only the people, only a few people were privy to that. So we read the table read and I'm thinking, wow, I, you know, I didn't think he really buttoned it up. And then... <laughs> They showed that, but that's how secretive he was. Nobody wow. even knew about that until until you had. I'm like, oh, good, yeah. that was great. <laughs> so when you're on a show like that, um, that is obviously, you know, while it's happening, people knew how good it was, right? It's like not a show that people. Well, certainly to by look. the time I was on it, they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is is it just as is it more fun or more pressure? More fun. You did so. It it wasn't like like big big tension, pressure, egos. We're on the best well, show on TV. I can't speak for John Hamm or you know the people who are really under pressure. But for me, I mean, it was like I'm not doing the writing. I'm just I you know performing it, and it was all good. So no pressure for me. <laughs> Okay, you may have seen this next hand before. Five nine, yeah, I've seen five nine. This is probably one of the most famous poker hands in EPT history. Jason, you raise, raise and take it. <laughs> Eighty thousand. Anthony, pass. Small blind, pass. Every call, 80,000. So Koskus defending his big blind with 10-3 offsuit, which bizarrely is currently the best hand. Two players, Eric, check in the dark. Uh, check's dark Come. too, huh? All right, I five, like it. Check six. Jack Jay six, check. five, bottom pair for Mercier. He checks it back. Turn card eight. is the eight of clubs. 220. 220,000 bet from Eric. Nine. Wow, an overbet on the turn from Koskus. And I actually like this bet from him, right? Jason Mercia checks back the flop. Koskus can easily have 7-9, seven, 7-4. Seven, All the two-pair combinations from the big blind. With Koskus overbet in the pot, Jason quickly called. There was not a lot of consideration there. Yeah, no, there was really wasn't. Total snap call. And Koskis can still be bluffing with just a bare seven in his hand, or as we can see here, as wide as 10-3, but it's still a pretty aggressive snap. Wow. Yeah, board pairs, and Koskis announces all in. The check dark, the fast bet on the flop, uh, fast bet on the turn, fast bet on the river. It is a little suspect. You tend to think a little bit more about your value bets, right? Right, and if he was betting with a jack, on the turn, he really isn't going to like that eight. So it's unlikely that he shoves all in. You know, it's a card that can hit Mercier if he has a hand like seven, eight, eight, nine that calls a turn, checks back flop. So a jack doesn't like the eight. Does an eight overbet the turn? A lot of this doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think one of the only hands he can really have, like a value hand, is a flop set that is now a boat. But again, I just think you put a little more thought into it. Yeah, and five, six value. is kind of fit 
as well, Joe? So that two pairs now dust. He wouldn't jam that. I guess he could still have 7-9, seven, 7-4. Seven, but it's not too much in the way of value. You start adding in all those 7s, those missed flushes, some 9-10s, some queen-10 gut shots, and then 10-3. <laughs> He's bluffing a lot. I call. And call. Eric got in. Showdown. Jason Mercia makes the call. Eric shows. Koska the shows the bluff. Mercia shows the five. And that is the hand that announced Jason Mercia's arrival on the poker scene. Eric Koska's eliminated in fourth place. And Jason Mercia now chip leader with three players remaining at this final table. Yes, sir. Cool hand. Cool call. Congratulations. Calls him with just a pair of fives. Love to see it. Koska's both impressed and also a little bit disgusted with the call. Well, it's such a huge call to make anywhere, let alone here at the EPT final table, four-handed as well. You've got to admire Koskis's heart, overbet the turn, ship the river. So now... Mercia has pretty much all the chips. Minieri raising here with queens. So Anthony Cole, uh, sorry, uh, raised to 100,000 from That's Dario. Me. Action is on chase. Three forty. Raised to 340,000. Jason. Anthony Pass. This is a situation that you'd expect Dario's reputation to pay off really well. Yeah, absolutely. And especially now in a three-handed situation, even more so. You know, hand strength of most of his ace four is going to go through the roof once you remove five or six players from the table. How much do you have behind? What is 700,000? I got 28, uh, no, one nine. Okay. One nine twenty. <laughs> so here's the flop. Jason will be first to speak. Flop comes. Step that flop five, does not have an ace on it, but it does have two diamonds. And this is almost a coin flip. Four hundred thousand. Dario bets four hundred thousand. It's a huge flop for most here, especially when Minieri, obviously, we can see he has the queens, but Minieri very capable of just getting here with, you know, some jack highs, queen highs. He jams, tries to make yeah, him fold, not getting the queen. I don't know how you, oh, don't, know how you don't jam Dario there against Dario. Queens and eight. Yeah, the ball a slightly better hand, and if you get called, you can get there pretty easily. This is not a slightly better hand. This is a much better hand. There's still that option of catching the diamond. Or the ace. Or the ace, that's true. Yeah, most is still very close to a flip. Four of hearts. Okay. Running fours. Is it yeah. diamond? Not plus a chase and Dario Minieri finishing the search. So Dario Minieri makes it to third place, but is eliminated by Jason Mercia and cashes out for 287,600 euros. The Merce dog, woof, woof, looking unstoppable. <laughs> Ninety-five. Raised to ninety-five thousand. Mm. 
given the stack distribution, given we're heads up, wouldn't be surprised to see Lelouch make that re-raise. Re yeah, why not? You get a pair, it's heads up. You get a huge chip disadvantage. Anthony, Oli. And it's flip time. His hand is pair of sevens. And Jason shows king, queen. You skipped the 2008 flipping algae for such a big moment here. And if Mercia gets there, it's over. King, queen for Jason. Here is the flop. Club comes. Queen. There's a queen on the flop. Just destined for him, huh? Needs oh, yeah. a seven to survive. Oh, seven. Here is the turn. Okay. Doesn't even have to worry about Eight. spades. No help. Two One cards time. in the deck. One the card is not a seven. There's two ads once. Off the EPT here in San Remo. And here is the river card. It's a deuce. No seven. Winner. Jason Mercia wins EPT San Remo. Good game, man. Good plan. Played well. Woo! <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, we already did this one. Peluso with tens again. Whoa, 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 don't raise if you're just gonna fold them this time. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it 11,000. You know this is the time you get it all in with tens against ace four and the ace hits. Round two, Paul Newey in the cutoff. Ace six, he folds. Lucien Cohen on the button. Has ace queen. And he shoves for 13 bigs. This time you must fold the pens. <laughs> no fold this time. And we're off to the races. No, we lost the stool. <laughs> this one wins. Ice queen to ten. In my mind, there's no one over there. Okay. <laughs> He's just shouting into the void. <laughs> He's shouting to the rats. Well, it's a race the rat man needs to win. Oh, hits his queen, but there's a 10 on the flop as well, and it's not looking good for Lucien Cohen. <laughs> Lucien Cohen drawing dead on the turn. The rat man has been exterminated. Are there any more pest based personalities we can bring to the feature table? Is La Cucaracha out there? Maybe Nutria human? Any pigeons? <laughs> Pigeon player? <laughs> Pretty sure I'm gonna be there, not just for the NEPT, but I think I'm sticking around for F1. Oh, sick brag! Thanks yeah, for that. I think James might be sticking around for F1 too. Yep, he's nodding his head. Oh, that's uh, huh? Yeah, that's, that's uh, that must have been some sort of an oversight. Must have been my booking. Must have been an oversight. <laughs> oh, these things happen. Don't worry, don't worry, team. Don't worry, team. I I think, it, there's I still time to fix the flights. It's I okay. I think tickets are on can sale still, probably. Statric, can you get on that? Button? Do you, you want to buy one? For me, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the box. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not precious. I still don't know what's real and what's not yet. All I know is that I'm sticking around. 
for the F1. I don't know if I'm going to F1, but I will be in Las Vegas. <laughs> in fairness, I actually haven't even seen my flights yet. Oh, so. shoot. Med Green in Twitch chat says, I want a red spade pass, so also going to the F1. Hey, let's go. That's going to be a really, really sick That's amazing. once in a lifetime thing. Med Green, can you write in the chat all the stuff that you've been told you're getting with the red spade pass? And can you tell me that your plus one is N I C K? <laughs> W A L S H. They, they'll they'll know who they'll know who they're talking about. Dicey spot here for Kuznetsov, who is out kicked. This is a three bet pot also, and it was Kuznetsov who three bet. Dato open and then flat at Ace King. Now Kuznetsov continues. Dato raises. This pot's getting big in a hurry. Six of diamonds on the turn does nothing to catch Kuznetsov off, up, excuse me. Is that a check raise on the flop chip? Yeah. Check that, yeah, got it. I mean, the check raise, you know, it was he was checking to the aggressor, so right. playing in flow, but. Five seconds, check. Dato checks again. I don't think Kuznetsov bites a second time. Seems like the perfect spot to check back. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case you're up against Ace-10, Ace-Jack, Ace-Queen. Ace-King, Ace-5, but does not bet again. Kuznetsov getting caught in his own net. Soft. <laughs> Cuz. If Dato double check raises, I'll be real impressed. Once he puts in that 44 initially, he'll have less than pot behind. But I think you probably call and then check again. Five seconds. That's my line at least. Do you think Dato is genuinely perplexed what's going on here? Do you think he's suspicious or just taking his time I think to I figure th out the oh. best way to call or raise with the best hand? I think he's just weighing it up. But I think a call is what you want to do most of the time. Yeah, it does call. I like it. And on the river, hopefully some illumination. A five or a deuce is usually going to be a really nice card. A king would be a lot better than that for the ace-king of Dato. No king. Three on the river. So, a bit of a scary card, right? Mm, I'm not sure from the cutoff. Not so much. You don't, don't think there's a lot of ace four suited? I guess there's not a ton of combos, right? I guess I, at I this mean, point. Ace four suited is four combos. Ace five so pocket fours is a few more. Yeah. But again, maybe pocket fours wouldn't have played their hand this way, so that's kind of discounted. And the thing is, if your opponent does have ace. Jack, ace, queen, they're just going to check here a bunch. So I think the check gives you a lot of information. Because a bet on this river will quite frequently be an indication of extreme strength given the two streets that we've seen so far. Is that soft? Wide eyed. And some weak. As queens. He is one of the biggest stacks at this table. Starts the hand with 529,066 big blinds. I'm not surprised to see Anton actually flat here. I think he can work in a, a mixed strategy. 
you know, you're not going to be entirely thrilled all the time to get in 70 big blinds, you know, under the gun and the hijack. And it's nice to maybe if there are some stacks behind that could squeeze that might otherwise fold to a, a three bet. And we're seeing a perfect example of that right here with a 40 big blind small blind stack of the pocket tens. Now, we could just see an overcall here from Steer, but, you know, would be justified in just squeezing this in and does do it. And this is why this flat is so effective. Anton just so aware of the stacks behind and going to be quickly called. Ooh, and he's loving that. Great trap set by Anton where Casimir Sia falling into it. And Sia is the at-risk player and behind dominated. And I think this is a good lesson for the viewers at home is that you don't always have to three bet certain hands, certain situations. It's important to have different gears and a mixed strategy. Thinking about those stack sizes behind, how they're going to react when you just call. Still five cards to come, mind you. The flop is Jack Nine Deuce. Queen's holding. Yeah. Suffice to say, Sia needs <laughs> a 10 <laughs> on the turn or river. <laughs> An eight or a seven will deliver additional outs. There is the eight. So now he has six outs instead of two. Is it always coming seven? It has been said, James. He's going to need a seven or a queen on the river, or he is KO'd. It is a seven because it is always coming, and that is going to be a double up. This is the NAPT, my babies. Comeback time. Yeah, we can play it for real now. One time, come on. Yeah. Hey, Mom, I'm playing heads up on TV. You'll see you later. <laughs> Why are you so good, Vanessa? Congratulations to Tom Marchese. William Reynolds is the champion. Good. Vanessa Seltz is the first ever two-time NAPT champion. No better place to play poker than in Vegas. It has been a minute. See you on the strip. See you on the strip indeed, but see you first at EPT Cyprus. Welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. Live coverage of day three of the main event from the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Still waiting for a couple of players to get back, or all of them to get back from dinner break. I am Joe Stapleton. With me on the line via satellite is Maria Ho. Hi. Hello, Maria. How are you? You... I'm, I'm doing well, but maybe not as well as you are because you mentioned spa like you stopped by there today before no, you headed in. No, I've walked past the spa several <laughs> times, but you know what the schedule's like here. Not yeah. a lot of free time. Taking a look right now at the five <laughs> biggest chip stacks in the overall tournament. Nathan to tart. I didn't think we used that word anymore. This is our feature table. These are the players we'll be focusing on for the next 90 minutes for the last level of the day. Gerard Carbo, a player we got to know a little bit yesterday, is the biggest stack heading into the last level of day three. Montoy Julian, a player we saw at a feature table earlier, as well as Fabio Peluso. Nicholas Schweedy, a former EPT champion, sits fifth in chips at this table. And Paul Newey has been getting a lot of screen time yesterday, earlier today, and right now. Whew. James Hardigan also with us at the moment. Apologies, I got delayed at the buffet. Hello, Joseph Stapleton. Hello, Maria Ho, who joins us live via satellite. 
Hi. I mean, what's your favorite dish at the buffet? I feel like it sounds like a good buffet out there. I like the minced meat and vegetables today. It was pretty good. Um, mm. This evening, I had some kind of Turkish kebab mm. and also the, uh, the cheesy garlic bread is particularly pleasant. But you've got to be there when it comes out the oven because it's on the buffet stand for seconds before it's all decimated. That's why I, uh, I went to dinner a little early today. I couldn't get a seat last night and I felt like an idiot walking around with a plate and nowhere to sit. So I, uh, I snuck out early. So looking at the prize money up top in this EPT main event, the single biggest slice of the $6.4 million prize pool is the million and forty-two thousand dollars for the winner. 64 players returning from dinner break. 64 players competing in the final level of day three. Tomorrow we will aim to get down to 16. Hopefully get that done inside of five levels. Might take a sixth level. So maybe we'll get a little bit more Maria time tomorrow if the day runs a little bit longer. That would be fun for me because I want to see who ends up making it through tomorrow because it's going to be a big day for a lot of these players. But recognizing some familiar faces here already. Yeah, Nicola Schwiti, as Joe just referenced, is an EPT champion, won in Monte Carlo in 2010. He is a below average stack right now, and that is a look. 349,000 is Schwiti's stack, average is 620,000. And we are at the 612 blind level, so hovering around that 50 big blind average, which is where we'd expect to be. Fabio Peluso. is an Italian qualifier. Gerard Carbo is a Spanish qualifier. Both of the big stacks at the feature table as we take a look at the outer tables. Are you a new member? Yeah. A lot of people have changed their clothes and put the right shirts, right? Eight by eight. eight. Maria, if you'd had to have set a line for the total number of entries in the first ever EPT, EPC Cyprus main event, would you have been close to the actual number? I had a feeling based on just the murmurings online with hotel rooms being sold out yeah. that it was going to get big. I don't know if I, without all of those clues, would have gotten to this number. I think over a thousand I would have been really, really yes. happy and surprised by. But um, but I know that poker is really big there. So a lot of players coming out for this. Most of the projections were between 1,100 and 1,200 with the most optimistic estimate I heard between 1250 and 1300 which would have been like Prague numbers so to beat Prague is pretty good for I would this have debut stop. I would have had the way under I would have been way off granted most of the people who are here didn't uh, it doesn't take as long for them to get here as it took me <clears throat> well and how long did it take your luggage to get there Joe uh, yeah, it took my luggage several days past. It only took one extra day for the luggage to arrive at the airport. It was just uh, on this end, getting someone to go pick it up took a, a 48 hours longer than it should have, probably. So play is underway. This is the first hand of the new level. Reminder, the blinds are 6,000, 12,000 with the 12K big blind ante. Level 20 of the main event, and it's all Biz, Mustafa Biz, winning that first hand. Paul Newey is a regular in the one seat at this table. He's been on two different feature tables, <laughs> and each time he's been in that seat, Although, wasn't he wearing a different shirt earlier on? <laughs> Is it like a pre-buffet and a post-buffet shirt? 
Now, do you think that's an intentional shirt change or implying that maybe there was a bit of a mess at the buffet? I mean, I, I feel like, generally speaking, you know, if, if you, you're rushing and you're eating at a buffet, accidents tend to happen. I, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the situation here with Nui, but yeah, could be, could have, you know, been some red sauce at dinner, some type of Linnaeus option, perhaps. We've got Kenar Ine in his cyberpunk goggles raising here with the James and Joe. He's made it 25,000, and Carbo has defended his big blind with Queen 5. <laughs> you know, granted, Carbo's off the big stack, but Queen 5 offsuit, not always necessary to defend with against an early position open. Just going to exercise some pot control with the check back. So far, still a decent turn card for the Jacks. Could elect to go for a delayed C bet, especially up against a defending range here from the big blind. In Turkey, very aggressive. Yes, very, very. Aggressive with hands. These guys are aggressive with nothing. So it's different. Yes, uh, yes, I see the percentages. One, one out of one, one out of two. Two out of two, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so is it allowed to change your shirt in between the breaks? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different shirt now. It's like a different person. Yeah. Here's luck. I believe it is allowed. Three times in two days in this seat. I was there yesterday as well. <laughs> this morning and tonight. I've got to put a different shirt on. <laughs> I don't even have so many shirts to change, so he knew he's going to be on TV so much. Professional. Action folded to Paul Newey in his post-buffet shirt. Pavlov. Wait, what? These glasses again? They come in different shades? So blind v blind. Now, you know... My attention is always drawn by a fancy watch. We do see a lot of Rolexes in poker. And look, Rolex make very nice sports watches, but Nicholas Schwiti is next level. That, to me, looks like a Patek Philippe Nautilus. Now, Patek, one of the holy trinity. We're talking high horology now. Schwiti, class. Wow. He does not hand out the stamp of approval <laughs> that generously. You're rocking Vacheron or Patek, you're next level. Maria, it tells time better than any other watch. Oh, no, it doesn't. It will be less accurate than a Casio. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. Uh, I have, I have no retort. I'm just not used to a watch. <laughs> I'm just not used to a watch having only one function. It's just weird. Yours also tells your horoscope. Mm. It tells me that uh, the 24th of October is going to be my lucky day this month. To be fair, Maria, mm -hmm. some watches tell the time in two different time zones. Some will give you the Ooh. date, the day of the week. The date. You're right. You're right. Maria. Some have a stopwatch built in. Maria, my girlfriend just so happens to be out of town on the 24th of October. Is that <laughs> what you're referring to about <laughs> it being your lucky day? Oh, Ooh. No, definitely not. I well, if your girlfriend's going to be out of town, I'm also going to make sure <laughs> I'm out of town. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe, maybe it'll finally be the dinner that you owe Maria. Maybe that's why it's her lucky day. Oh. <gasps> Ooh, Think about now, it. Now, James, you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Albo raising the button with king six of clubs. Leo spotting that it is an Aquanaut rather than a Nautilus. Fair point, Leo, but it's nonetheless Patek. Peluso coming after this button open from Carbo. King seven off, not a bad hand to do it with. Got that nice blocker to some of the premium holdings. Carbo, I feel like king six suited just feels too weak yeah. to continue, but it's also a matter of the frequency in which you think the big line is gonna be attacking your button opens, but they're just gonna give it up. Now, during the last level of the last feature table, not only did we have some good, bad lookalikes, we actually had some genuinely decent lookalikes. I'm pleased to say that normal service has been restored. As Kanik writes, is it just me, or does Ine look a bit like George Russell? It is just you. I do not know who George Russell is. I can neither confirm nor deny. Same. George Russell is a Formula One driver who drives for Mercedes, along with Lewis Hamilton. Oh, that George Russell. No, oh, okay. Well, I do know who that is, and I don't see it. There's just a lot going on here. <laughs> Milking the camera time a bit here when do off. <laughs> oh, I think I see a friendship developing. Starts with change. Next, it's a little joke, making fun of the player in seat one. No offense, it's just the other end of the table. You know how these things work. Then it's a drink after bag and tag. Next thing you know, sharing a room at EPT Prague. Every relationship always starts with asking for change. Are you guys like me where you pick a favorite at the table to ask for change from? Like, I don't always ask. Like common sense would dictate you you should ask the person that either has the most chips or the person closest to you, right? Yes. But I sometimes choose the person that I want to initiate a conversation with the most, you know, hence this whole starting a friendship over asking for change. It does check out. Even if they're the other end of the table? I think, just ignore everyone near you? Yes. I think, <laughs> I think distance is the, is the key factor for me. Because then you have to get the dealer involved or some other player has to be involved acting like a croupier pushing the chips from one end of the table to the other. Or, but what about the person who just won several pots in a row so you feel like they might have lucky chips? That might just be for the superstitious folk yeah, that's out just there. For the... But... Paluzzo, ace-king on the button raises to 25,000. And they fall to the small blind. Montois in the big blind with ace five offsuit. I hate it. I hate that you can't just fold. I mean, look, against the button, fine. You can, I mean. 
you theory right. will state you're not you're not meant to, but you can. You can also do this. <laughs> yeah, Staves. Do you feel more comfortable folding yes. or more comfortable three folding. bedding? Folding. <laughs> more comfortable folding. Yeah, I folding, know. Always. That's a rhetorical question. You definitely would not be doing this with Ace Five, and I don't mind it. Again, against a button open range, shouldn't contain hands that are as strong as Ace King normally, but does run into it here. Uh, just goes for the full stack. In all honesty, I might have re-raised against the button open. And then but, you get shelved on, and then you're really angry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I would assume that they're just picking on me because they know I'm a bad player, so I'll call it off. <laughs> you think I care about the money? You think I, I do? I care a lot, but not right this second. Oh, man, I really care about the money now that I'm out. Paul Newey folding. Ilya Pavlov with Queen 10. Raises to 25,000. Carbo and Shweti are both folded. Paluzzo's out. Are the steampunk goggles going on? Is Kanai and A going to play this hand? Nope. Rounds the blinds. Montoir folds. Mustafa Biz. 9 4 off. When I lived in Canterbury, there was a nightclub called The Biz. Spelt B I Z. Mustafa makes me think of that club. What was your drink of choice there? I was a student. I could barely afford anything. You had to buy a bottle of Charmaine from Asda. Drink it through a straw. Make sure you got drunk before you went to the club. 99p a bottle. Tasted like paint stripper, but it did the job. What in God's name is Charmaine? Well, clearly, it's a cheap supermarket variation of champagne. It's a cheap sparkling wine. Charmaine, wow. Do you ever have any luck at Biz? No. <laughs> I just don't even really picture James being like a club, a big club guy, though. I mean, none of us were, but we all got dragged in college. I remember the first time I tried to go to a club in college, the bouncer made fun of my shirt. Really broke me. Do you still have that shirt? I don't, but I should try to find like a replica of it and, and, and wear it out and get bottle service now. I'll show that guy. Thank you to Paul K watching on YouTube. He says, I went to university in Canterbury. The biz then became the works and then became bar bars. Three floors of chaos. It's always been three floors of chaos, Paul, whatever it's been called. Is it a small world, or does this stream just reach so many people that there just happens to be somebody who went to school there and knows this place you're talking about? I guess. That feels likely also. <clears throat> Shuiti raising here with Kojak. Paluzzo with Ace King. Showed you off of about 30 
bigs just slightly under to start the hand, so Bluso could easily just go for the three bet and call it off if Judah decides to go with this hand, which I don't believe he will, but you never know. Certainly counting his chips, making it look like he's interested. Certainly, if this hand was suited, perhaps he'd be interested in calling and seeing a flop. But the unsuited variety from plus one and the three bet from under the gun plus two certainly doesn't feel strong enough to continue. With Shweety folding. Another pot gets shipped to Fablo Peluso, who's playing 63 big blinds now. Okay. Referenced earlier on, the Fabio won an online satellite on PokerStars Italy. <laughs> That's what PokerStars.it is? Yes. I just got that. No. For me, Buda is a very good end. It's an ace side on Kings. I thought it was like the it thing, like that was a new suff hot suffix to have. You know how they're always trying to sell you on those different things, like dot whatever, like, oh, you better buy all the dot whatevers for your name because this, so I thought they were trying to sell me dot, Joe Stapleton dot it. Oh yeah, it says it right here. Dot I, I, dot Italy. Got it. You learn something new every day. So staying active with the under the gun plus one open with ace eight suited and Pavlov in the small blind looks interested. There's a lot of three betting going on pre flop so far. I mean, and some warranted by the hands, by the strength of the hand that they hold, but some, you know, maybe not so much. Maybe just feeling like Peluso is just a little more active in this last orbit or so, and Pavlov. Maybe picking up on something as a frequency yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. issue, but does get away with it. I feel like we were about to get a Maria Ho as played explanation <laughs> if, if that had gone further into the streets. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just really a pleasantly surprised reaction I think by me of seeing a lot of three bets so far sometimes there's like a post dinner lull people ate too much they're a little tired they see a spot that sometimes they could three bet or sometimes they could just pass up on it and they just decide to pass on it because they don't want to think that hard yeah I think it's but, just an emotional yeah. thing too right like if you make a move earlier in the day and you get caught you get caught up in some cooler because you you three bet king jack out of the small blind against an early raise you're like whatever i picked my spot and it didn't work out and then if yeah. you do it with like an hour to go in the day you feel a lot dumber about it even though it's the right. same thing yeah it doesn't seem to be affecting some of these players though but i completely agree i mean people want to bag at the end of the night and you know as it gets closer people might start locking their chips up, playing a little bit tighter, not getting into marginal spots. Like, I don't think I know a single player who wouldn't mention that they went broke on one of the last hands of the night if they went broke in one of the last hands of the night. 
for some reason it matters. All right, we got Pavlov opening a six on the button this time. From out of position to in position, Shuidi. He is a Shuidi. <laughs> Defense with the deuces and a big, fat, juicy flush draw for Pavlov. Almost makes you salivate. Ringing a bell, here's the C-bet. Not a lot of places for the deuces to go, except into the muck, I feel like. There's just not gonna be a whole lot of turn cards where you feel like you're gonna be able to proceed profitably. So if you call here, that doesn't feel like a good option. <laughs> but then, <laughs> perhaps, sometimes you or hoping your opponent will slow down. We got a full house draw on now. Future streets. Yeah, well, there's that. You didn't have, you know, the backdoor flush draw or backdoor straight draw. You just had deuces, but now you have two pairs. So perhaps that will strengthen his resolve a little bit. You know, Pavlov can certainly go one of two ways because you do have some showdown value with ace high, but you also have the nut flush draw. So can certainly continue to bet your equity and try to get rid of perhaps, you know, a 4X or a hand as weak as deuces. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Full house draw did come in. Full boat. I'm on a boat. Not the full house he was hoping for. And <laughs> looks like Chewie's going to be the one to put chips in with this baby full house targeting at ace highs. Feels comfortable after Pavlov checked back the turn that Perhaps this is the exact type of hand that he's going to be up against here. Pavlov reaching. Oh, well, okay. That's one way to play it. If you're not going to go for the double barrel on the turn, Pavlov why is just not try to rep itching for an as played from Maria. <laughs> Two hands in a row. You know, the way that this hand is played, it's certainly, I wouldn't say it's suspicious, but you, you just want to think about what you're repping here. Is it possible that you do want to check back trip kings there on the turn with the flush draw possible? You know, would you maybe check a hand like queens or jacks or tens or one of those premium pairs on the turn and then now feel like against that sizing on the river, you actually have a hand strong enough to raise for value, say if you had, you know, kings full of queens or jacks or even aces in this spot, would you go for the raise against that particular sizing? It gets called. Oh my goodness. Stationed by Shweedy. And Shweedy will chip up to over 500,000, now playing more than 40 big blinds. Did you hear the way Maria danced around saying as played? She said, the way this hand was played. <laughs> is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> so Paul K has come back to me with some Canterbury trivia. Yeah, I'm excited for this. James, the Monument Pub is now owned by one of my best friends in a former World Series of Poker November Niner. The reason I know this is I was in Canterbury recently, and my friend Tony took us there and went, I think the guy who owns this plays poker. So he told me. It's Sam Holden. Sam Holdem? That is some, that is, that Holden. hasn't been such a good. Holden. Just let me have my moneymaker moment with Sam Holdem. That's some, I mean, that's pure passive income right there, right? If you have enough money, just buy a bar in England. Never have to work a day in your life. 
In a student town. Student town? I mean, come on. Did you get a bucket of Jaeger bombs? For old time's sake? No. I did. What was the name of the place we ended up at, like, one in the morning? I did do a Sambuca shot, which I instantly regretted. In a plastic shot glass? It was in glass glass. Oh, wow, classy. Paul Newey shoving from the hijack. The old ace clanger. Good luck all in player. Does Peluso want a count? He does. Yeah, Ace 8 suited seems interested in this spot. Hijack shove. About 13 bigs. Does feel like there's going to be some hands that you'll be slightly ahead of. You know, all of the king, queen suit, queen jack suited, jack 10 suited, small pairs that, you know, hopefully you'll have two overs against. Certainly, of course, can be dominated by some of the stronger ASXs. You guys will end up chopping anyway. PUBG Karakin, watching on YouTube, I says that was going to get your attention. Give us a prediction for one player for final table commentators. My prediction is that Griffin Benja will be a player who will be among the final table commentators. I will predict Nick Walsh. I as think a player who will be a final table. I think that's a pretty good prediction, yeah. there, Joe. And there's a solid prediction. Thank you for your question. I'm sorry neither has picked you, Maria, but we know that you are an official PokerStars business on the East Coast this weekend, so you might not make it for the final table. That is true. I might not make it, but I might. I might just to throw these people off that aren't expecting yet another player to be at the final table. Maybe, um, man, we're kind of all booked up on the podcast for the next couple of months, but I would love to get a rundown from Maria of what goes on at this swanky event. Maria, wow. is this the event that, guys... that used to be the Vanessa Selbst event? Or is this different? I believe it is different. Okay. You mean the one that Vanessa Selbst oh, yeah. was a part of in terms of hosting yeah. and yeah. helping to yeah, organize. Yes. That no, this is not the same charity. Got it, okay. Did you attend one of those back in the day? I hosted one of them, yeah. That? Oh, okay. Yeah. It is not, but it is for an equally good cause. Interesting board. Bloso still ahead, but Carbo with a pair and a draw. By the way, Karakin. My least favorite map. And there's a lot of maps in that game. I was going to say, I knew you were going to have a strong opinion about correct, and I knew it was either really good or really bad. You're polarized. <laughs> really interesting board here yeah. for both players. Peluso with the over pair and the gut shot to the eight high straight. Carbo working with a pair and a straight draw himself. Okay, are these players just all gas, no breaks here post dinner? Because they are going hard. There, there is a, no break. There's a lot of beans and aubergine up there, so all gas <laughs> does track. <laughs> it is blast off time. Four, five, six, seven, nine. No, you need eight. them both. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't work. I mean, if they combine hands. That's what I mean by you need them both. Yeah. It's nice in the sense that now improves to an open ender. But you wonder what they're going to make of the fact that Carbo did bet and call the raise. You know, certainly you can be up against sets sometimes. You can 
of course, be up, up against better hands than eights right now. It does feel like a bit of a defensive sizing to just go 80 here. If Peluso was the one with a set, you would imagine he would go a lot bigger with this type of texture. Just trying to give himself a little protection from all of the draws out there, the flush draws, a straight draw. The river is a three. That's got to be a straight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. It is a straight. That's yep. got to be something. And Peluso, who was actually ahead all the way to the river. Oh, feels like it could be a card that is going to be a natural when your opponent calls twice. You know, certainly pocket fives will be in there. You know, a hand like six five suited, five four suited, definitely be in there. Rhea, you know, you're, again, not you're not torrenting something while you're on the line with us, are you? No. You're not on the pirate bay. <laughs> no. All right. Let's check. <gasps> Why? I don't know if your your line's breaking is up. Is my a little connection bit. bad? Yeah, like you're like you're downloading entire seasons of Dragon Ball Z. Okay, let me try to. No oh God, no! Don't no, change don't anything. anything. I was just trying Pop to. Pop do... out the chat. No, I just I had YouTube on, but like muted to see the chat, but I just popped it out and then I closed. YouTube. Absolutely. I mean, that's that that's. Help? That's obvious, Maria. None of us thought for one second you'd actually have the stream going in the background. But does this help? It should do, yes. By any chance. See, I can troubleshoot this. I, I'm pretty, pretty tech-savvy, guys. Don't know if you saw this message from Drazzle, Joe. I did. Amazingly found an EPT-10 car protector I won while living in Thailand back in 2016. You guys posted it there. Still watching you all these years later. I remember when we gave away car protectors. I remember the Mug Stapes promotion, where you walked around for an entire EPT season with a car protector in your pocket and said you would give it to the first person who came up to you and demanded it. And at the end of the season, you still had that car protector. I think his glasses are also kind of smart. I have very little recollection of that. I was the one who turned it into mug stapes and decided they should actually physically interact with you to you get You know how many people I had to fight off? It was the fight of my life keeping that thing all season. 17 fights and 16 of them were with a thief. It was... <laughs> my own personal version of the running man. <laughs> Paul Newey. Newey. Ooh. Yeah. Our guy passes up on this spot. Probably just doesn't like the fact that he's in such early position and doesn't love the open shove, but doesn't maybe feel comfortable with the min raise. Paul Newey is not spewy. Nicholas Schwiti back in action, raising to 25,000. We'll probably get through the small blinds. <laughs> and now the big blind. Montois defending with 10 9. Jack 9 4 flop. Oh. So a pair for Montois, the gut shot for Shweetie. Things could get a little goofy here. Yeah, you expect that Shweetie can find a C bet at a pretty high frequency with the two overs, with the gut shot straight draw, with the backdoor flush possibility. And Antoine really should just go into check call mode here on the flop. Doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of reason to go for a check raise. You have a hand that has 
decent chance to win at showdown. So we've referenced a few times that Nicola Schwiti won the EPT Monte Carlo main event in 2010. That was worth 1.7 million euros, by the way. He actually has 13 EPT main event cool. caches. This will actually be wow. his 14th. Obviously, we don't know the size of that cash yet. It will be at least $16,250. Lebanon, 2013 if... Country of the Year, the European Poker Awards. Oh, European Poker Awards. Those are the days. Sweetie, considering the double barrel here, and does feel like it should be effective against this part of Montois' range. Going to have some 9Xs, going to have some weaker smaller pairs that you know isn't going to love seeing further aggression on the turn Shweedy can certainly have a lot of good jack x's here you know ace jack king jack queen jack all of those hands plus over pairs as well Montois folds the best hand. I can relate. Sweetie chips up further. Quick update from the field. Earlier on, we had Casimir Sire on the feature table. Size 25. Still going strong and currently a top 10 stack. Meanwhile, another Twitch regular, Gilles Simon, known as Gilly on Twitch is comfortably inside the top five. Go Gahilly. Which was it? Which one is it? Did Gabby just oh, give Nicholas Shreedy a gold star for making that call with the it's Kings full of deuces? <laughs> At this venue, we hand out merit badges. I said, I'm not coming next to I'm sorry. Okay, Mr. Newey. King Queen suited. Well, Ace Jack, one position sooner. Yeah, that's Ooh. going in the muck, too. Paul Tidy. Is it bad, Maria, that I would have just opened jammed King Queen suited from under the gun for 14 bigs? No, it's definitely not bad. It, it's not. It's no. It's just. It, it's not. It's not a bad shove. I think you can either open shove or you could just min raise. I, I min raise, essentially, gives you the opportunity to, you know, get a little bit of value if the big blind defends, and usually, you know, you're gonna have. Pretty good hand for most flops, all things considered, against that range. But, you know, if you also min raise, then you can get away if there's a well, three bet and a four bet behind you without your I'm tournament glad life being you on the line. That up, because that would be my problem if I were to just min raise. Because you get three bet, and then you're kind of in no man's land because you feel like you could be folding the best hand, but if you shove, they're going to be priced into call. You're never folding the best hand when you get three bet. I like to take the guessing out of it and just that's <laughs> put my chips in. Yeah. Yeah. But you, no, already, you would have already been that, broke that from shoving ace-jack the hand previous to that. No, ace-jack offsuit. I would have had a bad feeling about that. <laughs> <laughs> Dre says we need some passion here. Joe, are you... Um, up for giving Dre the passion he desires? Yeah, come on, Dre. It's open bar, buddy. Let's find some liquid passion. Oh. The cyberpunk goggles are going on. Oh, shit. Where is that? Where is that? I didn't see him. But he 
you have to raise. So you have to raise. 37. Yeah, 37 is going to be the raise. Minimum. Minimum raise. Okay, that's fine. That's 25 times 37 and a half. Okay, so Ine said the word raised and threw out a 25k chip because he didn't realize that Pavlov had raised under the gun. He intended to raise to 25,000. No. <laughs> By saying raise and throwing out the 25k, it has to be ruled as a min raise, which is to 37,000. I do like saying that he wants to do more, though, once you get sort of in this spot. I think it's a good way to keep people confused. Yeah, and it's hard for Pavlov to really know what to make of this, right? I mean, on one hand, you know, if you think that Ine was just trying to steal from the cutoff, not realizing there was an open in front of him, then he can have a pretty weak range. But sometimes you might just run up against a real strong hand that just didn't realize there was an open, but it wouldn't have changed their decision either way to continue with the hand and now Pavlov with Queen Jack Suda decides to call and whiffs the flop which is really unfortunate because those chips are pretty precious for his stack depth and now you kind of feel like you just have to continue to feign strength especially on an ace high board as an A Continuation bet from NA is 22,000. Pavlov. Is considering doing something here. That is a check raise. Wow. I love it when something <laughs> funky I happens mean... in a hand. Something goes wrong. It throws everything off the rails. I know this is my first shift commentating here at EPT Cyprus, but you guys do notice that there's a lot of action pushing happening, right? This isn't this isn't typical, you know, for three orbits after dinner break. People aren't just gonna decide to check raise the Queen Jack of Diamonds on an ace high board against a min three bet without fully knowing whether it was completely, you know, them just abusing the situation of thinking it was folded to them the cutoff or perhaps just having a hand they would have played regardless. And it's pretty ballsy, <laughs> I've got to say. What a ballsy move from the leopard print gentleman. Dre has responded. Lol, let's get it, buddy. Sorry, did you say Dre or Dre? Uh, Dre. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Sure. If there's passion on the menu, you're not fussy. Mm -mm. Halfway through the level, Carbo is the table chip leader right now. Gerard Carbo, a player who's had a few decent scores in side events on the EPT, but has only cashed the main event a couple of times. Both this year, Barcelona in the summer, Paris at the start of the year, and he's already guaranteed his best ever live score in this tournament. We've got the leopard sitting next to the jungle. Philip asks, where are the commentators coming from? Mostly from a place of understanding and hope, I'd say. Shweedy with the queenies. Nobody else in the EPT has a name that sounds like whistling. Shweedy. <laughs> Shields up. Waste of a wardrobe change, but okay. 
got to give your opponent the stare. Look at this. Oh, biz. <sighs> He's about to give Sweetie the biz. I'm the biz, and nobody beats me. Rear raises to 80,000, gets rid of Paul Newey in the small blind, gets rid of Pavlov in the big blind. You sure? Okay, yep. Okay, checks out. Who's covered here? Biz is covered. Oh, yeah, yeah, Biz has only got 168 behind. Oh, it's all going in, don't worry. It's been a while since we've had a disgusting cooler. Yeah, I mean, the silver lining being that this is on the shorter side. I went king to aces today, queens to kings, amazing. Amazing, you're still in then. I lose both. Well, Piz needs Kings to hold because he is the at-risk player. Uh, <clears throat> Nicholas Sweetie wants some justice. <laughs> you can't take muttering seriously. Justice. <laughs> oh dear, that removes <laughs> one of Nicholas Sweetie's two outs. He's drawing to a card. Only the Queen of Clubs will eliminate Mustafa Biz. The Eight of Clubs. Kings hold. That's a double up. Well, Sweetie got the justice. The best hand won. I would have been rooting for injustice personally. Sweetie hovering around the 30 big blind mark now. Mustafa Biz playing more than 40 pigs. Average stack right now with 55 remaining is 720,000, and we only have two players at the table with above average stacks. Julien Montoir with 938,000, just shy of 80 big blinds. Mm -hmm. And table chip leader Gerard Carbo, who's got 1.28 million, which is close to 110 bigs. Philip wants to know, are you guys actually commentating from Cyprus at the event? Philip, if we are not in Cyprus, then it was a real piece of showmanship, me acting like my luggage didn't get here for two days. We really went the extra mile to sell it. To be fair, two thirds of the current commentary team are in Cyprus. Maria is at home on the west coast of the United States of America, joining us live via satellite. That is true, the live via satellite part, but I am not on the west coast, I'm on the east coast. Oh, of course, you've already relocated wow. ahead of your big gig this weekend. Because understandably, yes. Maria, it's a three-hour time difference. So, you know, we've got to make a big adjustment there. Yes, I have a lot of trouble falling asleep with the three-hour time difference because it's, you know, 9 p.m. on the West Coast, and it's midnight here, and I'm like, I should go to sleep. I should be in bed. And then I just toss and turn for three hours. Well, plus you don't bring those $1,000 pillows with you, do you? <sighs> Come on. Tapes. I buy my pillows on Amazon, just like everybody else. Amazon Prime. <laughs> that, that's true, just like a lot of people. I don't know anybody <laughs> that doesn't have Amazon Prime, actually. It's a great deal. To be it's fair, bargain. the Prime element is the delivery service. It doesn't mean the quality of the goods is any better. <laughs> uh, Montoir is open to 25,000, and look at this. Biz just calls with Queens. Nobody beats him.
That beats Queens. Is this the justice? Justice. I'm still confused about the whole justice part. I mean, if Biz can just get away from Queens here, good on him. Feels like a Mm -hmm. yep. True. I don't know about that part. No, that's not what you said yesterday. <laughs> We see Montois sizing up on the turn. He's trying to continue to build the pot. A couple of draws possible. Five seconds. Certainly worth taking the time to think this over. You do have a straight draw. You might be uncertain as to where your queens stand at the moment. And if you think about what type of bluffs could be possible, queens block some of you know the ace queen type hands that could have gone as a semi bluff with the flop bet and the turn bet. He's a whiz, this biz. That's why nobody beats him. Sorry? Okay, you didn't three bet pocket queen flip up? Okay. You were trying to trap me. Uh -huh. Mr. Trap. I call you. Pocket queen? Why do three bet? He waits for someone to have a queen. He gets kings. Easy game. <laughs> All day I didn't have uh, first kings. What's funny is that Peluso could be Nicholas Sweetie of yesteryear. I don't think Nicholas Sweetie has ever worn a bucket hat. Ooh, I think he has. Seven fold. Raise. Six, eight, raise. 25,000. Ten fold. One fold. Got ourselves a raise here. Julien Montois. Starts the hand with more than a million chips. It's open with king six of diamonds. We've got Pavlov on the button with ace ten. Ding! Pavlov with about 25 big blinds. Certainly doesn't shy away from aggression from what we've seen and now we're going to go ahead and attack this open. And, you know, just pretty astute to be attacking the open off of, you know, a table big stack. Just understanding that they're going to be opening wider. Ace 10 offsuit, certainly the type of hand where if you three bet and you get shoved on, you're not going to be calling off there. You'll just be folding and moving on to the next one. But if you get called, you still get to play it in position, even though its strength against the call is probably, you know, right on the cusp.
you probably don't feel super comfortable, feel like there's going to be a lot of pretty good hands in the mix if they're willing to call your three bet off of a 25 big blind stack. So really happy to just get this through. Pat Wall's gotten a lot through, except for that um, river bluff raise against Sweetie. Everything else though, them on the secondary market or something like this. <laughs> How much? Just what are we talking about? Glasses again? Mom Chill on YouTube asks, what was the entry fee? The entry fee is the money the players uh, give to the tournament that later becomes the prize pool. Thank you for your question. Montois. Doesn't that translate as my three? No, that would be Montois with an R. Oh, Montois, not Montois. Same, but different. R's. Anyway, my three raising with ace king, Pavlov calling with ace jack. Seemed like there was a little bit of consideration on the three bet, certainly was reaching deeper into the stack, but landed on a call and Sweetie, nice hand in the small with tens. Even if you're up against a pretty strong range against Montois here, you get the call in between from Pavlov, making yeah. it a lot more attractive. Here he goes. Request the triangle. Shweety all in. Justice. Justice. Can I get a count, please? Montois wants a count. And I think for 30 bigs, especially with Pavlov behind with just about 30 bigs in his stack as well, I think Montois should just be putting all the chips in the middle. Shweedy can certainly have some squeezes with some worse ace stacks here just because of that call in between. And if you think that they're gonna be jamming pairs, you know, nines plus, sometimes eight, eight even, then Ace King's certainly gonna be playing well against that. So we are off to the races. Shweety with the pocket pair, Montois with the overcards. Like blockers versus birds. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. And because of the folded cards, we know that Shweety is actually a 70% favorite to survive here. Six, six, five on the flop. Looking good for the tens. Nine of hearts. So three outs for Julien Montois. Nicolas Schwiti just has to fade. Mesa a king on the river. It's a jack. So Schwiti survives. I'm looking forward to hearing this hand history in Lebanese. Shweetie now second in chips at the table. 
Roundabout average with 715,000, just shy of 60 big blinds. Montoir playing 55 big blinds. Paul Newey still the low man at the table with a 12 big blind stack. Observed official 1G. That jack on the river means Pavlov would have won had it been a three way all in. Oh no, terrible fault. Yeah, you got to play results, dude. clearly loves his poker we got the poker stars hat we got the merit poker patch we got the king's casino t-shirt he loves his merch the trifecta yes maybe his luggage is lost also No, you can see it in his eyes, <laughs> or at least in his face, that he's someone who really, really loves it. And those are the people that pay our <laughs> salaries. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great. Keep those 10 nines out of there. The nine threes. Don't want to show down against that. Maybe you get a better hand to fold. Maybe. Biz with ace jack offsuit. Certainly not in a great situation in the sense that Pavlov is three betting off of a sub 30 big blind stack. Looks pretty strong against an under the gun plus one open. And so Ashak doesn't rate to be that great in this particular spot, even though they're ahead. And again, just having to fold to the pressure, there's just been so many three bets here at this table. It feels like anytime somebody has been dealt a hand that is three bettable, they'll do it, even though sometimes the strategy will dictate that you can mix maybe some calls or some folds and some three bets with some of these types of hands. But these players picking the aggressive route every time and for the most part it's been working Time for some carbo loading. That's what I've been doing in New York. I've had pizza on multiple occasions already and pasta, mashed potatoes, a lot of focaccia bread. That, that is a lot of, a lot of grains. <laughs> All mixed up in a bucket with the eggs on top. <laughs> Luzo calling on the button with Queen Ten of Clubs. Montoya in as well with Ace Nine. It's a six-five-three flop. 
Ace King high the best hand. on the turn. Carbo now two to one favorite in this three-way pot. Once the flop was checked around though, you do feel like Montois might see an opening to bet. Doesn't take it, but when you look at this board, does feel like it can certainly hit the big blinds range quite often. And no other player seems to be too interested in the pot. Deuce on the river, ace king, still the best hand. Now you've got to be feeling like there's going to be better aces out there. So with ace nine, not necessarily a lot of showdown value, especially against two opponents. Do you want to pull the trigger? Doesn't look like it. Check to showdown. Carbo's going to ship this one. Look at how excited Carbo was to win that hand with Ace King. Still the biggest stack at this table with 1.3 million. And 20 minutes left on the level. Well, actually, in about 10 minutes, they'll stop the clock. And then we'll go through the process of drawing for how many hands to play until the conclusion of the day. Bad lookalike coming in from Wheatley Inn. And appreciate this is one that is uh, mostly of relevance to people in the United Kingdom. Relates to the player in the big blind. We'll get to him shortly. One fold. Three fold. And four fold. Five fold. Six fold. We're getting there. Can they on the button with seven four of diamonds? Zephyr says, you know that meme of Ben Affleck smoking and looking fed up? That's how I imagine the mods having to deal with chat. <laughs> Correct. Oh, Montois with Ace King in the small. Can't blame Ine for taking this spot on the button with suited, somewhat connected holding and. So, Wheatley is. This table has. Wheatley and thinks that Biz looks a bit like Chris Moyles back in the day. That is a solid bad look-alike. Thank you, Wheatley and. Sorry, Maria, we lost you there briefly. I think there must have been a cloud passing in front of the satellite. I, <laughs> I was just saying that there seems to be at this table players finding a lot of three betting opportunities and that continues to be the case. What is my standard amount? Alexi Sale is another suggestion from Deal C four T. Six 
Garber was raised with Jack Tanner clubs. Round to the blinds. Mustafa Bez. Just not finding much to go with so far in this level. Uh, okay, maybe finding some something yeah. to go with, but maybe a couple of missed opportunities that he has elected not to take. I, you got to give a guy credit who, for selling his business for $50 million a couple of years ago and then folds ace jack from early position on 12 big blinds. A lot of the real. I like somebody who still knows the value of a dollar. Exactly. exactly. That's what I mean. I got a lot of respect for that. Car boat. Opening with Kings. Seven fold. Eight fold. Ten fold. One fold. Easy. And three fold. Raise and take it. Question from Loco Trip on YouTube. Welke blinds würdet ihr spielen by cash game 100 Euro buy-in? Danke. 1-2. Danke für deine Frage. Peluso, Queen Jack. God bless you. Getting complimented on your German. That uh, 89 99 pound a year subscription to Duolingo paying off. Ooh. Well then. This is going to be quite the clash. I mean, when Biz comes with the four bet, though, you just wonder how Montois is going to feel. I mean, besides playing on this table together, you wonder how much history these players have, how much they know about each other's games. Does Biz seem like the type that would ever cold four without a hand as strong as perhaps, you know, kings, aces, queens? Would it ever be the same hand? How often would he be putting in the cold four bet with, let's say, ace king off in this spot? How does Montois feel about this shove? Three fold. Four fold. Six fold. If we're looking at the effective stack here of Biz. Yeah. 
you know, a lot of times players might just decide that ace king suited is going to be good enough to get it in with, but it's not really a open and then a three bet situation. Under the gun plus one open, a three bet from Montois, then the shove from Biz, which is going to be a lot stronger. No, Maria. Maria. The carbs finally. Maria. <laughs> Maria. Uh, am I gone? Oh, she's back. She's back. <sighs> back in time to see this become an all in and a call, which we kind of figured it would. Yeah, you don't love it, but it, it all felt like an inevitable call. Someone needs to Just put another based quarter on stack the, uh, size alone. In the phone booth. Nobody beats the biz. Here we go. King's holding. This flop is all biz. Turn card is the Jack of Spades. Montoir now with the flush draw can hit a spade. Not like this. Or if we see Barry Greenstein make an appearance. Is your spadey sense tingling? <sighs> no spade. And that is a double up for Mustafa Biz. Feels bad, man. Second to uh, busting out at the last level of the day is losing a huge pot towards the end of the day. Montois. Down to 22 big blinds. I mean, what an unfortunate thing to happen in the last 10 minutes. When are we going to draw for hands? It's going to be five again, by the way, isn't it? It folds. No, no, no. I got a, I got a better, I got a better feeling about today. No, seven folds. Seven folds. Nope. Oh. This play, please stop. We're going to draw the double of hands we have to play for today. What number are you going for, Maria? I don't want to see you on my table. Seven. No, five. They don't even have seven in there, do they? Correct. Three, four, or five. Next time, if I don't have this, it's five. Like it's always five. Only eight is against you. Okay. Oh, I wait for the set. Good, my set. Today. <laughs> Meanwhile, a button race from Pavlov that's going to meet some resistance. How much stuff is today? It's left. And Shweedy, who's been on a bit of a roller coaster in this last level of the day, it's a chunk of chips then. Got it back with that flip with 
tens against ace king and now picking up kings these pins always draw a little bit of suspicion you know targeting the button open certainly going to be a factor from a good player such as sweetie somebody who has shown themselves to be aggressive Three hands. That's right, Joe. Three hands. Three hands. So. Sweetie winning that one. We are going to play those last three hands at the feature table. Yes, Arshen, 54 means 54 players left from a starting field of 1,320 entries. James, I haven't really asked about the widget yet. How's the no widget one has. these days? You are the first person to ask, what? Maria, and I'm glad you did. I'm glad someone still cares about the widget. So we're coming towards wow, the end. Wow, you guys are fickle. Of day, I'm going to say that the, it's probably outpacing the widget right now because the average stack is big. Well, maybe not. Where is the widget? Here it is. Oh, I was going to say, if you lost the widget, James, it'd just be game over. I mean, talk about not caring about the widget. You practically lost the widget. Well, Paul Newey all in with sevens. Pavlov reshoving with ace queen. Shweety gets rid of the king queen. And we are going to be off to the races. Paul Newey flipping for his tournament life. down to just under 10 big blinds so couldn't wait much longer i'm going to show joe my widget in a moment and he'll tell you the number maria joe's seen your widget before i don't know why he's unzipping i didn't know it came in a case I have to protect the widget. It's very delicate. No four jacks. That's why I got in Vegas, the main event. Seven's holding. Pavlov looking for an ace or a queen. Hits his ace on the turn. Uh. And Paul Newey now drawing thin and hoping that it is always coming seven. And there is only one seven live in the deck. No, seven, and Paul Newey clung on, tried to survive to the end of the day, but is eliminated in 54th place. You know what he did do, though? He laddered. He did, cashing out for $18,700. So with Paul gone, we're down to 53. How many players does the widget say will be starting day four? Ooh, unfortunately, the widget is off. The widget says that we'll be starting day four with 52.8 players, so sorry. Uh, I don't even, it's so know, stupid. It doesn't widget. even know there's no such thing as 0.8 players. I mean, I could recalibrate the widget to round up and down, but I kind of like the one decimal point. It I mean, also, an idiot. It also gives us a spread, right? We can say between 52 and 53. So I'm glad you asked about the widget, Maria, because I think it's doing pretty well. The widget is really never wrong. And if the widget keeps us up, the human calculator will definitely be out of a job. That's right, John. 
it feels more precise with the decimal point. It feels like there's actually some science, some kind of calculation going on in the background, rather than someone just going, um, 52. What's happening here on the penultimate hand of the day? We've had the under-the-gun race from Montoir. We've got Peluso getting involved from the small blind with 9-8 the diamonds. Feels like everybody's sort of woken up a bit now that they see the light at the end of the tunnel. They know there's only three hands left. Get your licks in. I mean, less than three now, but you know what I mean. King, King, 10 on the flop. Renee with the advantage. Montois with the range advantage. Probably doesn't love the fact that the small blind called can certainly have some of this king x, queen jack, those type of hands that are certainly going to find a continue. So trying to perhaps show down the ace high, but the board getting more coordinated now on the turn. Montoir betting 40,000 gets the fold from Peluso. Innate with the best hand, 77% favorite. Montoir, of course, cannot win the hand outright. He's drawing to a chop. And Montoir pretty uncapped here. You know, certainly could have queens for queens full, could have ace king and flop trips and perhaps wanted to slow play. Could also certainly have ace jack and have decided to check back the flop so it looks like Ine is just going to give up the best hand there yeah and that will take us to the last hand of the day i don't tell the truth so let's see you watch watch the tv tonight youtube or Twitch. I didn't know these guys were going to watch. I should have said nicer things about them. Pavlov opening with pocket fives. Five folds. Six folds. Seven folds. You gotta do it, it's the last hand of the day. Could come queen, queen eight. Can't go to bed without knowing. Jack 10, three, so we have a straight draw against the fives. It is a post flop flip. We have got a royal flush draw. Oh, no, three ambitious. cards to the. Don't, don't, no, it's got to be four cards. Get out of here. It's got to be four cards. And if you're going to defend the Queen Eight, and this is the flop, it feels like. You do have to 
Just come along for another card. Looks like Raise he's uh -huh. counting 90. out some raising chips. Semi bluffing the royal flush draw. And against fives, it's going to work, but against the entire range of Pavlov from under the gun plus one, I think it just was very fortunate for Montois that it was not up against the stronger part of Pavlov's range. And again, fact in that people want to bag and make it to the next day. Players are going to probably be less sticky in those spots on the last hand. Absolutely. And with that hand over, it is time to bag and tag. Do you know the story of the guy who made the bubble with the chip race? Do you know the story of the guy who, who, who on the main, who did the or on the 2K, I don't remember, who uh, crossed the bubble yeah, yeah. thanks to the chip race? Really? Yeah, he was like, uh, he has like 6, 6K something. It was the, the big blind plus the small blind. And he has the chip race. He won the chip race, so it's 1K more. So he folded all the blind and won. Across the ball hole with the 1k okay. from the chip race. Yeah. You would have lost the chip race, you would have been all in blind uh, on yeah. the phone line. Yeah. That's fun. It was a genuinely cool story. Plus, look who's real chatty now that he made day four. There is that. I don't remember if, if it was on the main or on the 2k. Ace, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. Tomorrow is the day where we aim to get down to the final two tables. Play down to 16. Looks like 53 players will be returning for day four, including the players we've been watching at the feature table for this session. I'm hearing that Jose Gonzalez, who's been top of the leaderboard for most of the day, is now second in chips. French player Nathan Tatart is up to 3.46 million so he'll come into day four as chip leader gerard carbo is still among the big stacks he'll have 91 big blinds at the 10 15 blind level tomorrow ken Arne, with his steampunk goggles will be in the danger zone danger zone we still have nicholas sweetie we still have anton wiggs so or a couple of former ept champs in the field I believe Darius Samartino still has chips, a former World Series of Poker runner-up. So as ever, we'll be kicking off the action at 12.30 local time. That's 11.30 a.m. Central European summer time. Everyone has now locked up the better part of 20 grand. Big sums up for grabs at the final table, including that huge first prize of just over a million dollars. Make sure you're with us on Sunday to see who is crowned a champion. The day before that, they'll play down to the final six. Of course, tomorrow it's all about getting down to the final 16. Maria, thank you very much. We will speak to you tomorrow. Speak tomorrow. Live via satellite from the east coast of the United States. That was Maria Ho. Have some pizza if you need to get to sleep. And this has been day three. Check out the PokerStars blog for updates and stories, not just from today, not just from this tournament, but everything happening on the European Poker Tour. And yes, make sure you are with us for day four of this 5K EPT Cypress main event. 53 will become 16. We will aim to get down to the last two tables. A reminder of our on-air time, 12.30 local time on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels. Until then, from Joe Stapleton, Maria Ho, Griffin Benjamin, Nick Walsh, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from Cyprus. Hello once again, welcome to Cyprus and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day three of the first ever Cyprus main event.